Seth Van Dalen, Dakota Finn, Ryan Lutz, Mason Fuller, Ryan Cavalieri, Joe Bornhorse, Ryan Mayfield, Tater Sontag, Joy Bardon, Lee Setzer, Caden Fuller. Julian's already out there. Walker Spinrad and Spencer Hecker to Marshall. Come on, guys, I need volunteer marshal help, please. I need volunteer marshal help, please, to the track. Can I please get a little bit of help? Marshals to the track. I need three volunteers. Three volunteers. Three volunteer marshals, please. Three volunteers. Here comes one gentleman. Need two more. Two more, please. Two more. I'm going to start Lee running your hot laps. I need two more. Two more. Into the chicane. We're following it live. And here comes the battle for second down the straightaway. It's going to be a three-way battle coming up on Little Bump and Justin Fails, Lutz, Westergaard, and Fend. That's the battle to watch as they're coming down the step down. Rossiter right there with the best lap of the entire race. 30.3 for Rossiter, up to second. Ricky Fleming 11, Jeff on the 12, and Westfall not making the start. Less than five, four, three, two. All righty, guys, come on around, let's line them up. Come on around, buddy. Race number 14, race number 14, need to be lining them up. Race 14, line them up. 40 plus E buggy up on the stand. All right, racers ready. Marshall's ready. Everybody's going to roll in the tone here in less than five. Here we go, we're off and running. It's gonna be Kevin Miller. Oh, we got one upside down right there on the front straight away. Snags the pipe at the start. So Kevin Miller let us here on the tone. Michael Hine in that number two spot. Two of you gonna transfer up into the C main. Michael Hine coming down the front straight away. Out in front with Tony Scarcella in that number two. Scarcella looking for the bump. Miller in the three. Gregory working the four. Richard Lewis five. Robbie Lynn six. Shane Zern in seven. Pat Rossiter eight. Ricky Fleming nine in the nine. Left. You got a minute 20 down, 8.40 left to go. Michael Hine last time by the line was trying to open up a little bit of gap here on Scarcella. One and two and three very close together. Kevin Miller within striking distance. Scarcella for that number two and final transfer spot as they work the back section of the track. One, two, and three now with a small gap over fourth place. Eight minutes left.
7 minutes left. All right, you're three minutes down, six minutes left to go. Race leader Michael Hine out in front. Kevin Miller now able to make that pass on Tony Scarcella as he works his way up into the number two and final transfer position. Tony, though, right now, six and a half seconds back. We've got a long ways to go, though, with six and a half minutes remaining on the clock. Shane Zernan in the number four spot, 10 seconds back at the three. Robbie Lim working the five. Greg Dwyer in the six. Richard Lewis, seven. Pat Ross, eight. And Ricky Fleming. Rounding out the field. As you can see, guys, we only have nine racers on the driver's stand, so I'll need a little bit of volunteer marshal help again for the next race. Everybody trying to get the cobwebs out their eyeballs this morning. Get the coffee flowing. If I can get some volunteer marshals to help out while we uh, six minutes left. Get our peoples here back at the facility, get them up and going. I greatly appreciate it. All right, you're halfway there, racers. Five minutes down, five minutes left to go. Michael Hine with now with an 18-second lead here up on the field. Hine having him a good run here in the 40-plus e-buggy D-Main. Kevin Miller in the number two spot. Six and a half seconds up on Tony Scarcella. Shane Zernan now works his way to 1.3 seconds back of the number three. Gregory Dyer in that number five. Richard Lewis in the six. Robbie Lynn, seven. Pat Rossiter in the eight. Ricky Fleming in the nine. Four twenty five left to go, four twenty five remaining. Michael Hahn out in front, got a nineteen second lead here up on the field. Four minutes left. Bryson Dwyer, are you awake? Hey, just no rush when you get a minute. When you come to timing and scoring, no rush. No rush. No rush when you get a minute, come to timing and scoring. No rush. 3.45 left to go. Tony Scarcella now moves up into the number two and final transfer position. Just ahead of Shane Zernan, 2.6 seconds is the gap. Kevin Miller working at number four. Greg in the number five. Richard Lewis in the six. Robbie Lynn, seven. Pat Rossiter in the eight. Here's seven minutes down, three minutes left to go. Seven minutes down, three minutes remaining. Three minutes left. Shane Zerner now within one second of Scarcella as Shane Zerner just clicked off a 41.7. That's his fastest lap of the race. Two twenty left to go, two twenty remaining. Two 
two minutes left. Nine minutes down, one minute left to go. Nine minutes down, one minute remaining. One minute left. Michael Hine, Tony Scarcella right now running one and two with Shane Zernan in the number three spot. 45 seconds left. Thirty seconds left. Thirty seconds left to go. Well, I'll get you uh, that Marshall for red, and go get you a good one. Fifteen seconds left. Michael Hine, Tony Scarcella still continue to come across the line. Man, Michael Hine is checking out. Hine having a good run. Good morning, everyone. Looks like uh, driver's stand beginning to fill up here with the next group Here's of racers done. as the race clock expires here on race number 13. Ricky Fleming, you're done, sir. Michael Hine done. Michael Hine. Gregory Dyer done. Yeah. Richard Lewis done. Wait on Tony, Tony Scarcella. He's going to make that transfer up into the C main. Tony Scarcella done. Shane Zarian done. Robert and done. All drivers are finished. And there you go, guys. That's Pat a race. Done. Everybody race is completed. done. Michael Hine, Tony Scarcella. About to bump it up into race number 24. All right, race number 14 taking a stand. Those of you on the driver's stand, come on out quickly. Grab a turn marshal spot. We'll need a little bit of volunteer marshal help, guys. I only had nine that last race. If I can please get some volunteers the to help for the me lead out, rages I would greatly appreciate down it. The straightaway heading had into nine the chicane. in the last race. We're following it right, live. Please have some volunteer marshals. Race 14, hold them on the stand, guys, until I get the marshals out there. The marshals quickly to the track, it's please. It's going to be a three-way battle coming up on Little Bump and Justin Fails, Lutz, Westergaard, and Fend. Marshals quickly to the That's track, That's the battle please. to watch as they're coming down the Need step Need volunteer marshal help, please. Volunteer marshal help. Rossiter right there with the best lap Devon. of the entire race. I hate to ask you, buddy. Can you please help me? Up to second. You did just grab a spot. If I get somebody on that far left-hand side, there's a couple of guys couple of kids looks like uh some people standing right next to the fence help out please i need volunteer marshal help please all right guys we're looking pretty good if y'all would go ahead and turn them loose turn them loose turn them loose Ryder trotter will Let's see uh david sawyer Mike Diaz. Looks like Billy Billy out there oh look at thomas tran thomas tran coming out Jamie to help Savage. out thank you thomas tran gene trout jr joe jenkins brock peterson joshua kinzer craig jackson Jason Mallory, Chris Figueroa, Nelson All Garcia. Right. All righty, guys, when you come back around, let's line them up. Will Bristol on a one, Nelson Garcia on a two, Dave Sawyer on a three, Gene Shroud on a four, Craig Jackson on a five, Joshua Kinser on a six, Ryder Trotter seven, Brock Peterson on the eight, Jacob Savage nine, Joey Jenkins ten, Chris Figueroa in the 11, Mike Diaz in the 12, Benjamin 13, Jason 14, Adrian 15, Joey on the 16. No more laps, guys. Line them up. No more laps. Line them up.
Come on around, guys. Let's get them lined up. Race number 15, you need to be moving into staging. All righty, good job, guys. All right, here we go. Racers ready. Marshall's ready. Everybody's rolling on the tone here in less than five. It's going to be Will Bristol leading the 16 car charge here in the intermediate E buggy D main. Easy now, guys. Y'all go in on the first lap. Definitely will lose it. Keep the race. Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think we got one off the track. Nope. He's right there by the fence. Careful, guys. Careful, careful, marshals. They're getting it worked out. A couple of guys turning in the corners a little too soon and snagging the pipe. Here they come down the front straightaway. It's going to be Nelson Garcia to the top of the leaderboard with Ryder Trotter in the number two spot. Trotter right there on the back side of Nelson Garcia. Nine minutes left. Ryder Trotter went around yesterday, got a body signed in memory of his dad from all the top dogs here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. Unfortunately, we lost Stu Trotter right at about, uh, man, it's been, all, it's been almost three months ago now. But it's going to be Ryder Trotter in that number two and final transfer spot. Looking to race his way up into the C main. Nelson Garcia right now 1.8 seconds back of the one. Or excuse me, I apologize. Nelson Garcia 1.8 seconds up on Ryder Trotter last time by the line. It's going to be Joshua Kinser in that number three. Seven tenths of a second away from the two. Adrian Gibson working the four. Joey Cully in the five. Joe Jenkins in the six. Craig Jackson, seven. Mike Diaz left. in the eight. Chris Figueroa, nine. Brock Peterson in the 10. Will Bristol in the 11. Gene Trout in the 12. Jason Mallory, 13. Dave Sawyer, 14. Jacob Savage, 15. And Benjamin in the 16. It's a tight battle right now for that top spot between Trotter, Jenkins, Kinzer, and Cully. Ryder Trotter right now, four and a half seconds back at a race lead, but he's got a bumper full of Joe Jenkins. 2.30 down, 7.30 left to go. Trotter looking for that bump. Heading towards the whoop section is the battle right now. I believe that's Joe Jenkins that may have made the pass here. Here comes Nelson Garcia onto the front straightaway. Garcia out in front. Oh, got one with a roll over there. Down the front straightaway now for Joe Jenkins as he climbs up into the two. Joey into number three. Man, Joey from 16th on the starting grid. That is from the E main of left. E buggy. He has now raced his way all the way to that number three spot and battling for a transfer. Race number 15 going to be coming up next. Race 15. Here comes Craig Jackson now up to that number three spot. Will Bristol beginning to battle his way back forward. Currently finds himself in the four. Gene Shrout working the five. Joe Jenkins in that six. Joshua Kinsler in the seven. Adrian Gibson in the eight. Six minutes Dave left. Sawyer in the nine. Brock Peterson in the 10. Ryder Trotter in the 11. Jacob Savage in the 12. Mike Diaz in the 13. Jason Mallory 14. Chris Figueroa 15. And Benjamin in the 16. It's Nelson Garcia 4.4 seconds up on the field. 
Greg Jackson right now, 5.5 seconds back at transfer. We still got a long ways to go, right at five and a half minutes remaining. Race number 14 on the track, race 15 up next. There are restrooms facilities available to everyone in the lower parking lot area. Restrooms facilities available to, in the lower parking lot area. There are also showers set up in the RV VIP section. They're right there by the VP, or excuse me, Dialed RC Hobbies tent. It's on the back side of the Techno HB Racing team area. And you'll see the, the big white trailer set up. Those are showers available if you need to get a little wash wash on the stink steam. Five minutes left. And go get you a wash. Nelson Garcia in the number one spot. Joey Cully in the number two, 8.3 seconds back of the race lead. Joey down three seconds last time by the lineup on Craig Jackson. Gene Trout 1.5 seconds back of the three. 5.30 down, 4.30 left to go. Race 14 on the track. Race 15 up next. Four minutes left. Six forty-five down, three fifteen left to go. Race leader Nelson Garcia, four point two seconds up on new second place holder Gene Shrout, who's looking for the bump up into the C main. Will Bristol in the number three spot, one point six seconds back last time by the line. Joey Cully in the number four. Dave left. Sawyer in the five. Just over two and a half minutes left to go. Nelson Garcia, Gene Trout, Will Bristol, one, two, and three. Joey Cully in the four. Dave Sawyer, five. Craig Jackson working a six. Joe Jenkins, seven. Joshua Kinsler in the eight. Jacob Savage, nine. And Adrian Gibson rounding out your top ten. Brock Peterson working that number 11. Jason Mallory right behind him. Only 1.5 seconds back. Dryder Trotter in the number 13. Chris Figueroa, 14. Mike Diaz, 15, and Benjamin in the number 16 spot. Will Bristol coming across the line now, 6.8 seconds behind. Gene Trout for that number two. Eight minutes down, two, two minutes, minutes left, left to go. Race 14 on the track, race 15 on deck. E Truggy, D Main, race 15, E Truggy, D Main coming up next. Nelson Garcia hitting the line, 4.8 seconds up on Gene Shroud. Now, Gene Shroud is closing the gap here on Garcia. The gap now down to 3.2 seconds. So the juices may be beginning to flow here for Gene Shroud as he's getting faster and faster with every lap. He's opened the gap up to 6.5 seconds on Will Bristol. Will right now four seconds up on Joey Cully. Joe Jenkins working in the number five spot, though only one second away from the four. Nine minutes down, one minute left to go. One minute left. Forty five seconds left.
30 seconds left. Nelson Garcia and Gene Trout now separated within 1.9 seconds of one another. Joey Cully in at number three, Will Bristol in the four, Craig Jackson five, Joshua Kinsler in the six, left. three, four, five, and six having a good battle right now. Gene Trout coming across line 1.9 seconds back of the one. As the race clock here is about to expire, it's going to be really close for Joey to make another lap. Jason oh, Mallory they're going to squeeze done. it in. He Joshua will not. Kinser it's going to be Joshua Kinsler, however, Craig moving Jackson up done. into the number three David spot. So that will, will secure the bump and transfer positions for Nelson Garcia and Gene Benjamin Shrout Hinojosa moving done. their way up into the Joe C main. Jenkins Brock Peterson done. Nelson Garcia done. Gene Trout Jr. done. Mike Diaz done. Adrian Gibson done. Um, actually, you know, I'm kind of considering Trout, but I don't think he's going to make it to the race because he's got one more heat left. How about that? All drivers are finished. Jacob's Savage done. The race is Techno RC. Techno RC is a championship winning manufacturer of high performance A scale, TID scale, Nitro, and, and Electric RC. RC. Welcome and to the Sunday day, uh, finals day of the 2023 Wicked Weekend. I'm your boy, Left It Great, and I am here for you all day as we go through all the mains here. Today we will have double A mains in Electric, and we will have uh, 30 minute mains for Nitro. Two bump up out of these uh, races and go on. We saw Vlad Clifford bump up four times, well, three times yesterday. I think he showed up Saturday, didn't get any practice, and he bumped up and got 40 minutes of uh, run time uh, yesterday evening. So we have lots of racing left for you guys today here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. We're going into the electric Chuggy D-Man, and uh, let's see who can bump up into their A-Mans. There's going to be some fun. We're going to go to get interviews with the, the bump up from the B-Mans to the A-Mans, and uh, we've got lots of racing left to do here today. Uh, it's looking very interesting in the pro class of Seth Van Dalen, looking extremely rapid in all three classes. So let's see if uh, young Seth can um, get off, uh, get that monkey off his back and get that big win that he's looking been looking to get for quite some time uh, and disrupt this Dakota Fenn and Ryan Mayfield domination that we've seen over the last two and a half years. With that said, let's get back to racing. You'll be hearing me all day as I've got my cup of coffee and I'm ready to talk RC with all of you guys out there in the chat. I'll see you there. All righty then. Good morning to everybody out there in our chat. Yes, a little bit stuffy. Um, if you have ever slept in Lance's camper, you know he likes to keep it polar bear temperature. But uh, give me a few minutes. Let me get my coffee down, and I will be all right. Good morning, Kevin Mendez. Good morning, Bob's RC. Simon Miller. DJ Williams. What's up, Mikey Hill? Cam Goff, man. I thought you was going to see you up at this race. And um, let us know how the audio is. Someone's saying it's very low audio. But uh, we'll see. How it is? <coughs> but 
Good morning to everybody out there in Facebook world. Amber says she just woke up early to watch it, and uh, Jean bumped up. That's great. Really great to see. Uh, I got to see my son. Well, I didn't really get to watch him race, but he almost bumped out. First time ever racing on a track, uh, or even racing, period. And uh, he did pretty good. Now I got to get a track going down there in the DR and get him racing. But I, I, um, what's up, Zach Ryan? How you doing? Down in Australia. So, uh, planning to go to All Out Wednesday night. He's already expressed interest in racing. So, anybody going to All Out for Wednesday night racing, let me know if you've got an e buggy that he can borrow. He wants to race again, apparently. So, that's good to see. All right, so we are on Electric Truggy D Main, Owen Simmons, Arthur Stathopoulos, Toot Hollingsworth, Andy Kirk, Andrew Adri Adrian Gibson, Sean Top, Kevin Miller, Donnie Wales, John Cooley, Gavin Wick, Jordan Corley, Bobby Thomas, Sasha Talbot, Will Crow, Dawson Woodward, and Cody Clark. He says that 58 Lucy Oil. Yeah, super, super excited about my son wanting to race. That was... um. Uh, I want to say thank you to Blake Baker for making that happen. Giving up his e-buggy run so Kendry can run. And uh, super proud of my son. And hey, man, it looks like we're going to go have some RC fun when we get back home uh, with the crawlers and RC boats and all that good stuff. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. It is early. And, oh, I was up in time. I just got here about six minutes late, and I wanted to have my breakfast before I got started. It is going to be a... Long day of racing here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend record entry number 666. 332 people. Oh, Donnie Williams has a YouTube channel as well. I didn't know that. Uh, I know that they're big MSN fans. I did not know that they had a YouTube channel as well. I'm going to have to check it out. But you will be listening to me on the ones and twos all day as we progress through these lower mains here and watch these RC gladiators do battle out here in the Coliseum, the arena that is the Wicked, week wicked Weekend 2003. Apex Junkie, I, I mean, I hope so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to run e Truggy so he doesn't beat me. That's going to be my future. e Truggy. All right, so there we see our starting lineup. And go off. Let's see, as these E Truggy mains got higher, we have a much cleaner start this morning. Great to see we saw some disastrous starts yesterday. I know Apex Junkie. That's my boogie buddy, Mike Hill. <laughs> he has a very rude comment that I can't say on TV about or television about the use of my mouth. But it's Owen Simmons, the C main sidekick, and Toot Hollinsworth, the young man, making coming up in second. Kevin Miller, thir third, and Atha Stathalopoulos in fourth. Kevin Miller coming all the way from seventh. So that's a good run, and we have two out there in front right now in that orange e truggy. Yellow wheels, green and orange. Oh, ooh, ooh, someone getting it very wrong in, in the back of them. Probably that's Kevin Miller. As we see two. Oh, that's a nice gray, a nice use of primer gray. Always liking to see a primer gray used in RC car body. Some beautiful, absolutely stunning paint jobs here. At the Wicked Weekend, I was walking around and looking at some of these cars and lots of pride in their cars. Actually, that's Owen Simmons still in front, sorry. Oh, are we following Toot? He's in second. Oh, okay, there's Owen. He's the white car in front, and we are on board with the bump-up spot. Young Toot. Oh, then Toot makes, gets it wrong, but uh, he's able to get it back. And as they go around that extremely rough and craterous 
off camber turn, and there's Athostathalopoulos. He's now out in second in that bump off spot. They got eight minutes to go. Good morning, uh, Dwayne Billings. How are you? And we are racing. This is the battle for the bump up spot. That is Athostathalopoulos in that green and black and blue car. And Toot Hollingsworth right there behind him. So these two RCE Truggy Warriors are going to battle. E Truggy out. Uh, fast growing class here in the Southeast. It's even getting popular out at West Coast races. So very good to see. E Truggy growing. It's, it's uh, opious amounts of powers in these. 1-8 scale trucks, as you can see, them reeling down the, the straightaway. I was talking to Ryan Lutch yesterday, and Owen gets it wrong, and that's going to allow Atha by, but Owen can't make any more mistakes because two is right there waiting to capitalize on any mistake by these two front leaders. Remember, the two top two will bump up the youth of the future, so I'm kind of cheering for Toot. I shouldn't be cheering for anybody, but uh, who has to be biased when you're an announcer? Not this guy. As we see them go through it, now, Owen gets it wrong, but Toot has made a mistake, and he is not going to be able to capitalize on that, but we shall see. Now, this is the battle for the bump-off swap between Toot and Owen. Ooh, and Toot just going a little bit wide. Oh, no. Poor Toot. He needs to get it together because that is actually the position. The Sasha Tower is behind him in fourth. As we see C-Main sidekick Owen Simmons getting a great lead out there. Man, with one of the most luxurious mullets in RC. And this all bodes well for Atha, who's just out now on his Sunday morning drive, as we see Owen uh, getting it right through the lunar landscape moon section. Not able to do that double, so he just checks up and takes it single, single. And there's the battle for fourth right behind him. Any mistake by Owen will let those two capitalize on him. So Owen has to keep that in the back of his mind as he goes up and over those rollers. And it doesn't chow, it doesn't see, you don't see it on video, but this track is getting extremely rough, especially right there has formed a almost six to eight inch deep crater that is approximately two to two and a half feet in diameter. So you'll see some racers, and there is about a, a foot to a foot and a half of space on the inside. And then some people are taking the chance of going on the inside and maybe clipping the pipe or getting their left front wheels into the crater, and some are just going wide, but you don't see anybody trying to drive through it because it is an absolute canyon right there. Good morning, Mr. Scarcella. How are you? Hope you're well. Good to see you, sir. As it's a Sunday here at the Wicked Weekend, and uh, it's also it's a great day because of finals, but it's also a sad day because this is the end of our weekend, and we start seeing the parking lot getting empty, we start seeing racers making their way back home after a fun-filled weekend here at the uh, Wicked Weekend. And, uh-oh, there is, I don't know who that was, but I don't think that was for position. As Owen comes around, he's in second. He now has uh, Sasha Tauber two, point sec two seconds behind him, so this is a race. Toot, unfortunately, is 3.6 seconds back of that. Four minutes, 15 seconds left to go on the clock. And there we are on board with Owen as he goes down the middle of the lunar section. This track, that part of the track has come, has given everybody of all levels of racing fits. But we saw Seth Van Dalen. He was able to come down the inside. That's going to be interesting to see if he adjusts his line anyway today in the racing. I just had a suggestion to call it the minefield. So maybe that's even better. It's better than the lunar landscape. It's a lot easier to say. As we are on board with C-Main sidekick, keeping it tight around that 180, he needs some, he's got some traffic in front of him as they go down the minefield. And there is Sasha right behind him. This is the race for the bump-up spot. Sasha putting on the afterburners and coming around, up and over that double, getting on the inside of Owen. 
They get into some some traffic, but it is now Sasha in front of Owen as he powers down that straight away, summoning up some power from the E Truggy Gods to come down and drag race down that front straight away. And he looks like he has caught a second win and is up over that double. Let's see, let's see. Sasha goes and clips the uh, outside of the moon crater as he goes up and over the double. Keeps it very tight around that line, uh, not allowing Owen to have any type of sniff in there. Oh, and Sasha gets it wrong, and that's going to allow Owen to get by. As you see Craig out there getting turn motion for Owen, for Sasha. But this is the race for the final bump, sp bump up spot, and this is allowing Alpha to just get out to a comfortable lead and just finish his race and live to bump up and race another day. But this is the race with Owen now back in that lead. Sasha looking to get back in front of him as they go around that moon crater very smoothly. Let's see if Owen slams the door on him. Oh, and Sasha goes just slightly wide, but he is looking right. Uh oh, gets it, hang up on that pipe. And now it's gonna go from bad to wrestle Sasha as he gets too excited and tries to go through the minefield at full bore. And you just can't do that here. It's no full chat through the minefield. And that's going to allow Owen to stretch out a lead as he powers down the front straightaway. And Sasha is now 4.2 seconds back with 1 minute and 38 seconds left to go. Can the C-Main sidekick, the man with the mullet, can Owen curl on to the second place and bump up to the next E-Truggy main? E-Truggy not separated by classes, just one big class. Uh, good to see. I'm sure as this class grows, it will be separated. Because it is growing immensely and rapidly. Oh, ooh, ooh. Owen just tiptoeing out there wide. Thought he was going to lose it, but he just puts the hammer down and gets in that fluff. And those tires just give him the traction that he needs. Power. That's the good thing about these. Uh oh, we have, we have a very bad crash there on the front straightaway. And there is Owen. 57 seconds left, and Sasha has just lost touch of him. And he is now 5.3 seconds back. But Owen getting it wrong, getting hung up on that pipe. That is going to allow Sasha to make up some time. We might have a... There is Sasha. So we are going to have a charge to the end. And they have... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And he should wait. Very well done, Sasha. Very good sportsmanship. Waiting for Owen after tapping him. As they go through, Sasha going on the inside of that line. And this is the battle for the bump spot. We see Owen down there in the white truck. Sasha in the orange and the yellow truck as they go around. Sasha is very fast there. Yes, he had the line, and he just gave Owen a slight bump as Owen turned into him, but Sasha forced his E-Truggy in there, and that E-Truggy is flying down that straightaway, and they will get into some lap traffic. Let's see. Oh, that looked tight. And Sasha, he makes a mistake, and he... Oh, no, they both make mistakes, but Sasha is going to lose out there because that is a very long tire marshal, as we see... Uh, Owen getting in front of Sasha, and Sasha is just going completely ballistic in the background. As you see that E-Truggy just uh, blowing out, but it is now on for Owen. No, I, that is not for position. That is not for position. But Owen Simon's coming for us, and uh, Sasha Tower losing it all in that last corner, that last jump, jumping over that lane, and that's going to cost him uh, a bump-up spot. And Toot Hollingsworth will actually take over that top spot. But well done to Athos And unfortunate for Sasha Tauber. Is Sasha from uh, uh, from Florida, Danny? Oh, okay, so Georgia races. All these Georgian racers coming together. Athos from Georgia. And uh, good morning, everybody. Danny, you got to let me know when you're going to cut to me so I can have my hat on. People aren't used to seeing me without my hat. Uh, but Cam Goff in there saying, screaming out, no, yes, unfortunate for Sasha, as we see this E-Buggy, E, sorry, E-Truggy main looking pretty racy. Up next is the Sportsman Electric Buggy, the main, as this was the biggest class here at the Wicked Weekend with uh, over 125 entries in Sportsman E-Buggy, paying some bills here. So all of that good stuff. But speaking of bills, we have to pay some right now. We'd like to say thank you to Absolute Hobbies, J-Concepts, TLR, VP Racing, ProTech RC, Nitro Pro, BeachRC.com, aka Reds, Lugs Racing Tires, SWAX, TNR Fuels, HP Racing, On Point RC Graphics, 
Kicker Performance Audio, Race Time Entertainment, WRCE Florida RC Championships, and of course, this dude who talks completely too much, the No Name RC Podcast, the podcast without a name. Good morning, Derek Venderham. How are you, good buddy? Jonathan Canto is in the house. Dwayne Billings up early, Dwayne. It's early out there on the in the Pacific Northwest, dude. Michael, are you still in the house? Is it Formula One today? We have Brian Sherl Knight, Ryan Nett, Mark Connor, Dennis Campbell, David Scott, Nick Elliott, Randy Ellis, Zach Cater, Michael Hine, Rodale Torres, Wyatt Van Fleet, Jim Foster, Mike Hass, Drew Ryan, and our two bump ups, Miller Freud and Andrew Matos. Miller not having a good qualifying session on e buggy. He's definitely bumping up. It looks like he should bump up from this. He's a very fast racer from down in Florida. Running the X-ray in that true form Miller wing. I believe that wing's actually named after him, to be honest. But all right, Dar Derek, are you? Oh, you guys, you guys are staying at a hotel. Very nice, very nice. Uh, we got a long day of racing here at the Wicked Weekend 2023 here up here in Gainesville, Florida. As we see these e-buggies lining up, and as they are off, and it is Brian Sherman out, out to a front front first lead. That is the one great thing about starting on pole here. It is going to benefit you immensely because there is a gaggle of cars going into that 180. Oh, we see that white car getting it wrong as we let these. I believe that was Ryan Nett, our second place starter, as we will let the cars come across the line and see who's who. As you can see, that early morning Georgia sun peeking through. It is a luxurious, beautiful morning here in Georgia. Uh, enjoying being up here in the Peach State and enjoying this good, very good weather that we've been having. And it's Brian from Miller Freud from 15th to 2nd on the first lap. Dennis Campbell, Mark Connor, Mike Hess, David Scott. So that is Miller actually right there who is just now taking over the lead, I believe. It's very hard to see with the sun out there. But yes, Miller Freud. Uh, not having the best qualifying session in e-buggy. He is in all his, his I believe he's in the inter, uh, Nit Sportsman Nitro Buggy Main. <coughs> Gotten to know Miller over the year, over the last year. Met him at the Florida Championships. Uh, and then again earlier this year out in the Mills Pond at the FRCC. Yeah, sorry, Gainesville, Georgia. I don't know, Gainesville, Florida, Gainesville, Georgia. Uh, I need to have more coffee there, Johnny. As we see m that pink car of Mark Connor. That is our second place car. Miller Freud has just pulled off to an impressive lead. Let's see. We should, should see Miller. There we see Miller just going over that double. This is the second place car. This pink car with yellow wheels. We see Miller Freud just out there getting some practice as he goes through that minefield. We can see that we have. Uh, Mark Connor is about to have company, and Eddie is here because that yellow car of David Scott, who that might be David Scott, and that all yellow car, I won't know until he comes across the line. And Miller getting it. Nope, that wasn't Miller. Thought that was Miller. Looked like his car. Hello, Greg Collum. He's in Phoenix. He was cheering on his grandson, Joseph Ruggiero. So it's Miller Freud, Dennis Campbell, Mark Connor, Wyatt Van Fleet, and Mike Hess. That's Dennis Campbell in that yellow car. And right behind him is Mark Connor. And Miller Freud is out on a Sunday morning drive. Karen Galf says Miller's going to lap him. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he does that. And there we see Dennis Campbell in that all yellow car with white wheels and the yellow wing. And that hot pink car with yellow wheels and black wing and they are about to have company with that all black car yellow wing black wheels that's got to be Wyatt Van Fleet let's see when they cut that's it is Wyatt Van Fleet he is now up to third he is 1.3 seconds back of Dennis Campbell he is sniffing blood like a great white shark in a seal community as we see Dennis Campbell just getting a little bit squarely and oh wow, Wyatt going right up on that berm 
I missed that. I didn't see if it was contact or not. But we see that black car, black wheels, yellowing as he goes through the minefield. Ooh, ooh, nice, interesting line through there. He decides to jump a few of those. Up and over the first double, keeping it smooth. Ooh, getting a little close to that pipe and going very wide. And there we see, I believe, that's Zach Cater. We'll see when he comes around the line. That is Zach Cater. He is now up to third. And he is uh, in a battle right now with that yellow car of Dennis Campbell. And this is allowing Wyatt to just pull out a lead. Uh-oh. And Wyatt gets it wrong. And that is going to allow Campbell by. So Wyatt going to have to have a lot of work to do. We have five minutes and 56 seconds left to go in this race. And he has to also deal with uh, Zach Cater. Who's now up in that third position? If I look, if it looked right in my peripheral vision, yes, it is. That's Zach Cater getting it wrong off that double. Oh wow! And it looks like uh, Wyatt has dropped like a stone in the Red Sea. As we are now on board with the yellow car of Dennis Campbell, he would see a Miller Freud, but he's probably really just far out there at the moment. As Dennis Campbell. Just tiptoeing around the moon crater there and jumping a little bit long. And we see the battle for third, fourth, and fifth. They want to race together and get up and catch this guy because this is the last bump up spot. This is for all the marbles. If you don't finish second, you will be finishing last. And there we can see Dennis Campbell right there. There you go, buddy. There's your picture. And uh, he said yesterday why his picture didn't come up when he won his race, but. There you go. We got his picture right there. He is a Mugen racer. You can see he's got that Mugen hat on. And he is out there in a comfortable lead at the moment. He has a 6.1 second lead over third. So he just needs to keep it under control. Don't break his car. Don't do anything silly. Don't make any mistakes. And he will bump up with 4 minutes and 30 seconds left to go. Got a very comfortable line through the minefield. Uh, landing, landing in the flat of that double. But powering out these e buggies obviously have quite amount of power to just be able to power out of those doubles and they are not very hard to build uh to do actually so very good job by bobby moore let's see the difference between randy ellis so randy ellis is now 37.1 seven seconds behind campbell and campbell is 15 16 seconds behind miller freud so miller just out there on a sunday morning drive here in the beautiful georgia sunshine get in some extra track time which will help and benefit him in his nitro campaign later on today as well as his bumping up in the sportsman e-buggy class the way he's going i'm pretty sure he's going to bump up to the to the a main that might have been his plan all along and dennis gets it wrong he doesn't want to do that he does not need to push the issue at all now let's see what the gap is when he comes across the line because randy alice is now right there it's now 2.1 seconds so Dennis making some mistakes. Uh, Randy Ellis is now on the hunt. He is like a lion preying on a baby giraffe in the Serengeti. Smelling blood. Downwind of his prey. And there we are on board with Miller Freud who cases it. Miller's <clears throat> just out there on a Sunday drive. There we see his car getting out in that sun. That Georgia sun coming through the mountains back there. I believe that's north. I could be wrong. I have all my my directional compass is completely off. I'm pretty sure this morning. But Miller going through that minefield in an X-ray. Very avid racer, father son team out of Florida. They race quite a lot. Lots of ten scale, lots of eight scale. Down there in the mecca of RC that of the southeast that is Floor Australia. Not yet. He's on the way. Dennis Campbell just crumbs across the line. Randy Ellis, 2.8 seconds back of him. You 
but we are on board with young Miller Freud and that x-ray running that true form Miller ring. I actually think the ring is named after him. I heard his father had some help in developing this ring. Lexan wings. Don't say it's a comeback. Say they never left. Lexan wings were very popular a few years ago. They were all the craze. Then they seemed to fade out for a bit, but the x-ray guys were using them from the last year and a half. And now everybody's on the Lexan wing. So congratulations to x-ray and Ty Testman and all the x-ray drivers for bringing back the 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 Lexan wing here. So we thought it was dead and gone, but it is back. I just want to say thank you to everybody that sent me birthday wishes yesterday. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, I haven't been able to go and look at all the uh, comments on my Facebook page, but thank you to everybody that reached out and took some time out of the day to wish me a happy birthday yesterday. That makes it 45 trips around the sun. Let's make it another 45 or 50 so I can go for an even century as we are on board with Miller Freud with 15 seconds left to go, and he makes his way through the field. He now has a 25-second lead, 25.5-second lead up on second. And he will bump up and get 10 more minutes of practice in his campaign to make it to the A-man in e-buggy. Dwayne says, yes, he's at work, night security. Okay, that makes sense. I remember doing those night shifts back when I was a prison officer, back when I was working on the, in the underground. I always liked nights. I don't mind staying up all night, getting a bit of sleep in the morning. Well, Miller Ford from Dennis Campbell, Randy Ellis, Zach Cater, and Jim Foster. But Miller Ford and Dennis Campbell will be your two bump-ups. Drew Byatt, our bump up from yesterday, looks like he did not make a start or broke on the uh, start. The battle for the yeah. lead rages down the straightaway, heading into the chicane. We're following it live. And here comes the battle for second down the straightaway. It's going to be a three-way battle coming up on Little Bump and Justin Fails, Lutz, Westergaard, and Fend. That's the battle to watch as they're coming down the step down. Rossiter right there with the best lap of the entire race. 30.3 for Rossiter, up to second. Alrighty, so we are on the intermediate Nitro Truggy C main. We have Dominic Aleprando, Blake Ryan, Ennis Graves, Quarry Brown, Chauncey Mack, JJ Truex, Lane Deming, Anton Watson, Leonard Murray, Ryder Trotter, Greg Smith, Sean Traub, Big Tony Brown, Guy Wing, and Bobby Moore. Bunch of Floridians, Floridian in this race. Dominic, Quarry, Anton, Ryder, Tony, Bobby Moore originally from Florida, but now claiming North Carolina. Okay. Good morning, Colton. How are you, buddy? Hope you're enjoying the coverage here. 
at the Sunday finals day of the at the 2023 Wicked Weekend here in Gainesville, Georgia. Is that Dominic Aleprando right there, Danny? That you just brought up? There we go. As you see, Mechanics getting one final tune. I assume that's Dominic's father right there. Tuning up that car one last time. Techno driver. All right, guys, here we go. Racers ready. Marshals ready. Let's fill them up, fill them up, fill them up, fill them up. 15 minutes, C main. And they're off. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. A little bit of carnage right there. But everybody seems to get away clean. Great start so far in the intermediate Nitro C, Nitro Truggy C main. But we'd expect that here from these drivers as we're getting up into some of the upper echelons and better drivers here at the Wicked Weekend. And it looks like Quarry Brown is right behind him. I, I recognize that paint job. He's out there. HB Southeast team manager, I believe. As Quarry Brown getting a little bit squarely up there. Over there, as we see Dominic Alaprando will come by. Quarry Brown right behind us. So that's your two bump up spots right there. Followed by Anton Watson. Ryder Trotter. Good to see Ryder up here making the trip. And uh, Tony Brown in fifth. And there we go. There's that big gaggle of cars there. But right now, it's all about Dominic and Quarry. As Dominic is out in front. Quarry right behind him. They would like to work together. Ooh, ooh, Quarry just getting a little bit wrong, casing that jump. But they can't be too, too easy because they have company right behind them. As you see that Georgia sun peeking through, mixed with the dust and the smoke, it's making visual just a little bit hard over there. If it's hard for us, it's got to be hard for these drivers. But right behind them, let's see when they come by. It is Anton Ryder. So there's, there's two racers right behind them. Right there, that is the battle for second. That is the battle for, that is actually second, Quarry Bond. That's first, Dominic. And they have third and fourth, not too far. Behind, as you see, Antoine just peeking in. They got 13 minutes. We are going to see some fuel stops here in this Nitro Truggy C main. Quarry out there in that red, black, red, yellow, white, checkered, black wing HB Nitro Truggy. We got a Techno Truggy right there in front. Antoine and Ryder just battling it out with each other in the back. So Quarry Ron, long-time racer from Florida. Dominic, also a younger racer from Florida, uh, making Mills Pond his local track. Lots of Mills Pond racers here. Lots of Florida racers, period, here. Biggest contingent of Florida Floridians I've seen in quite some time. But right now, Dominic getting a little bit crossed up in the, in the minefield. Quarry Brown just hanging back. He knows he doesn't have to push the issue. They want to bump up and live to race another day with 12 minutes and 26 seconds left to go. Dominic comes by and he throws down a 39-3. Quarry Brown also throwing down a 39-3. <clears throat> As they are looking very racy. Quarry just kind of settling down. He knows he just has to finish second. Antoine quite some distance behind him. 6.7 seconds back. And Antoine... Uh, not no, having no real threat from Ryder with him being 5.9 seconds back. But as we've seen, anything can happen with mistakes. That sun out there, that dust, that smoke is probably making it hard visually for these races. As we see Dominic getting it wrong. Quarry not pushing the issue. Probably just a slight bit faster in this second half of the track from, from Dominic. St. Augustine says Cam. Okay. Uh, I was talking to Danny, he said he sees them at Mills Pond quite a lot. So, Florida, it's a big state, but they all seem to race together. For Australia, the Australia of America. Pretty sure. Okay, so that's North Florida. That can be a difference of eight hours. That's how big Florida is. We'll be spending some time down in Florida. Looking to come out to uh, All Out on Wednesday night for some club racing. Would appreciate if anybody can uh, let my son uh, probably race their car. I know that's a big ask, but he asked me already if we're going to a different track and if he can race. So 
Looks like I'm going to have to get a car set up for him and leave it here in America for him so he can race until we got a track down there in the DR going. Morning, Danny Paz. Danny Paz, always a great morning person, as we are on board with Dominic. Uh, Quarry Brown got past Dominic and is now checking out. That's Dominic. And uh, Dominic is, let's see when he comes back around. Last time it was 7.7 .7 seconds back from Antoine. And it's going to be longer now. He's just 2.3 seconds behind Quarry. And Antoine is... Let's see, way back. Ryder actually taking over that position. But Ryder's 10.4 seconds back. And John Cantor says he's from over near Jacksonville. Uh, I've had the pleasure of going to Jacksonville a couple of times. We are on board with young Dominic Alaprando. Father and son team. Looks like a lot of racers not making this race. Blake Ryan, Ennis Graves, Chauncey McLean, Deming, Bobby Moore. Oh no! And we see Dominic flaming out or breaking or something happened here. Uh oh. No, so this is now going to allow young rider Trotter, and he's from Apoco, I believe. He is from Apoco. And that area, I remember going to his track that his dad used to run, RIP to Stu Trotter. Uh, I'm sure he's looking down on Ryder right now as we are on board with young Ryder running that S-Rex truck. He really good to see. Uh-oh, Ryder, just keep it calm, Ryder. Keep it calm. Antoine is 2.4 seconds back of Ryder. Let's see. We're going to have to get some fuel here shortly. I hope you can make it out there Wednesday too, Cam. Be good to see you, man. And there we see young Ryder. As he guns it down the straightaway, running that traditional, nope, not running the traditional buggy. And Antoine is 3.8 back. Unfortunate for Dominic. He doesn't look like he's going to get refired. Uh-oh. But Ryder Trotter now out in second. He has, he is 15.6 seconds behind Quarry Brown and 4.5 seconds ahead of Antoine Watson. What's up, Kimo? Bon dia. Kimo RC checking in from Bermuda via, from Azores via Bermuda. Big fan of RC, become a good friend of mine. We call him Salty Joe's nephew. Where is the saltiest of salts? By the way, this today he's probably racing GT. I'm surprised you didn't go and got a GT car, Kimo. You can race with those guys and your uncle Salty, your godpa Salty. As you guys know, Salty Joe, one of my best friends from Bermuda. He is the saltiest of salt. Oh, oh ooh, that could have been ugly just now. Ryder coming in. We got Danny Chavez doing the, the pit duties for Ryder. Good to see the Florida community getting by, uh, behind this young man and helping him out. Uh, obviously, with the passing of his father, Stu, earlier this year, such a sad situation for the young eight-year-old rider, but he's here at the RC track having fun, smiling, running around, like being a kid. So that is Anton Watson. What's up, Ed Moorhead? When is race time or someone going to do a big race inside in New York? We have nothing up here in the Northeast. I think it would be about trying to find a... Uh, affordable place to do it. These uh, these stadiums are not cheap. So I'm pretty sure if they can find a stadium to hold it that, that meets the requirements and it can be well, it can be rented at a cheap price, we can see a race happening up there. Logistics-wise, too, it's a lot to move up there as well. So lots of fuel. There's Anton Watson. I met Anton way back in 2004 at the in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Farm One at Nitro Fest 2004. So Anton Watson is currently no, nope, that's not Anton. That's not Anton. Uh, no idea. That is. 
Anton just came across the line. He's in third place. That's Ryder right there. Yeah. That's Ryder we're following right now. Syracuse Fairgrounds. Like I said, Ed, it has to be affordable. It has to be affordable. Uh, race time has a plethora of stuff they have to take up there. So it has to be log logistically affordable as well. What's up, Romero Gelato? Yeah, my birthday was yesterday, so I appreciate that. It's actually Father's Day in Dominican Republic today. So I usually my birthday falls on Father's Day because it's the end of July. So it's uh, usually a, a double day celebration for me. Hema says, I have a G car, GT car, not a big fan. Go race GT, man. There's nothing else going on in Bermuda. GT will make you a better driver. I think I'm going to race some GT when I get back to the DR. Then the only guy's racing. Nitro offer, it is the glory. I agree. But uh, when you don't have it, you have to go race something else. Corey Brown out to the lead on a Sunday morning drive. Corey looking to get 15 minutes of track time. Big doing, looking to bump up to that B main. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm really shocked that the Northeast does not have any bigger um, arena or indoor arena races, to be honest. Being as you guys have all that snow during the winter, I know up in the Pacific Northwest, it's, uh, they race all year round because they're able to get horse arenas pretty cheap. I don't know. It'd have to be something like this, like a horse arena that has the dirt already inside of it. There's Ryder getting it wrong. He's 4.3 seconds. He can't do too much of that because Antoine is not too far behind him. Antoine, Anton is, well, he's got the red line of doom. He's now 7.8 seconds back. So Ryder in fairly comfortable, but he doesn't want to break his car or flame out or have anything like that go wrong with uh, three minutes and 33 seconds left to go. He says, I was supposed to go practice today, Kimo, but it's too hot. I agree. I know what it's like being hot in Bermuda. 98,000% humidity there. It's almost like Florida. Oh, Central Florida. Oh, my gosh. I stopped at Lance's house, and I was just like, I remember at the 2018 Nationals, and it was just like, you just didn't stop sweating because it was just so hot. It was like 98, 99 degrees outside, probably 100. And I'm pretty sure the humidity was probably 90 to 95 daily. Yeah, Zach Gallery says, I'd say we're lacking horse arenas up here in, the, in upstate NY. Yeah, that's probably one of the reasons why it doesn't happen because the majority, I would say that, 99.9% .9 of these indoor races are held in uh, horse arenas or specific like PMB is a, a primarily a horse arena. You go to all these races, they all have horse stalls and, and whatnot like that. So I know that the uh, PMB arena gets used for various other things as well. Even in Silver State, it's a horse show. <laughs> it's for horses. It's a special type of dirt uh, for horses. They do... Um, like rodeos and all that type of stuff. So, what's up, bro? I'm Keo over there in Malaysia. I got to meet Danny K right off the bat. I said, hey, he's like the tallest Asian guy I saw here. Good looking young man, by the way. And his dad was like, I said, hey, are you Danny K? And his dad looked at me like, how do you know him? And I said, oh, bro, Keo and Adam told me to say hello to you. So, they were quite shocked that I knew who they were. And then once I mentioned your name, they I was like, oh, okay. So uh, he's out here playing basketball, I think you was telling me, uh, down in Florida in a basketball school. So that's good to see. And Malaysia has a very big, very dedicated RC community. Love to visit Malaysia one day myself. Love to get over to Asia. We are on board with our leader, Quarry Brown. Known Quarry for quite a few years. Awesome dude. Former 
college baseball player, collegiate baseball player. I believe he's a back doctor now, does a whole bunch of surgeries on backs. He's, if you got a crooked back, he can fix it. Very nice man. Been racing for many, many years. Mm, has become a, a, a good friend of mine over the years. As uh, I got to meet him many years ago in Hernan Southeast. I just absolutely love coming down. I love going to any RC community, but uh, the Southeast has something special for me in my heart because this is where I first came to race my big races in America back in the day when I was uh, a younger, up-and-comer racer, having that dream of one day being a pro, uh, quickly getting that smashed when I came here and saw how fast these guys were. Uh, but always still been a fan of traveling to these races and uh, never thought that this opportunity to be here calling these races and interacting with you guys online would be something that I do. So that's absolutely amazing. If you guys want to know more about my story, I'm going to do a shameless plug. Check out episode 248 of the No Name RC podcast. Uh, we talk about my story, how I got living in the Dominican Republic, how I got involved with JQ, and now where I am now. <coughs> Good morning, Ben Tracy. He says, let's go, boys. Happy Sunday and have a great day of racing. Thank you, sir. It's still early out. It is 8.15 a.m. And... We are now on race. We've had five races so far. That's race 17 of 53. Derek Van Ham, we sure, for sure have some talent in the Southeast. That is correct. Uh, I think the most impressive young man I've seen uh, this year. Oh, we're going to a commercial. All right, so the most impressive young man I've seen this year so far coming out of the Southeast has been Jonah Wilson. Super fast young man, uh, great father-son team, and he is exceptionally felt very talented. He just needs to continue to put on work, put in that work, and go out to racing and whatnot. So good morning, Mr. Schwartz. How are you up there in Connecticut? I hope it's nice and cool for you this morning. Thank you for joining us, D70 Racing. Always good to see my good buddy David in the chat. Good morning, Rimfire. How are you? Good morning to you, sir. You know, I, I, Rimfire is constantly in this chat. I have no idea where he's from. No idea where he's from. But he is always in the chat, always being positive, giving us points and encouraging people to hit that like button. So thank you, Rimfire, for joining us. Uh, I'm sure BJ is around somewhere, our statistician. But right up now we have the Sportsman Nitro Buggy C main. This will be a 15-minute main. Can go also as fly out. Florida guys have been getting the most bump shot this morning. Testament to Lance's series. I would agree. Uh, Lance's Florida RC Championship has rejuvenated eight scale racing in the Florida area. And it is a great series. We see people, it sells out in, <laughs> I think one race sold out in th 30 minutes. Uh, people uh, enjoy coming to it. They, it's actually a one day race, but you can practice on Friday. But you see people there setting up on a Wednesday. So I look forward. I believe I will be coming to the next two ones. Uh, so Lance has all intentions of bringing me there. We're going to do some fundraisers to get me out there as well. So I do appreciate everybody that has helped me get to these races. I can't do it without you guys' support. So I greatly appreciate that. And I love getting around and, and uh, seeing the Florida racers as well. Hello, Rimfire. He says, from Indiana, USA. I appreciate it, man. Um, still learning this commentary. I've been fortunate enough to work with legends like Nick Damon and Scotty Ernst and learn from both of them and uh, developing my own form of race calling here. But uh, I pay much homage to those two guys, uh, two guys I've watched and listened to calling races. Nick, obviously, from the UK. He has a, a very UK, European-style way. And, of course, Scotty, who has who is a legend in this and well respected he's up there doing his uh straight line shootout and the one the biggest thing i learned from scotty was it's okay to be passionate it's okay to be animate animated it's okay to get excited about this so i uh, i definitely appreciate getting that chance to work with scotty hope i do get a chance to work with him some more good morning gary stoot how are you my friend are you going out and do some laps on your track this morning up gary's rc Gary's got the TZO team race coming up in September. I need to get that video out to you too. I forgot. I have just I have just completely forgot. I do apologize. 
So we had Gary on the off lefty off the records. I look forward to getting back to doing some lefty off the records after my yes. Hopefully I'll get up to Gary's RC racing one day. He that's another very impressive and awesome backyard track. Because I mean it doesn't look like a backyard track because it's so big, but it really is in his backyard. Uh, up there. Yes, I really enjoyed. Uh, thank you, Grimfire. Uh, we did a commentary at the Worlds. Yes, um, Nick is very good. He has that English humor. If you don't get it, you, you don't understand. And I will send that video off to you. I just need to cut it up and get it to you. So we are getting ready to start with the Sportsman Nitro Buggy C main. These are 15 minutes. And that is Jason Lata out there in front of that Kyosho. And they're off. Oh, whoa, that could have been very ugly, but uh, looks like, oh, that is ugly now. That is extremely ugly. That is a not a good start right there from the Sportsman Nitro Buggy C main. And let's see who's out front. Yes, it looks like Jason Lata was out front. Maybe that's Andy Gross in that pink and orange car. We'll see when they come around the line. We want to thank all of you guys for tuning in on the chat. Thank you. We look forward to entertaining you all day here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. We see Neil McIver talking to somebody there. No, no idea what they're talking about. But there they're in staging. And it's Andy Gross, Jason Latner, Nick Elliott, Connor Rebus, and Franklin Ratliff. Connor Rebus in that Ferrari-themed techno. His dad has a monster energy theme techno. Both great looking cars. And there's Jason Latna. Oh, I've seen that guy around. He has an epic beard. But he's in second right now. Andy Gross in first. Ooh, ah, that's not good. Who's that green and red car right there? Well, this is our first and second. It's uh, somebody. I believe that's Nick Elliott. Let's see when they come by. So there's Andy Nick Elliott has bumped up. Connor Rebus now in third. There you see Connor Rebus in that bright red and black Ferrari themed Formula One. Uh oh, and Connor just goes right on the inside. I like that car. It's absolutely beautiful. His dad's car is beautiful as well. That green and black, fluorescent green. Uh, and we see this young Connor, his son, out there with that Ferrari. I guess he's a big Ferrari fan. And we see Andy Gross getting it wrong. And Rimfire says they are from Indiana. Awesome. No D7. The track is as is. They just blew it off last night. It is rougher than the moon out there. It is actually pretty rough. So we got some big craters out there. And there is, ah, Connor Rebus is out front now. He is looking to check out and let these two, these two guys battle it out behind him. He wants to keep it calm. He has 12 minutes, 38 seconds left and there we are on board with Andy Gross as he tiptoes through the minefield up and over these double doubles and there we see Connor just in his peripheral vision and then you can see behind him he has Jason Latta not too far behind okay Illinois okay apologies Illinois. There's Andy Gross right there. He's currently in second. And this is allowing Connor Rebus to just pull away. As you see, Connor just going around that 180. Ooh, and that driver getting it wrong. He was he was in the hunt for that second bumper position. But there we see Andy Gross getting it wrong in the minefield. This minefield has caused fits for drivers of drivers of all levels. You saw the Dakota fan, considered to be one of the best in the world, getting it wrong there. As we see, Connor Reeves having to be tire marshaled, as well as Andy Gross. And let's see when they come across the line, because him and Jason Lada are very close. Nope. Nick Elliott now. He's 1.5 seconds back of Andy Gross. There we see Nick Elliott in that green car, just popping his nose in. And... That is also a very difficult jump. We see Don Hovde. Judson Lee, Arkansas in the house. Why did they call it Arkansas and not Arkansas? 
Can I call it Arkansas? Or do I have to call it Arkansas? But thank you, Judson Lee, for joining us. Always good to see where our listeners and followers are tuning in from. One day, bro, Kio, one day I'll get over to Malaysia. I really want to go to Philippine Masters next year. And we see Andy Gross making a mistake, and that's allowing Nick Elliott and Don Hovday, Hovde to get up into position. And now this is the position between Nick and Don for that second bump-up spot as Connor Rivas in that Ferrari-themed red and black techno is out to a very decent lead. And now this is the battle for second. And the bump up spot between Don Hovde and Nick Elliott. Let's see Nick Elliott in that green car as he comes around the loop. He just clicks off and he, we see Don 2.1.1.1 seconds behind him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There we see Nick getting it wrong, getting up in that pipe, and we have a battle on our hands right now. Don Hovde of Georgia local. Uh-oh. And Oh, no. And that is going to allow. Nick Elliott up and over the doubles. Now in that third position, I would accept. And Jit. Uh-oh. Here's one of our bumper uppers, Johnson Wynn. Johnson win. Johnson win. He is now in position. He is 2.2 seconds back of Franklin Ratcliffe, who's two seconds back of second. So now it's Nick Elliott, Franklin Ratcliffe, Johnson win coming from the 16th position. Where's Johnson? I recognize this car. Right now, that is Nick Elliott. He's in second. I think that Johnson just peeped around. Uh-oh, Nick getting it wrong. I believe that that was Johnson Wynn and Franklin Franklin Ratcliffe who got by. Nick getting it wrong right there. There's Johnson right there. I recognize that color of his car. He has bumped up from the 16th position. He is now currently running, I would assume, in third. Oh, 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 they get it completely wrong, completely wrong, completely wrong. That is not a way to, to bump up here, guys. Let's see how it all Franks. Alex Esser, the big winner. Johnson Wynn right behind Alex, 1.5, so... This is the battle for the bump up spot. Let's see if I can find it. There we see it. There we see it. Let's see. That's that Alex Esser is that pink car and blue. And there we see Johnson win. I don't know. Oh, Alex getting it wrong, but get landing on all fours. Where is Johnson win? Where is Johnson win? Bumping up from 16th. He is now currently scoring in third. Not sure if he is in third. As we see Alex Esser in that pink and blue. It is Connor Rebus, Johnson win, Alex Esser. I believe, if we are correct, Johnson actually pitted early. We've seen this man. He has bumped up. This will be his third bump position. Johnson win says, ah, I didn't qualify too good. I'm just going to get my practice in the actual racing. I think racing makes great practice. As you see, Alex Esser, oh, no, that car just, just got hammered. Yes, sir. Judson Lee says, bring the heat at Flowood RC. Shout out to Charlie Mack, who has not been in the chat all weekend. What's up, Savage Joe? Good morning to you, sir. Savage Joe of Ran on the Talent Podcast. How you doing out there in Minnesota? I'm sure, pretty sure Minnesota is extremely excited about the performance of Seth freaking Van Dalen this weekend. He is absolutely flying. I mean, even Lance and I were just talking about it last night. Before we went to sleep, he's like, I am so impressed. If Seth and Dalen, as am I. Now Alex Esser is in second, followed by Johnson Wynn, our guy coming from 16th place. We need to find this battle. Is this? This is. Okay, we are now following Johnson Wynn. I believe he is. There's Alex. I think that's Alex behind him. Nope. Let's see as they come across the line. Johnson Wynn is now in second. Six minutes left to go. I hope he has come in for fuel. 
Uh-oh. John Singman getting stuck in that pipe. We've seen that happen quite a bit. Hello, Rich Torito. Good morning from Epic RC. Thank you for joining us. Bob's RC from Canada. And John Singman in that in that second position and he has some company i believe that is for position we shall see as he come by that looks like don hovde oh no and he getting it all wrong over that double just not able to get that power down that's going to allow johnson by we see johnson going on the back straight past staging and let's see when they come across the loop johnson followed by don hovde this is the battle for the bump up spot there is johnson there is johnson who's bumping up for his third time he's had plenty of practice he's looking to get into that sportsman buggy b main loganville racer johnson win oh no johnson getting wrong get across up in that rut that's gonna allow dawn by these guys race against each other quite often they're both from georgia apparently oh no johnson tipping over there is a giant massive hole in that off camera that is going to cost johnson quite a bunch of time as we see dawn have the in that orange fluorescent orange and white car Getting some space between him as Johnson is just going from bad to worse as we are not seeing him come across the track or coming across the line here. Let's see what the gap is when he comes by. Six seconds. It went from bad to worse. Johnson's going to have to put down, put his head down and focus and try to click off some laps and catch up Don Hovde and hope that Don makes some mistakes. But you know who doesn't have to do any of that? Connor Rivas. He's out front. He's got a 17.4 second uh, lead out there. And he is on form bobby tillman wow what a legend in the house bobby tillman man that's one dude who was extremely fast back in the day we need to get you on the podcast man i hope you're doing well i see you got a picture of a little baby there so that means you are a father now congratulations bobby tillman was a very fast young racer back in the day professional racer he used to run mugen for the longest while and uh Looks like we always like to have legends on our podcast to talk. And we are on board with Connor Rebus and that Ferrari themed black and red techno out there just having fun. He just needs to navigate his way through this lap traffic. That lap traffic needs to just let him by. Thank you, sir. What's up, EKJ24000? Look, at, are you tuning in from the pits, man? So. Remember, everybody, that the top two will be bumping up. This is the Sportsman Nitro Buggy C main. They got 15 minutes runtime. B main will get 20 minutes. That's Connor with two minutes and 42 seconds left. The battle really is between Don Hovde and Johnson Wynn. Johnson Wynn making up some time. He's now 3.5 seconds back according to scoring. Let's see what it is when they come across the line for this time as Don comes by and Johnson that is the battle 1.4 seconds back the battle for second is between Don Hovde and Johnson Nguyen win let's see if we can find that as they are now making their way there we go there's Don and that orange and white and right behind it behind him is Johnson who is on his third bump up in Nitro uh, both of these guys race against each other often they're both from Loganville, so it's really good to see coming out here, racing on the big stage here at Wicked Weekend on this epic track built by Bobby Moore, I guess. They built it just right because they knew it was going to get rough, and it has gotten rough for these drivers as we see Johnson win, trying to chase Don. There's Johnson right there, that black car. He is now, he has Don in his sights, and they have lap traffic behind in between them. Oh, Don has lap traffic right there. And Don gets it wrong as he goes through that cater. That's going to allow win by. Can win hold on and bump up for the fourth time and get the ultimate run time and go into a 20-minute Sportsman B main. He, starting, he is starting from 16th on the grid, made his way up, and he has been battling for the last 10 minutes trying to keep that position as we see Don right behind him. Uh-oh, Johnson getting it wrong probably. Tires getting ball getting out there in that sun that sun that 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 fluff. We see Joe cheering on Shelby 
Come on, Johnson. Come on, Don. Give us a show to the end of the race. As we see Don coming up, look, coming up short. And Johnson just taking some control, taking his time, getting these jumps right. Let's see Johnson stay wide. Very good, very good. Can't get in that crater. That crater is immensely deep. Uh oh, oh no! But there we see both of them making a mistake there as Johnson comes out for the battle and he likes to go on the inside. Don going inside as well. Johnson's car bucking and bowing. Oh no! Woo. As he tips the Don, oh Don jumps by him. What an epic pass, but Johnson gets it back. And they're gonna race to drive. 18 seconds left to go. This is gonna be a, oh, as they power down the drag race. And we can see that Don just has, motor just has a little bit more power as Johnson just, oh no. Oh no, Johnson, come on, Johnson, don't do that. Let's go, come on, you can bump up one more time. Let's do it. Johnson, Johnson, Johnson. Don Hovdi right there. Uh, they have, they still have some time. One mistake and we'll see Johnson right back on his tail. Johnson, just casing that jump right there, but losing some time. Let's see what happens as they go through the minefield. Can Johnson pick? Oh, Don! Don makes a mistake! And that allows Johnson to get by. Johnson get by. Can he hold on? Can he hold on for a few more corners? Can Don, look at Don, frankly trying to jump by. Are we going to see an exciting finish to the line? As you see Don. Woo! Well done, Johnson. From 16th on the grid to... <laughs> What an exciting race between Don Hovday and Johnson Nguyen. These guys battle against each other on a regular basis. Loganville, they come here to battle against each other just now. That was uh, an exciting race. I'm sorry, guys, if I blew your eardrums, but I can't help it. It was exciting. Now I need a sip of coffee. Techno RC. Techno RC is a championship winning manufacturer of high performance A scale, TED scale, nitro, and electric RC buggies and trucks. With a worldwide dealer network, USA and Europe based headquarters, comprehensive warranty program, and global race support, Techno RC is excellence in RC. View the full lineup of Techno RC race proven vehicles by visiting www.technorc.com. Intermediate Nitro Buggy C Main. Morning, Tony Chandler. How you doing? And we would like to say thank you to our sponsors. They are Absolute Hobbies, J Concepts, Techno RC, TLR, VP Racing, ProTech RC, Nitro Pro, BeachRC.com, aka Reds, Lugs Racing, SRX, TNR Fuels, H3 Racing, On Point, RC Graphics, Kicker, Performance Audio, WRC. Race Time Entertainment, Florida RC Championships, and the man that talks too much himself, Lefty the Great. I'm talking about myself in third person. I swear I'll never do that. The No Name RC Podcast. Thank you all for joining us. It has been an exciting couple of races of bump ups. Uh, I think I'm definitely not going to have a voice by the end of this day. But that's okay. I don't need a voice after today. I'm going on vacation for a little bit. So, it's been awesome. What a great, and we greatly appreciate everybody who has joined us in the chat. We appreciate everybody that's made the trip here as we see Hunter LaFleur. Oh, we got my boy, Skiller Joe Rodriguez. He's starting in third. Young Skiller, 
11 years old. 11 years old from Texas. You see Javon Mallory's also in this race. See his girlfriend down there pitting him. And uh, what's up, Tony? How you doing? I like to see Skilla do well her. I like to see my boy Shelby, but man, I'm, I don't know. I got too many guys I want to see do well her. Tiba is pitting uh, Shelby Parker. They drove over together. Shelby is big Kansas City Chief fan. Good morning, Alan Snyder. How are you this morning? Thank you for joining us this beautiful morning here at the, in Gainesville, Georgia at the Wicked Weekend. We're happy to have all of you guys out here in the chat. If you guys can want to do us a favor, hit that sub, like, notification button on YouTube. Share this if you are on Facebook. Share this if you are on YouTube. Let's get this out there. Let's get more RC racing out in the algorithm. Up, starting up front, we have Mark Moon, Will McIver, Joe Rodriguez, Nick Reppin, Javon Mallory, Gene, the Machine, Hickerson, Wyatt Lawson, Ryan Rand, Philo Hatch, Grant Walker, Chadwick Pergantis, Katie Carmandia, Race Like a Girl, Jeremy Reed, Young Bo Zarin, Shelby Parker, and Dylan Barnett are your two bumper uppers. Dylan hailing from the land of the Sasquatch, Montana. I don't know if that's true, but I pretty much assume if they're, I believe that probably they do exist. And if they do, it's somewhere in Montana. What's up, Mr. Sean Bishop? Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I hope you're going to have a great day enjoying our coverage here of the 2023 Wicked Weekend. Next up for Race Time Entertainment is the AMS in November. Hopefully, I'll be there as well. Hopefully, trying to get some of our European counterparts over here to come race in the Southeast. Uh, lots of them when I was at IBC were very excited and talking about that as well as PMB. So going to be one of my missions to constantly be a pain in their behind to get over here. Uh, already talked to Techno about Barufalo, Nico at Hot Race about them. I know Angaro was talking about it. Kanas, Robert Battier, David Ranafalk, even the village idiot himself, JQ. Be good to get some of those guys over here to race here in the Southeast. I'm pretty sure that the Southeast would appreciate seeing some of those European races come over here. And uh, I'm sure they'll get treated to some fireworks and some, uh, you know, the traditional sweet tea of South, uh, the South and all the good fiddles. Definitely got to have some banana pudding. Woo! I had some of that the other day and oh my gosh, I am in love. Danny, you got to find some banana pudding. I don't know how it is in Florida. Dan is like, oh, this guy just talks too much. <laughs> Danny goes to me last night. He goes, well, Keenan, once again, that you prove you can spend the entire day talking about RC. <laughs> right, I love this stuff. All righty. So drivers are getting ready. See Tebow just topping up Shelby. And there we see Skiller Joe starting third. Let's go, Skiller. Let's go, Skiller. And they're off. Intermediate C, intermediate nitro buggy C main. And it looks like it's going to be Mark Moon, William McIver, and Joe Rodriguez starting out front. Mark Moon is not running a white body. Looks like Mark Moon getting it wrong. Um, Rimfire says, what would JQ think of banana pudding? He would say that I shouldn't eat it. That's what he would say. And then I'd probably still eat it. Or he tried to take it from me because he's evil like that. Now let's see. It's Will MacGyver, Javon Mallory, the big shaker from fifth up to second. Mark Moon, Ryan Rand, Joel Rodriguez running off here at top five. And there we are with Javon. Thank you, Javon, for bringing me an ammo crate. I'm going to have to ship that to myself in Bermuda. I mean, not in Bermuda, in Dominican Republic. Javon, coming from Virginia, he makes Adrenaline and RC his home track. And there we see Javon, young Javon, his hero, his girlfriend, his dad racing as well. And that 
Let's see. Let's see. I can't see. Uh-oh. Somebody getting it wrong right there. Will McIver. That was actually Javon getting it wrong, and that's going to push him back to fourth. Will McIver up there. Is he running the N1? That's Mark Moon. Okay, so Mill, so hold on. Looks like Will, no, there's Will up in the front. This is Mark right here. Got to be. Will, because Will's running N1. There's Mark Moon, got a painted body on his car. There we see Will McIver running the N1, coming across the finish line. There we see Mark Moon from Loganville RC Complex. On it and associated Nitro Buggy. And there we see Skiller Joe in that green and white. I'm sure Cody Bancroft and Skiller's mom are all nervous watching him race right now. Had the pleasure of finally meeting Skiller and Cody. Been talking to his dad for ooh, quite some time over the years. They're from Texas. Watching Joel's progress through the through the racing. And he gets to race at great tracks like Thornhill and Mike's Hobbies and A1 Air down there in Texas, as well as uh, Indy. Here you see Skiller, Mark Moon, Ryan Rand, Joel Rodriguez, Javon Mallory in fifth. Javon getting out to a lead and then having it go bad for him. But Joel putting his head down, trying to catch up these guys. He's got 12 minutes and 10 seconds. Will McIver is out uh, to a seven-second lead. We are currently on board with Mark Moon, and we can see uh, Ryan Rand, who is right behind him. He is about 1.9 seconds back, and Joe is now oh, Joe having a long lap here. Very long lap, and he's now 10 seconds. I'm hoping he came in for fuel just now. Might have been, might have been an early fuel stop. That, that couldn't be possible. But Joe Rodriguez, Jeremy Reed, Dylan Bartlett, Javon Malley, Dylan Martin, Da Bartlett on the move. He is coming from 16th, looking to do that bump game. The Ginger Ninja from Montana of the One Army crew. His dad is excellent machinist and uh, is the owner of One Army, making uh, hop up parts for your H HB cars, as my Australians would say it. HB. And uh, we are on board with Mark Moon right now. Ryan Rand trying to put his head down. You see Philo Hatch from Texas also. He's the fourth version of Philo. And his son is the fifth. And Javon Mallory getting back up there. But these guys have a lot of work to do if they want to get up to chase down Mark Moon, who's currently in second. Let's drop back if, if we're listening to us. Let's see if we can pick up uh, this battle for fourth and fifth between Philo and Javon. I'll let our camera guy know when they're coming across the loop here. And they're going to be coming. They should be coming down over the double. There we go. Can we follow those two cars who just went by? There we go. That is Ryan Philo Hatch and Javon Mallory right there. Philo with the yellow wheels. Javon with the white. There is Philo from Texas as well, and there we see Joe right behind them, Javon uh, from Virginia, making adrenaline in this film, so we have two Texans and a Virginian battling it out for that fourth, fifth, and sixth place, but really, they need to get up and be chasing down Mark Moon, who is uh, currently has a 10 second lead over fourth. Mark Moon, a Georgia native, and head of the Loganville RC Complex. There we see the battle between Philo and Javon. Oh, Javon just getting it wrong right there. Showing me some machine parts he's made for his associated. It's going to go from bad to worse for Javon. And he's not having a good day. 
Let's see what it shakes out to be when they come across the line with Joe, Skiller Joe, Rodriguez. He's 4.3 seconds back of Philo. And uh, Ryan Rand right now is 6.1 seconds back of Mark Moon. And Will McIver out front uh, with a 14.5 second lead. I believe this is Will McIver we are on board with now. Yes, it is, because that is the N1. He is running the Agama N1. Let's show Will some love. I know there's lots of people asking about this car, so here you go. Here's the N1 on a rough track. In capable hands, because Will is actually a very good driver. Will McIver out there at the Agama N1. Says he's really liking this car. This is a car I'd like to get in my collection as well. I'd like to build it and just put it on the shelf. I think it's a very cool concept. I got the opportunity to see quite a lot, lot of it last year uh, at RCGP. I got to travel over and actually watch the car perform on the track that it's been tested on there at Nemo Raceway. Um, Lee Martin and John Hazelwood, very nice guys. Lee, I need to get John on the podcast because he has a plethora of stories. There we see a, a long fuel stop, no rush. Uh, Will has a very big lead. He's also fast, so pretty good driver. But here you go, guys. You get an up-close and personal look at the Agama N1. Philo is making up some time on Ryan Hatch. Let's see. Ryan Rand, sorry. Is Ryan Rand having a long lap? Probably coming in for fuel, both of them. Bill DeLong says, let's go, Philo, drop the hammer. And he's up to third now, but he's 16.4 seconds back of Mark Moon. Not sure if Mark Moon has come in for fuel yet. We see race like a girl, Katie Carmendi, up to fifth. Known Katie, Katie for su quite some time, her and her husband, Dave. Uh, star racers here in the southeast. <clears throat> Been racing a little bit of go-kart, so... Uh, they haven't been racing too much RC lately. But Will McIver out there to a comfortable lead in a Gamma N1. And we are on board with Will. I'm, I'm really interested in this car. We all wanted to know how it was going to do on these rough American-style tracks. And this is a rough track. So it's interesting to see. Will's also a very good driver. I've been driving here in the Southeast for, for many, 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 many years. But remember... Will, when he was 13, 14, at my first big race that I attended in Charlotte. We have five minutes, 38 seconds left. Nine minutes, 25 seconds down here in the intermediate nitro buggy C main, 15 minutes long. Remember, uh, all B mains will be 20 minutes long. Uh, we will have double A mains for the electric classes, so plenty of runtime here at the Wicked Weekend. A record entry counter of 666. Entries, 332 people, but way more people milling about. As you know, RC racers travel with their families, so it's, it's a good uh, 500 people here yesterday. Of course, that will thin out today as people finish up their races and decide to go home. Always a, a fun day on Sunday, but also a sad day as your RC family kind of just disappears and you, get, you have to wait to the next event to see them. Hope you guys are thoroughly enjoying the coverage. I want to say a big shout out to our camera guy, Travis Melton, uh, Jacob Peterson of Race Time Entertainment, and Danny Paz, the man here, the one man show, having a, in a great combination here, I think we've made. And they're doing an excellent job of bringing you the coverage, working out any mistakes, fixing the audio, buffering video, all that type of stuff. They have been worked tirelessly to bring you guys out there in the virtual world the best coverage that you can have so please reward them with a thank you a like a sub a notification and sharing of this it really helps everything go along but speaking of i need to share this myself what's up ken calhoun how you doing buddy ah oh, man i 
I'm, I am the least important part of this. I just talk. That's what I do for a living. But thank you. I appreciate that. And I, I appreciate all you guys out there tuning in and keeping me entertained as well because it's just been like one long podcast for me. So thank you guys for uh, joining me in the chat. I look forward to talking to you guys all, all day long. There we go. There's Mark Moon right there. No, actually, he's there. He, oh. There we are with a battle for second between Philo Hatch and Mark Moon. Two minutes and 22 seconds left to go. I believe Philo calls Texas his home, his home state. Georgia versus Texas right here. Let me know in the chat if I'm wrong, but I believe he's from Texas. But Mark Moon is now 0.6 seconds behind Philo Hatch. <clears throat> and Javon Mallory, eight seconds back. He needs these guys to get tangled up so he can get up and bump up to that second spot. But right now, we are on board with Mark Moon. And there you can see Philo Hatch just in front of him. Let's see what the gap is when they come across the line. Philo is now has a point three oh and Mark Moon gets it wrong right there and that is going to cause him plenty of time. But there is Philo out there in that yellow wheeled yellow wing. Philo the fourth. Oh no. Philo getting it wrong. Oh, and he's getting marshaled. Getting some help right there. I believe this is the battle for a second. Let's see when they come across. Uh-oh, Mark flamed out, we are told. So Mark is out. This actually, so Philo is out to a good lead there. I believe that is not a battle for anything. Yvonne Mallory 7.6 seconds back. Is this Ken Calhoun? Okay. Is this Ken the monster truck driver? No, that's the other Ken. Work comes first, man. Real life comes first. You got to play hard. You got to work hard to play hard. RC Offered races says, I race with Ville here in NC. Yes, sir. Up there. Oh, man, I forgot the name of that track. I've actually been there, too. Oh. It it's on the tip of my tongue. Can't remember. I'm sure RC off road racing will let me know. Sean Bishop, the chasing germ has been awesome. Yes, uh, that was young Cooper Lycom, aspiring germ pilot. That's uh, Dave Lycom's son. So he was able to go out there and get some great footage. I thought it was great as well. What's up, hobo? How you doing, man? Alrighty, so Will McIver will have a comfortable bump up into the intermediate Nitro Buggy B main, followed by Philo Hatch will join him. Javon Mallory, unfortunately, this ends his, his Nitro Buggy campaign, but he is in the main mains for... Alrighty. 
Alrighty, we are back with the 40 plus Nitro Buggy C main, 15 minutes long. Hello, Saltwater Octane. Good morning to you, sir. Then good morning to Lefty, Lance, and Danny Paz. Lance is up. Lance is up there. Been up early this morning. Up there calling the race, getting everything going for us first thing in the morning. Already, so this is the forty plus nitro buggy C main. What's up, Tim Timothy Emerson? Actually, I am in AC, so <laughs> I'm pretty spoiled. I'm here in the AC, but it looks hot outside. I haven't been outside since I got her. But right now, we are on board. Let's see when they come across the line. It is Curtis Crumbs, Peach State Hobbies, followed by Greg Smith, Guy Wing, Bobby Moore. This is the 40-plus Nitro Buggy C main, 15 minutes long. We are watching Greg Smith at the moment. What's up, Zach Thompson? How you doing, man? Good to see you in the chat. Hope you are. I see you on the hustle, man. Good to see that hustle. The grind never stops. There's Cur Curtis Crumbs. And there's Greg Smith right behind him. Curtis, another Georgia native. Remember that the top two will bump up and live to race another game. We've seen some exciting bump battles here. Now we see Johnson win in Sportsman Nitro Buggy. He's now on his fourth bump in Nitro. So it is, don't let anybody say that your race is over because you had bad qualifying. That is one of the great things about eight scale racing as there is bump ups. Thank you, Peter Cole. Glad to see you're enjoying the coverage. Please give us a share and a like. Good morning, Jennifer. How are you? I am good. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for the lozenges. I'm going to have to pop one here shortly. As the vocal cords are getting a bit strained, but you know what? I do it for the RC. I do it for the industry. Look forward to talking about RC. I'm going to take a little break next week and enjoy Florida with my son. And then I'll uh, head back and get back to recording and see what ne what's the next race I go to. Not sure yet. Well, we are on board with Craig Smith. Greg Smith, sorry. And there is Curtis right behind him. Greg in that sky blue, all blue car, black wing, white wheels. Hello, Everett. How are you doing, Everett Davenport? I'm doing great. How are you? Mark Boham, Boham, uh, you going where? Not sure where you're talking about. Um, but morning, everybody out there in Facebook, Landia. Happy Sunday morning to you guys. Great Sunday morning of RC racing here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend in Gainesville, Georgia. It's a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining. And all of that good stuff. But guess what? We are racing under our roof, so it doesn't really matter. 
So what Octane, did I get some? No, I didn't get any Black Rifle today. I am on Pete's. It's pretty strong, but I will get some Black Rifle coffee uh, when I come back the next time to put in the camper. Now I have a coffee machine in the camper. So that's always great. So it looks like I'll be doing Camp Life with Lance a lot more here over the next six months. So I'll have my coffee. Can't start my day without coffee. Not one. Peter Curl says not one hundred percent certain yet, but if I if I can, if I can, it'll be around two before I can leave. Are you coming out here to watch the racing live? Greg Holland says I'm about to get fully awake. The, that three hour time difference is a killer. Greg was in her holding his breath in record free diving time yesterday, watching his his son. I mean, his grandson, Joseph Ruggiero, 12 years old, running. What's up, Donnie B? Thank you, man. I appreciate all the support. Uh, probably see you sometime soon, too, her, because I'm going to be in the Southeast quite a lot over the next six months, apparently. I don't mind. I love it, her, in the Southeast. <laughs> okay, so Peter's talking to Mark. Okay, sorry, I was confused. All righty. We are on board with Greg Smith. He is out to uh, in second behind Curtis Combs, 6.1 seconds behind Curtis. No real racing going on. The next best racing would be between Bobby Moore and Brad Bowman or Bobby Moore and Michael Hine, but these 40-plus Nitro guys are pretty much um, spread out. If... Uh, Peter Curl says, hopefully so. Unfortunately, adulting at the moment. Uh, TRKRLN, I am not sure. I'm waiting to get some confirmation. We do have 20-minute uh, pro. We do have 20-minute B mains coming up. So I, I don't know. You can probably go have a look in the mains of Live RC and work it out at about five minutes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Greg Holland, um, I, the No Name RC podcast and everybody around here likes to watch the Americans race. So um, I have a big following around the world. I'm absolutely happy about that. So all the people that support the NNRC. Dirt Concepts, what's up, Lefty? Looks like you're hanging in there. What time do the pro mains? I don't know. I'm trying to get a, a, start, uh, a start time on that. But we, we, we do have some great B mains coming up. So... Stay tuned for that. Chemo RC, can we follow Guy Wing? He's in last at the moment. Not really taking requests during the mains too much. Let's see. Okay, Mark, you coming up? Cool, dude. Come in and see me and get some decals. By the way, where are my decals? I had a whole bunch of decals here, and now they're not here. Someone pilfered them. Oh, no, here they are. Got decals. Come see me in the uh, booth and get some decals. Oh, Kimo, get off that Kyosha. You're my Ako now. I'm going to tell Salty about you wanting to see Kyosha is going around the track. There's Bobby Moore. And this is kind of been a... I got some for you, Cam. I have some. This has been kind of a no non-action C main as we see Curtis Crumbs and Greg Smith just getting out to uh, a lead. Actually, that is not very a very good battle going on. 
Actually, Brad Bowman is now 2.9 seconds back of Greg Smith. So we could actually drop back. All righty, so we are on board. Let's, let's, we're with Greg Smith. Let's find Brad Bowman. He just inherited that second position. So let's see if we can find him. He is only 0.8 seconds behind Curtis Crumbs, actually. So let's find Curtis because right behind him is Brad. There's Curtis, and I assume that's Brad in that blue car right there. There's Curtis Crumbs. Brad now. Well, he got to be on Greg Smith, so we had a snooze fest, but now we got some action going on. And we see Curtis come by. Brad's Greg Smith getting back out in front. So maybe Brad came out, uh, and he's now 4.1 seconds back. So there's Greg. So Brad must be one of these cars in the back. That is actually Curtis. That's Greg in that blue car. I'll figure it out by the time they come around. That's Curtis. Peach State Hobbies. That's Greg in the blue car. So, and this must be Brad right here, I assume. Let's see when he comes around. Yeah, so... We actually have Brad making some moves. We actually have a good battle going on between Curtis and Greg right now. So we'll stick with that as Curtis must have come in for fuel. And Greg, I'm assuming he's pitted for fuel. With four minutes and 35 seconds. There's Greg. I tell him he was going to take the hat off. I was like, no, dude, keep the hat on. And it's looking, it's looking cool. So there's Greg Smith. I believe he's from Georgia as well. And he is looking to chase down... Curtis Crumbs out there in that HB. And we see Greg in that all blue. I think it looks like a Mugen from here. And we got Steve Holesclaw cheering on Bobby Moore. And there we are. Uh oh. Curtis making a mistake and Greg trying to capitalize on that. So here they go. They just need to work together. Three minutes and 40 seconds left. Chuck Linebach. Hello, Chuck. How are you? Oh, Greg's from NC. That's right. I've seen him before. I just wasn't sure. Seen him around at races before. Greg Smith. Now chasing down Curtis Crumbs. We got North Carolina versus Georgia. As we see that all blue car, Greg Smith. And Curtis just out there in the front pulling off a slight gap there. They are 1.4 seconds between them when they come across the line. It's 11.4 seconds back to third. Bobby Moore is 9.9 .9 seconds back of fourth. And Michael Hine is 14 seconds back of Bobby. So this race is spread out immensely, but not hurt. Oh, Greg getting it wrong. Must be my son's. Yeah, he was sitting there last night. He doesn't know the value of money. Thank you, sir. Or getting up early. <laughs> Alrighty. So. 40 plus nitro buggy here. Greg Smith, we are on board. Blue car, white wheels. Two minutes and 30 seconds left to go. This is the closest battle on the on the track. Greg, oh, oh, and that's lap traffic causing Greg some, oh, he self-marshals himself. Gets a handful of throttle. That always can solve a problem when you are flipping. I was told when you're, when you're flipping all over the place, pin it to win it. It can be 50-50. Curtis Crumbs, who's kind of led this from start to finish. 90 seconds left to 
Not the most exciting race, but Curtis won't be, he'll be happy about that. All he cares about is getting that bump up. These two, this is RT racing. So, but right now they're driving pretty smooth. Pressure on him to to push it. I mean, he's still going to be starting uh, if anything. He's still only going to make up one position if he can get in front of Curtis. But they will live to race a 20-minute main here shortly or later on today. <coughs> As we're going to be finishing up our C mains and getting on to our B mains. Uh-oh. See, now he can't be doing stuff like that. Now that can break your car. See how it all shakes out, Frank. He will. Techno RC. Techno RC is a championship winning manufacturer of high performance A scale, TED scale, nitro, and electric RC buggies and trucks. With a worldwide dealer network, USA and Europe based headquarters, comprehensive warranty program, and global race support, Techno RC is excellence in RC. View the full lineup of Techno RC race proven vehicles by visiting www.technorc.com. Okay, so we are back. Uh, we see that Mark Bunn has wonders is the exact same dart being reused for this event. Nope, this is the dart. This is a horse arena. This is the dart that is here in the arena, and it all does slightly differentiate, but some with less sand, some with more clay. But no, they do not move the dart. They, the dirt is already here. So <clears throat> we are up for the Sportsman Electric Seaman. Uh, Greg Holland, he's nervous. He's looking at his uh, j uh, his grandson as they are off. Lucas Schasso, Miller Freud, who has been absolutely rapid. Let's see as they go. That's Miller, that's actually Lucas Schasso, Schasso out there in front. As he is coming down, there is Lucas right there starting on pole. That looks like two Hollingsworth behind him. And can we, will we see Miller Freud bump up to that C main after having a bad qualifying? We can, it's quite possible. He has been super fast all weekend. Let's see when it, when it all shakes out around her. So it's Lucas Chasso, Toot Hollingsworth, and David Ellis, Carlos Rebus, Athos Stathalopoulos, Mark West, Miller Freud, so Miller Freud. From 15th to 7th, that's one car we're going to have to watch because he is exceptionally fast. All right, now we are on board with Lucas Chasso and Toot Hollingsworth. So we see Toot coming through there, getting it all wrong in the minefield. Uh-oh, come on, Toot. You can do, come on, buddy. You can't do that. And that's going to allow David Ellis to go by in that all-orange car. Carlos Rebus right behind him in that green and black car. And there's... Is that Miller Freud? Yeah, that's probably Miller Freud somewhere in there. We got Miller is on a mission. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We see a wing that is 
somewhat broken on that car. Will that affect his jumping ability? Is it placebo or what? But something looks really off on this car. That wing is bent and broken on David Ellis's car. And there we see, I believe that's Miller now, actually, in third. <laughs> Miller is flying. He must have had a really, really, yep, that's Miller, and that x-ray Florida. He must have had a really, really bad qualifying to be all the way down there. Or maybe it was a strategic, strategic way to get more track time. There's Miller, now up in that second position, looking to bump again. Dirt Concepts, Lefty, do you know the tires and compounds are the go-to options for mains? Um, was talking to the J Concepts guy, which is probably the best tire out here, and it is green reflexes, everybody's one. Uh, green or blue. The hot race guys are on the Amazonias. We've seen some guys, when it's really been blown off, go with the bar tires. But all the other tires, I'm not sure. Um, haven't really been able to get out and about much since I've been stuck here in the booth. But, yes. Miller Floyd now up to front. Up to the front. And he's looking to walk away with this. with seven minutes left to go. Miller, very fast young racer from Florida. Okay, Cam says he broke Q1 and Q2. Okay, that would be it. Well, he hasn't broke yet. This today, so he's keeping it calm. I think this is his fourth bump. I think he started, yeah, he started in the first, in the first, oh, wow, so this is actually the biggest class here, so Miller started in way, um, had to start, uh-oh, David Ellis getting it wrong, and that's going to allow Carlos Rivos and that green and black techno monster energy themed car, we see like Lucas Schossel, not too far behind, and Lucas going to kick back that lead. He gives it back to David Ellison. This is the battle for second because Miller Freud is just Audi. And we see Carlos Rivas in that beautiful green, fluorescent green and black monster energy theme. And Lucas Chasso just taps the rear end of him. They're going to have to race around. Oh, 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 oh. And that is Mark West who's getting in the mix now as you see these cars coming through the minefield up and over. The double-double, keeping it smooth. We got 5 minutes, 41 seconds, and Miller has just checked out. Mark West up to second. Lucius Chasso. There we go. He started 6 in the E. Thank you, Cam. Knew you would know those answers. But uh, great bump fest for the E. So it's what? Two bumps, three bumps for Miller. My math is off. So is my alphabet. Uh, there we see Carlos Rivas trying to chase down Lucas Chasso, who is now in second. One of that Mayako MX-8 E E buggy prototype. It's not been released to the public yet. There is Lucas. This is the battle for a third. I love that car. Beautiful. Green and black. His son has the Ferrari red and black. Uh-oh. And Carlos gets it wrong. And that's Lucas Chasso getting it wrong. And that's going to allow Mark West by with four minutes, 12 seconds left to go. So Mark West now taking over that second spot. Third bump. There you go. My, I, I don't know my alphabet backwards either. Cam. <laughs> don't worry, buddy. So there we are on board of Mark West looking to bump up, starting in that two position. Yeah, currently in that two position, but Lucas Chasso not too far behind him. Of the three, Pete Hollingsworth 
was a mistake. Joseph up to the set, and Joseph moves it up a little bit. Joseph started 10th on the starting grid, finds himself in that seventh spot. Adam Smith started 14th on the grid. Now he moves to the seventh. Just over three minutes left to go. So what Octane left the order, any spark of not that I've seen. Tyler Jones had one, but he broke a motor mount, and he isn't running it. So I haven't. I'm not. It might be some people that I don't know that are running it, but I, I don't know everybody that's her. So I haven't. The only one I've seen has been Tyler Jones. And now Toot Hollingsworth is up to that second place. There's Toot right in front, right there in that yellow wing. Right now, we are on board. Uh-oh, Mark West has had an issue. Mark West has had an issue. Let's get on board with Toot. He's that orange car. He's currently in second. So, no, that's that's David Ellis right there with Luca Chasso. Toot is now going to come on. Well, that's a good battle right there. Let's watch this. Let's continue to watch this. This is Luca Chasso and David Ellis. There's Toot, where's Toot? Toot has come across. Toot has uh, uh, a pretty good lead on these guys. Mark West is out. Dave Ellis. Toot has a 10.8 second lead over David Ellis. Toot looking to come home and bump up to the next race. So let's see if we can see young Toot. There, Lucas Chasso coming by. Let's find young Toot on the track. He is coming across the start finish line now. There we see him. Let's follow that orange car, yellow wing. This is Toot right now. In a bump up spot with one minute, 15 seconds left to go. Toot started in third. No, this is Toot right now. He is in scoring in second. Lucas Chasso is behind him. What? 13.5 seconds back. Yeah, but Mark West broke. Yeah, I don't, we, <laughs> but right now, scoring has toot. No, sorry, scoring's messed up, sorry. He is on a 15, 10, 40. So, scoring has him in second. It's got to be fixed. It's actually Carlos Rebus who's in second. Carlos Rebus and Lucas Chasso are battling it out. There we go. There's our battle for second right back. If we go back to that green car camera guy. Sorry, I had toot, and I just looked at his time. So, that was wrong. That scoring has him in second. But there we are, Carlos Rebus in second, Lucas Chasso going to push. There's Miller Freud. He's going to bump up and live to race another day. What happened to Lucas? Well, Lucas fell way back. But Carlos Rebus will take second, and he will bump up and live to go another day. Here we see young Miller Freud. All smiles on his fourth bump now. Techno RC. 
Techno RC is a championship winning manufacturer of high performance A scale, TED scale, nitro, and electric RC buggies and trucks. With a worldwide dealer network, USA and Europe based headquarters, comprehensive warranty program, and global race support, Techno RC is excellence in RC. View the full lineup of Techno RC race proven vehicles by visiting www.technorc.com. decision here, number 42, Hollingsworth, Carlos Rebe. You are all bumping up into the B main. Miller, Tooth, Carlos, all bumping up into the B main, race 36. All right, race number 22, check them in, check them in. All right, guys, we are back. So uh, talking to our race team, they're going to bump the three out because there are some some discussion because Toot actually did come in second and he admitted to cutting the track and he got a 10 second penalty but he's still in uh, second so they're going to bump three up in all good sportsmanship so it should be good I mean they can have one more person on the track so not a big deal not good to break young Toot's heart like that he did come second in the end but yes Jonathan Kurz uh, I just had my coffee it's Pete's apparently it's actually pretty good I'm going to slip out and go get another one when I get some time. But next up is the E Truggy C main. Okay. 
Reeves, Connor Reeves, Connor Reeves. You are bumping up, and I have an empty bucket over here. I got an empty bucket ready to give it to the Wade. I have an empty bucket. Everyone to your bucket, please. Everyone to your bucket. This is the E Truggy C Main. Chad Cop, Ryder Trotter, Andrew Williams, Gabe Arnold, Eric Hanneman, Brian Johnson, Teddy Davis, Bryson Dyer, Scott Anderson, Greg Smith, James Swift, Chris Figueroa, Zach Goodman, Will Bristle, Athelstan Lachlis, and Owen Simmons. Good morning to you, John Kurz. Good morning to everybody out there in the chat. As we get ready for these E Truggies to start. Let's stay on this. Let's stay on this shot, Danny. Let's see if there's any carnage. And they're off. They're off. Ooh, yes, there was. There is carnage right there. We have some carnage. Carnage in the eater. Ooh, 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 massive carnage. Big pile up there in that second corner. But not for these guys as they are out to a lead. We have Ruggy Buddy versus Truggy Buddy versus Ruggy Buddy. We'll see how it shakes out, but I'm pretty sure it's Chad Cup, Ryder Trotter, Andrew Williams, Ryder, and the traditional Truggy Buddy as they come across the line. Chad Cup, Ryder Trotter, 0.6 behind him. 1.8 is Andrew Williams. There we see young Ryder Trotter in that S Rex Truggy. Up and over. And he is all over Chad Cup. Chad Cup getting it wrong, right? Going into the minefield. That's going to allow Ryder Trotter through. And Chad Cup's going to have some company with Andrew Williams right there in that teal wing. Ryder coming by. Chad Cup will be three seconds back. James Stewart making that move up. He's 0.8 seconds back behind Chad Cup. So the battle here is right here between this orange, uh, pink and white car with yellow wheels and this teal and white car right behind them. Truck, sorry. And that is allowing Ryder Trotter to just go out and gain some. But there is a battle right there between that teal and white as Chad Cup is out to a fairly decent gap between third. Remember, the top two will bump up. Ooh, ooh, Chad getting it wrong. That's not where he wants to get it wrong. He's going to give up some time. There is third and fourth right behind him. Let's see what the gap is when we come by. Chad Cup, oh, he's got a 6.4 second lead over, sorry, a 2.5 second lead over James Stewart. He's 6.4 seconds back of Ryder. E. Truggy, a big classer, not split up, just run as one class. Good morning, Michael Farmer. I'm doing pretty good, man. Oh, that was a hard hit on pit lane there. He needs to take it easy. Snap one of those long, truggy arms really quick doing stuff like that. Luckily, it's a bit hot outside, so it's a little bit more flexible. But right now, we are on board with Chad Cup and James Stewart and that teal and white Chad in the back with that pink. And, Ch and James Stewart getting it wrong right there. And that's going to allow Andrew Williams in that all pink to come by. As they now Chad, oh, Chad Cup's had issues right there twice now with that corner. And as he comes by, the gap is 1.3. Ryder Trotter now has an 8.3 second lead over Chad. Chad's going to have some, comp he's going to have some competition here as that Andrew Williams in that pink car. He's coming. He's got Chad in his sights. He wants to bump up and race in that B, in that B main. So Chad cannot make any mistakes as we see the young Andrew Williams right there looking to capitalize on any mistakes. And behind him, we have James Stewart as well in that white and teal. Oh, oh, we have a battle. We have a battle. And this is a great battle for the bump-up spot. That is second. Uh-oh. 
Chad's cup. Chad's car stops. Something happens to his e buggy. It is lost all power, and he has lost that second place. Now it is inherited to Andrew Williams. He has Will Bristle right behind him. So, Will Bristle. There we have Andrew Williams, followed by Will Bristle. We see Will with that pink and blue wheeling it around that corner, going through the minefield. Keeping it smooth, these e is handling that minefield extremely well. They have enough power to pop it over that second double, even when they jump long. And it is a battle. All righty, so we are back on tap here. There is Andrew Williams coming across the line. He has a one-second lead over Will Brassel. Bristle. They're going to want to battle while Ryder Trotter has a 12-second lead over them. Ryder looking to bump into that B main. And Andrew Williams in second. Will Bristle in third. And Eric Hanneman. We are on, on tap on with Will Bristle. He's going to look to push the issue with three minutes, 56 seconds left. As we see, Andrew powering down that straightaway. These e truggies are wheeling down the straightaway. They have immense, opious amounts of power. As Andrew keeping it smooth, he cannot afford to make any mistakes because Andrew, I mean, Will would be looking to capitalize as he's closing that gap ever so much. It was 1.7 seconds when they came across last time. It's much closer now, as you see Will, as you see, sorry, Andrew tiptoeing through the minefield, up and over. Let's see what the gap is now as they come across the line. It is 1.6 seconds, so he has knocked a tenth off, but it looks much closer on the track. As we see Andrew in that pink truggy, he's coming up on some lap traffic. Will this cause him some issues? He's seen this be an issue, but Will is losing just a slight touch as Andrew's pulling away ever so slightly as he keeps it calm through that minefield. These e truggies like I said, have been the best vehicles going through that all weekend. And it looks like Will, let's see when he comes by. He is now, oh no, he's even losing more time. Uh-oh, Andrew having an issue. His car is shut down. His e truggy has shut down. No power. He has steering, no power. And that is going to give Will Bristle the now. He's going to be looking to capitalize on any mistakes that can be made by Will Bristle. Let's see if Will can hold on for the next two minutes and finish off and bump up to the CB main of e truggy. E Truggy, a popular class here in the Southeast. As we see Will Bristle gunning it down the straightaway up and over, over those two, that double, going over that roller. And there is Eric Hanneman. There he is. He is not too far back. 2.1 over the line, but it's closer than that now. As see Will Bristle getting it wing high, going around that big moon crater right there on the, on the apex of that corner, around the 180, up and over the off camber jump off camber bump that has a massive crater in there and he is looking smooth through the double doubles able to keep it smooth goes a little wide but every time he does that we see Eric Hanneman in that green car just get catching up a little bit with one minute 12 seconds left to go and lap traffic in between them let's see what the gap was it's 2.1 seconds so Ken Eric seems to be much faster than Will on this part of the track will we see some errors by Will gift Eric a bump up spot and Eric is on the afterburners did he make a mistake right there yes he do ever so slightly he smells blood 
He has that bump up position. He has visions of running a B-man as they are getting closer and closer here. And now they go over the double-double. We see Eric Hanneman and that green Kyosho right behind him as they go up over. Oh, Eric just clipping that. And this is going to be close as they come across the line as they pull. Oh, and Eric gets it up on two wheels. And the gap is 0.9 seconds. This is where Eric has been extremely fast. This is the battle for the bump. Remember, two will bump up into that B-man. Eric getting a little bit wide there as he guns it. Oh, and he pops a wheelie right down there. And he decides to go through that crater. And let's see. We have lap traffic in front of him. He lets him by. Oh, no. They have two also lap traffic. Oh, no. Oh, no. That lap traffic needs to get out of the way. That's actually Ryder Trotter, I believe. What happened to Ryder? Oh, he had a very long lap. Woo. Wow, Ryder had that big lap and almost lost it on the last lap. Oh, wow. Eric Hanneman will take that second place. Ryder having some issues and almost losing on the last corner. Incredible. Incredible. But Eric Hanneman will take it. Um, Ryder must have been losing power or something because... I don't know. He was way off. He had a commanding lead and then lost it all near the end. Bill DeLong says shout out to Chris Figueroa and the cast of Prototype E Truggy. Alrighty, next up is the intermediate E Buggy C Main Nick Reppin, Trevor Michael, Kiara Hill, Shelby Parker, Jeremy Reed, Chad Wick Pergantis, Wilson Coward, Corey McEven, Joe Skiller Joe, Rodriguez, Tyler Hovde. Dominic Aliprando, Grant Walker, Carson Ringer, Garrett Gatewood, Nelson Garcia, and Gene Shrout Jr. Two bump ups. We are on race 23 of 53. 30 more races to go today. All right, and they're off. Nick Reppin, ooh, ooh, slightly cleaner start here. Let's see how it shakes out at the at the line. But it looks like Nick Reppin out to a lead. Since Nick Reppin in first, Shelby Parker coming from fourth. Wilson Cowart, Kiara Hill, Jeremy Reed, your top five. There's Shelby right there in that blue and blue, blue and white. And right behind him is Wilson Cowart. On to third, he's going to lose that bump spot.
Nick Rappin, Wilson Coward, Kiara Hold, your top three. We are on board with Wilson Coward. There's Kiara right behind them. Behind Kiara, we have Shelby and Chadwick Pergantis. So there is a plethora of cars coming down. No idea what time the A mains will start. Merlin, you can, um, I haven't had a chance to go look and do the calculations. But uh, we still have some really good B mains to go through. Oh, and Wilson. Wilson getting it wrong. Kiara getting it wrong. That's going to allow, uh, I would say, Chadwick to get by. And that is Chadwick Pergantis. Wilson Coward in the back. Kiara holding fourth. Seven minutes, 51 seconds left to go. But Nick Reppin out to a commanding lead. 6.2 seconds. He just wants to keep it smooth. Don't make any mistakes. And he can bump up and live another day. Let these guys battle it out for that second bump spot. Let's see. There's Chadwick Pergantis coming through in that blue and green and blue. I'm not sure. It looks like a techno. And there we see Wilson Coward in the X-ray and Kiara Hill in the Associated. As they come around and gun it down, there's Chadwick from Wilson, from Kiara. They are separated by 0.6 of seconds from Chadwick. And point four from Kiara to Wilson. So this is a tight race. Chadwick getting it wrong. Kiara getting it wrong as well. As we see Wilson applying some pressure as he comes around and they go wide around the moon crater, up and up over the hill. Getting a double. And Wilson, that is a beautiful line by Wilson as he goes on the inside of Chadwick. And we see Wilson coming through the minefield. Getting it wrong, swapping end over end, but keeps it under control. Ah, he almost had he had a look on the inside, but he saw that he couldn't make it. So he just backed off. And that is Shelby Parker right there. Shelby looking to push the issue and get up and bump that, that bump position and bump up to the B main of E Buggy, intermediate E Buggy right here. As we see Wilson get by, oh, ooh, oh, ooh, who was that? Was that Chadwick or was that Shelby? So it looks like Chadwick is back into second. No, that's Shelby. So Wilson chasing, trying to chase down Shelby. Shelby going super wide, uh-oh. Good save by Shelby. Good weight by Wilson. And Wilson just clips that pipe. Let's see as they come up over this double. Whoa, Wilson right on the inside there. Gets on the binders. And they are separated by 0.6 seconds. And Wilson giving a little wheel turnage up there. As you see Shelby calm and collective. Shelby been racing for quite some time now from the Midwest. Paul's Colorado, his home, I believe. Originally from Kansas City. There we see the Shelbster up here with Jared Tebow. All right, well, I apologize. I'm sorry. I can't see the cars from this point. Lens stage. He's running a HB. Thank you for letting me know. I'm sorry. My binoculars don't work that great. Um, as we go down, there's Shelby Parker. As he guns it down. What happened to Wilson? Oh, no. Wilson having a long lap. He's now 5.4 seconds back as he goes up and around over over that double. We are on board with Shelby Parker. In that blue, black, white wing. Chad has some fans in the chat. But where is Chad? Chad has dropped all the way down to, he's out of the race. Mm. So Chad Perg Chadwick Pergantis out of the race. We have Skiller Joe Rodriguez up in fourth now. Carson Ring of fifth. Wilson Coward third. But Shelby out. We are on board with Shelby in that final bump stop with four minutes and 30 seconds left to go. Anything can happen as we see. We've seen some of these in the E-Truggy class. A lot of those cars losing power and falling back. And being out of the race. But right now, it's... Nick Reppin, Shelby Parker, Wilson Coward. Nick Reppin right now leading the way with Shelby Parker, working at number two spot, Wilson Coward in three. Carson Ringer in the four. Oh, and we and that blue and yellow car of Wilson with yellow wing and yellow. Uh oh, and 
That double double. Let's see where Wilson is when he comes by. Oh, Wilson making another mistake. He has dropped back way back. Unfortunately for Wilson, let's see. Shall we make a mistake right there? Wilson now 5.4 seconds back. He has a rear view mirror of Carson Ringer behind him. But Shelby, uh oh, jumping really long on that one. Seven minutes down, three minutes left to go. But you know who has no worries right now? It's Nick Reppin. He's been in the lead from the start. And he's looking to lead from lights to flag, from lights to flags here in the intermediate electric buggy C main. Shelby got a 4.5 second lead over Young Wilson. And Shelby with one minute, 48 seconds left to go. Wilson is now, oh, but Wilson isn't too far back. He's 1.7 seconds back. So Shelby cannot relax as we, as we saw on Wilson right there. Shelby cannot make any mistakes. Wilson put applying pressure. Will young Wilson be able to bump up to the B main? I'm sure his dad's nervous over there watching him. Shelby, oh, and Wilson gets it wrong on that. He's just got to take it easy. You see Chad Cop tire marshalling him. Wilson, very young racer here in Georgia. Up and over that double, we see Shelby calm and collective going on the inside of that moon crater. And Wilson dropped way back now. And, uh, run, oh, and it's going from bad to worse for Wilson. And um, just clipping that moon crater and having another accident. And that bodes well for Shelby Parker. As he is now in cruise control. Probably got a massive lead over, over Wilson as he comes across the line. 39 seconds left to go. And unfortunate for Wilson. He's now dropped down to fourth. He's now 1.5 seconds. Now Grant Walker takes over that third spot. And... It looks like, barring any intimate failure from Shelby, he will bump up. I'm sure he'll be happy with that. I know he said he, one of his girls was to bump up out of this race. Shelby, a very good racer. Oop, smart racing right there. And not getting caught up. That's actually Nick Reppin. So Nick Reppin having a very bad lap. And this is actually the battle for first and second. I don't know what happened. We saw this happen in the previous race with Ichagi. But these guys, either way, they will both bump up as they are the only people to get by and get this extra lap in as we continue on. And these will be your two bumps up. Nick Reppin and Shelby Parker. Poor young Wilson, unfortunately, was in position many times, but uh, race nerves got Parker and Nick Reppin as they will live to race another day. Well done, well done. Nick Reppin had a very big lead and, and threw it all away on the last lap, but luckily he was able to bring it home. And we... Down the straightaway, heading into the chicane. We're following it live. And here comes the battle for second down the straightaway. It's going to be up down. Rossiter right there with the best lap of the entire race. 30.3 for Rossiter, up to second. Danny. Can you put it on Lance for five minutes? I just want to run to the camper and get a call.
10, Jason Lotta on the 11, Paul Elliott 12, Benjamin 13, Jason Tolliver 14, Michael Hine 15, and Tony Scarcella on the 16. Make sure I got my marshals out here, looking pretty good. Here we are, racers ready, marshals ready. Everybody's gonna roll on the tone here in less than five. Race number 24 now underway, 40 plus E Buggy C Main. Here early in the start of this one, it's a 10 minute, 10 minute C final. Bobby Moore. Can we blow the track off before we start our bees? It's actually coming up next. That'd be okay? Yeah, the very next one. We got nine minutes. Nine minutes. If it's possible. I just realized the bees are about to start. If we can blow the track off. Nine minutes left. After this one, yep, eight minutes, eight minutes. One fifteen down, eight forty five left to go. One fifteen down, eight forty five left to go. One minute down, or two minutes down, eight minutes left to go. Two minutes down, eight minutes remaining. Eight minutes left. Seven forty left to go. Seven forty remaining. Jason Lotta with the race lead from 11th on the starting grid all the way to the number one spot. Charles in the number two. Benjamin working the three. Benjamin from 13th on the starting grid to the three spot. Last time by the line, 1.3 seconds back of the two. Felipe Rodriguez in the four. Randy Ellis in the five. Cody Clark, six. Connor in the seven. Paul Elliott in the eight. David Ellis, nine. Dave Weagle in the 10. Michael Hine in 11. Sean Traub, 12. Tony Scarcella, 13. Jason Oliver, 14. Seven minutes left. Race number 24 on the track. All right, you're four minutes down, six minutes left to go. Charles Derman right now leading the way on a two and a half second lead up on Felipe Rodriguez. Felipe right now one second up on Randy Ellis for that bump spot. The work in the middle left. section of the track. Jason Lotta coming across the line right now in that number three spot, 5.8 seconds behind Randy Ellis. Ellis last time by the line, 1.1 seconds back of Charles German for the top spot. Felipe working to number four, six tenths of a second away from the three.
Five minutes left. Randy Ellis right now on the backside of Charles German. Last time by the line. Separated by half a second. Race. Race gap now two seconds between one and two. Jason Lotta working a three. Connor Rebus four. Carlos Rebus. Felipe Rodriguez in the five. Michael Hyam working at six. Paul Elliott, Four seven. Left. David Ellis dropping down the ladder, down to the nine spot now. Oh, man, rough flat, 51. Oh, front straightaway. Front straightaway, caution. Right in the middle, right in the middle. Front straightaway, caution, caution, caution. One upside down, right in the middle. There we go. Randy Ellis now within three tenths of a second of Charles German over here on the left hand side of the track. Battle for the race lead. 3.30 left to go. Three minutes left. Seven minutes down, three minutes left to go. Randy Ellis to the top of the leaderboard. Charles German in that number two spot, now eight seconds back. Carlos Rivas moving in at number three, two seconds away from the two. Race number 25 coming up next. Seven thirty down, two thirty left to go. Battle for that number three and four spot coming in through the rhythm section. Looks like they got a lap car maybe there with them as well. Over here on the right hand side of the track. Carlos Rebus, Jason Lotta running three and four. Say so they come back to the line. There's Carlos. Looking for Jason Lotta, a little bit of a long lap here for Jason Lotta. Two minutes left. There he is coming through the line now in the four spot. 4.4 seconds back at a three. Felipe Rodriguez and Michael Hine running five and six. Now David Ellis begin to battle back forward. After that 51 second lap, now finds himself in the sixth spot. Paul Elliott in the seven. Race number 25 coming up next. We're going to blow the track off after this race, guys. We're going to blow the track after this race. We're going to have a short break. One minute left. Forty five seconds left. seconds left. Twenty seconds left to go. Fifteen seconds left. 
10 seconds left to go. Randy Ellison, Charles Drummond right now running one and two. Carlos Reba sitting at number three spot. 5.8 seconds back to transfer. 40 plus nitro buggy B main coming up next. Race clock has expired, guys. Keep going to your Carlos or come done. to the line. You'll be done. Paul Elliott done. Benjamin Hinojosa done. David Ellis done. Oh, one nail Dave on Weagle the pipe done. coming on to the front straightaway there. Waiting on Randy Ellis and Jason Charles Drummond to come across the line, make it official. Randy Ellis done. Tony Scarcella done. Michael Hine done. Charles German done. All drivers are finished. Sean Trout done. Coming up into race number. 32, 32. Okay. Uh, some of you saying that it's lagging. Uh, I have two people saying that it's lagging for them. So um, let me know here if it's back, if it's fixed. It could be your internet. Uh, let us know. If we have more than two people saying that it's lagging, then it might be an issue. All right, so we are getting into our first of the B mains. These are 20 minutes long. They are, uh, I think they're going to blow the track first. So. Lagging Danny. Somebody, see, somebody says it's good. We'll see how it works. No lag here. Okay. So seems to, Je Jennifer says it's lagging. Malaysia says it's good. Others say it's perfect. That's in the Facebook feed. How is it over in the YouTube feed? I'd like to take some time and say thank you to our sponsors, a.k.a. Reds, Lugs Racing, S-Works, TNR, HB Racing, On Point, RC Graphics, and Kicker Performance. We have some people saying that because some people are saying it's good, some people are saying it's bad. So if you're on the YouTube Landia, just uh, refresh your browser and see how it works. Right now they're blowing the track, so there's no action going on at the moment. All righty, another cup of coffee. Come on in gyros, is this true? No, not that I know of. I don't, I don't think that gyros are going to help any of these guys at top levels in this, this race. I don't know if anybody in the lower levels are running gyros, but there's no tech, so we don't know. But if you're a top racer, we've had this whole gyro conspiracy thing with Ongaro. I think running a gyro at a top level as a top level racer is actually counterintuitive because these guys do things to these cars that the gyro would counteract. Good job, Shelby. You're a good dude. But if uh, you cannot hear Lance, you can just hear me. We only hear Lance when I take a break, CDRC TV. So the pros will race. So we have, obviously, the pros will have a B-man here shortly. Not sure, Doug Breeze. You can go in the uh, comments and check it out. North Carolina Park. Oh. Thank you, sir. How you doing? Oh, yeah? I'm going to try this out. I, I I like little pork rinds here now and then. Here you go. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the pork rinds, and thank you for the birthday gift. All right. Oh, 
What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Lefty, and we are out here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend here in Gainesville, Georgia. Let's, uh, let's, you know what? We're going over and see Evan Vale. Always good to see Evan Vale. Evan Vale, Prevail Paints in the house. How y'all doing? You've been to this race quite a lot. Oh, yeah. I've probably been coming for the last six, seven years. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So you kind of, oh, you not got your whole crew here this weekend, just kind of you over here. Yeah, just me. Me and Nick, we rode down together, so... I mean, it's going good so far. I'm just running one class, taking it easy. So it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a good weekend. I think so too. I wish you all the luck, man. Yeah, appreciate it's it. stacked out there. Yeah, it's going to be a stacked event for sure. I mean, the group's already coming up. Tracks, it's uh, it's going to be a good race, I think. So How's Prevail Paints going? I hear you're super oh, yeah. busy. Super busy. So that's half the reason I'm running one class. I've just been so busy painting. So. I mean, we're getting back into it. I just haven't really been able to race much since Nationals. So. But the paint's going good. I mean, I appreciate everybody for supporting me. That's right. Hey, you know where to hit them up. Prevail Paints, make them even more busy. Yep, hey, yep, man, yep. one of the best painters in the world, in my opinion. I appreciate it. All right, well, good luck to you, man. Keenan, I appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, bye-bye. Yeah. Wow, this place is full, Danny. Look at this place. It's crazy out here. Let's take a little walk. Camper life all the way down. We got people in their trailers pitting here. What's up, Cavallari? What's up, Goat? Over her pitting on, over her chilling with the high tech crew. Hey, Andy Kirk, do, hey, Andy Kirk, t treating you right? Yeah, we've been uh, having a good time. I played yesterday. Uh, lap times seem to be good. We made a few little adjustments, and uh, yeah, the, the cars are liking the, and the tires are liking this orange clay. So you won this race right before, and I mean, it was outdoors, I think. Yeah, it was uh, 2020, yeah. Uh, but it was that outdoor, trip and uh, yeah, yesterday was just kind of getting the track grooved in, and it seems like it's pretty much there now. So we see you on the TZO tires. I was talking to Nick. How are you liking them? Yeah, TZO. I went out, ran with Nick uh, last week and uh, had some good results with just some testing we did. And then with the short period of time we had, I grabbed as much stuff as I could in my OGO bag and came here. So uh, working with Cole and uh, really we're just running uh, 202s. All right, we got Lou Dog over there. Lou Dog, you're busy. Yeah, he's wrenching. Yeah. Yeah, trying to get the car dialed in for the mall. We are up for our 40 plus Nitro B main, Nitro Buggy B main. This is 20 minutes long. We have uh, all the drivers here getting started. We have Mark, Rusty Milhook, Luis Perez, Chauncey Mack, Rob Lupo, Scott White, Hilbert Jermanez, Jay Zeno, Tony Padishow, Mike DeLay, Victor Alaprando, Tony Braun, Anton Watson, Everett Lubis, Brent Lansford, Curtis Crumbs, and Greg Smith. As we have a slew, looks like a fairly clean start here. Very good from these experiences. This is what I would expect from these experienced racers. It's the oldest shakeout. Remember, the top two will bump up. Uh oh. It looks like. Huh? Oh, restart. Okay. So I we're having a restart. Cat her lands. What was the reason for the restart, Danny? Ah, okay. There we see. Tony Chandler, YouTube, oh, followed by Lewis Perron. YouTube, please refresh your feed, refresh your page, and it should be better. It works after you refresh, please. This is a 20-minute Nitro Buddy 40 plus B man. To the top two will bump up and get to live on and race in that 30-minute A man. As we compile, it's Lewis Perez, Rusty Mihalik, Gilbert Hermanes in third, Victor Alapondo. And that is the race for first and second right there in front of us. They are pulling away from the rest of the pack. This is exactly what these guys want. As we see, Luis Perez. Uh, okay, so, Danny, we have people saying that refreshing isn't helping the YouTube feed. So can you check on that? All right, so we're going to switch over. And get that working on you. If you guys can go over to the Facebook page. It, it is still working on the Facebook page, I assume, Danny. Feverishly working out the issues with this. We do apologize for that.
give us a few minutes as we work out the issues with the the live feed. So we have various people saying it's good on YouTube. But Danny is uh, just making some adjustments. As we have Luis Perez out front. There we see Luis. And he has got a commanding lead. He's got a 7.7. Looks like second has a rich tune. Yeah, I would say it's probably humid out there too. With the smoke and the dust, it looks extra smoky out there. But Luis Perez, I'm pretty sure he races down in Mills Pond. He is out. He just turned on. Let's see when Luis comes by. Lewis turned on a 40.9. He has Rusty Milhack right behind him. That is second, third, and fourth right there, so they cannot relax. That's Mac Milhack, Gil Jimenez, and Victor Alaprando not too far back. So this is the battle for the finally bump, final bump spot. We're going to see, ooh, hey, Chauncey is running a bit rich, but still seems to have that power as he gets up over, and they go through the minefield here. Chauncey and that Mugen going through. Oh, 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 getting a little bit wing high, little buckaroo. And that is going to allow, allow Rusty Mill to GC, G3RC. They just came by and dropped me off some homemade bar. And uh, thank you to Mitch Watson for bringing me uh, Egg McMahon. We are headed down through the minefield. There is Chauncey Mac. Sorry, Rusty Millhook from Chauncey Mac. Chauncey Mac right there in third. Sue, his car does seem to be running a bit rich. And he makes a mistake, and that is going to allow... Gilbert Fermanes to inherit that third spot as we see. Rusty Mihook going up over that double, back around the rollers, and up and over those far, far the rollers as he is now looking to put some space between him and Mac of Luis Perez. A rear end as we see Gilbert Hernandez as well. So it's Rusty Mihook, Gilbert Hernandez, Rob Lupo, Chauncey Mac. This is the 40 plus Nitro Buggy B, man. There we see Rusty Milhek in second. Uh, if you guys are having issues with the, yeah, we're working on it. We are working on it. We are working on it. We apologize. But right now, we are on board with Rusty Melhek, who's currently in second. He has a point seven come up over. He's going to go around that double, and that looks like it's Gilbreth right behind him. Let's see as they come across the line. It is Lewis Rusty. So Lewis now in the sights of Rusty. There we see this is the battle for first and second. To the front straight across the line. And it's Lewis from Rusty. They are separated by 1.2 seconds. And Gilbert is 2.1 behind Rusty. Remember the top. Oh, this is Rob Lupo, actually. So Lewis Perez, Rusty Milhek on a long lap, probably on his fuel lap. As we are now currently following Gilbert Jimenez. No, sorry, we are following. Looks like Rusty Milhek has dropped out of the race. We, Curtis Crumbs, our bump up, now in 15th, from 15th to So it's Perez from Crumbs, from Jimenez, from Chauncey Mack, Patashow making some moves, and Brent Densford. Coming from the 14th spot, up in six right now. Came in for some fuel. These guys all have come in for fuel, unless somebody's going 10 minutes, but I doubt it. But Luis, per Luis Perez, who has been leading from start, looking with 10. All right, so as you see Perez come around on the straightaway, he clocks off a 39-1. Let's see what the lead will be like 
after that, let's see Curtis Crumb, 8.2 seconds back. So Curtis Crumb's right now trying to fend off Gilbert Hernandez, who is 4.7 seconds back from him, but it's a lot closer on the track as you see Curtis getting a little bit wide, getting out in that fluff. Going wide around that crater, and he's looking pretty smooth out there, Curtis from Georgia, Georgia Peach State Hobbies. Running those OGO tires, or OGO tires as they call them. Up and over the double, swimming over that next double and going through this roller, double. Down the straightaway, gunning it onto the front straightaway. He has now pulled out a lead of 7.9 second lead over Gilbert. So Lewis with nine minutes and 11 seconds left to go. Looking to secure a bump up into that B main, sorry, into that A main, which will give him a 30 minute 30 minute A final. He'll be starting at 15th if it stays like this. Thank you, Austin. I'm doing all right. I did the most talking yesterday and today. But uh, I love this stuff. Danny Paz is working feverishly to get it ready for you guys. So he is busy. Sometimes we can't, we can't, we, some things are out of our hands when we're doing live shows. But he is working patiently. We do apologize for any lagging that you guys might have. Uh, some people have solved it by dropping down to 480p. Some people on their phone seem to be going pretty good. But we will get back up to that high definition as soon as we get our issues figured out. We do apologize and greatly appreciate your patience. As we go down this line, and we are on board with Curtis Crumbs, who is currently in second, and comfortably in second, and Chauncey Mack moving up into that third position. But Curtis... It's going to have to come in for fuel at some point. So maybe if it's going to be this lap, we have 7 minutes and 55 seconds. Can he do 8 laps? Can he do 8 minutes? We shall see. Oh, and getting in a little bit of lap traffic. Getting out of the way. Give him a little bump. Curtis looking like he's on rails out there if there's Ogo tires. Coming through the minefield ever so smoothly in that HB Ogo powered HB car with Ogo tires. These are the importers of the Ogo tires here in the USA, Georgia Peach State Hobbies. And Curtis is looking good. He's just on a 38-8. He is on a big lead over Chauncey Mack, who is 15.9 seconds back. So seven minutes and eight seconds left to go. Let's stay on Curtis because we're going to watch him come into the pits as well. Luis Perez out to a comfortable lead. Right now, we are on tap. We have second place driver and in that bump swap, Curtis Crumbs. If six minutes left in this 40 plus Nitro Buggy B main, we see Curtis coming down the straightaway. His HB car is looking good out there, handling all this rough stuff. Uh, in the southeast, these HB cars are exceptionally well, do well. Um, <laughs> very good cars to do well all over, but this is their type of track, slightly rough. There's some high traction, dusty, working really well here. As you see, Curtis tiptoeing, dancing through the minefield, trying not to get blown up like you see in many races. This, that is actually the hardest part of the track. Gilworth Amenez back up into third. He is 14.8 seconds back from Curtis. Curtis is two seconds back from our leader. This is actually the lead. This is the battle for first and second right here as we see Luis Perez coming through the minefield.
as they drag race down. Oh, and Lewis getting a little bit squirrely, but he brings it back under control. These guys really don't have to mess each other up. They just need to finish first and second with four minutes and 26 seconds left to go on the clock close to each other. They don't need to do this. They just need to race together. Maybe Lewis needs to let. Uh, I know they don't want to lose, but oh no, Curtis getting it wrong, but he still has a very big gap on third. And there we see Curtis getting his composure. Maybe that's the room that he needs. They just need to not push the issue and just continue on because they will both bump up into the A main. It doesn't matter if you come first or second. It's not really going to matter on the starting grid when you're way back. But we have seen many drivers come from back of the pack, but Curtis Crumbs out there in that HB car with this Ogo sticker uh, sneakers on board. These guys have been developing these tires here in the, Jordan, in the southeast, racing feverishly. I was talking to uh, Lance Flowers. He's also one of the owners of the Peach State Hobbies, who are the importers of the Ogo tires. And we see Curtis driving pretty composed. Three minutes left to go. As we see, Mr. Patrick Rossiter making his way up to the race director station to give Lance McDonald a break. <coughs> so we have Luis Perez, Curtis Crumbs, Gilbert Hermanez. V Plus will come to an end. I believe this will be his race day end because I believe he's racing this and... That's for intermediate, I believe. Well, Luis Perez, with two minutes and 20 seconds left to go, is looking to bump up. Uh, let us know how things are going. How Alrighty, so we are working on the live feed for the YouTube side of things. We do appreciate you on Facebook as well. Yes, Andrew, we know, we know, we are working on the glitching, we know this, we are feverishly working on it, please, take it easy guys, we will have it fixed in a few minutes, we do apologize. But right now, we have 50 seconds to go, and it's Luis Perez, Curtis Crumbs, Crumbs has a 14.8 second lead over third, and he's nine seconds behind the... If you guys want to watch it, you can drop it down to 480p. That's been working, but uh, we are working on getting the HD version up for you guys. If you're wa watching it on Facebook, just drop the quality of the video down. I know it's not ideal, but if you want to watch it, we are working on getting the HD feed back up for you guys, so we do apologize for that. We have six seconds left to go in the 40 plus Nitro Buggy B main. So we do apologize for that, everybody, but it will be back up and working as Danny Paz has just gone outside to go check on things and get everything ready. But right now, we're going to celebrate Luis Perez as he leads from flags to finish. Flags to finish, sorry, lights to finish, lights to flags. That's how it goes. And he will be bumping up along with Curtis Crumbs, and they will continue their wicked weekend as they bump up to the 40-plus Nitro Buggy A main. Well done. Uh, we'll be back up running her in shortly, Daniel. We are working on the feed. So if you want to watch it live, just drop the quality of the video down. We're just working on the HD feed. So we have a lot of people here who have done that. Um, we do apologize. We're getting the feed back up and working for you guys for HD. But you can watch it on 480p. Even on the Facebook, they've dropped it down to 360p. Not ideal. But we are working on getting the feed back up and running for you. We do apologize.
All right, so we are now up to our Sportsman Nitro Truggy B man. 20 minutes. If you guys are having any issues viewing this, uh, just drop the quality of the video down as Danny Paz is now working on it. We will have the HD back up working very shortly. So in this race, starting on pole, we have Eric Dillon, Vince Hall, Mike Hess. Ryan Helmetag, Ronald A. Torres, Keith Waddell as they're getting ready for the dawn and quiet. There we go. As we are looking. Let's see how it all pans out when they come across the line. I think that's Bobby Thomas, actually, right there. <laughs> Looks like his car. Let's see, let's see as they come across the line. So it is. Be happy about being in second. All right, now it's Rodley Torres up in front. Josie Pastor Patashaw in second. As they go up and over. Actually, it might be Josie in first. No. Josie racing in the Florida RC Championships on a regular. Making a trip up here for her husband, Tony. They race together. Become really good friends. With oh, and then Josie getting it wrong. And that's going to allow, I believe, Jose Augusto. Oh, and he is sky. He just overtook him right in here. And I believe that's Rodley Doris flying over that jump. Vincent Hall from Jose Agostino. Helmetag in third. Helmetag must be that red and Jim Foster. Oh, man, Josie Patashaw dropping all the way down to ninth. Now Vincent Hall taking over that top spot. Jose Augustina in second, 1.4 seconds behind. Brian Helmetag is 1.3 behind him. And Jim Foster, 1.5. So this battle, uh-oh, and getting it wrong, getting back on all fours. That is Helmetag right there and that red and yellow Truggy in the traditional Truggy body. As we see that Bruggy up and over, always go. Oh, and he gets it wrong. Helmetag skying it over that double. He's going to move up into second as we come around the or come around across the line. Oh, sorry, Jim Foster. That's Helmetag right behind him. So there we are, Foster in the red and yellow, and that is uh oh, Foster getting it wrong, and that's going to allow Helmetag by. Helmetag going nose high, nose low. Uh -oh. Just casing that jump. Let's see as they come around the crater. Some go, he goes, Foster goes right through and gets all squarely. That is a deep hole out there. Extremely deep as we are on board with Brian Helmetag and Jim Forst Foster. Helmetag in that bronze, ruggy, and Foster in that bright orange and yellow truggy body with yellow wheels. Oh, no. Is that a, looks like Foster flamed out. Or had an issue as Brian Helmetog is now in four, in second. Yes, Jim Foster looks like he flamed out as he went out in the fluff. And that is going to end his bid as we see Rodale Torres inherit that third position. He is 4.3 seconds back of Helmetag. Vincent Hall's liking this. He's 8.1 seconds ahead of everybody as we see Foster's dead truggy over there where he left it. Where it cut out. But right now, we are on board with our bump up and bump position with 16 minutes and 25 seconds left to go. Brian Helm attack from Florida. Rodale Torres behind him. With Jose Augustino right there. There we go, cameraman. Let's drop back to that, to the battle for third and fourth between Rodale and Jose. We are currently on board with second place. There we go. There is... Rodale, I assume, and there is Jose. Actually, I think that's Rodale right there, and Jose is in front of him. We'll see when they come around the line again, but this is the battle for third. But they want to hurry up and get around each other and then chase down Helmetag. As you can see, Helmetag just coming across the line. Let's see what the gap is when they come by. 
Rodelay is 4.2 seconds back, and Jose Agustin is 2.3. There we see Rodelay trying to hunt down Helmutag. Jose trying to hunt down Rodelay as they go up and over those rollers. Back over the crooked double, keeping it down the middle of there, going around the moon crater, up and over. They go jumping this double, casing that jump, oh, and getting it on the pipe, and that is going to cause, give Rodelay the space that he needs as he puts the hammer down to try and chase Helmutag. He now has Helmutag in his sights. Helmutag has lap traffic in front of him. He's going to have to navigate that, and that is going to be spell goodness for Torres as Torres is looking to, he has him in his sights right now. He really does. Torres is putting on the afterburners. He is now 2.9 seconds back by the clock, but he is closer than that on the track. As you see, Helmutag must have made a mistake. He's got company. Rodelay getting through. Uh-oh, Helmutag making a mistake. And this is the battle for second. This is the battle for the bump-off spot. We do have a race. Torres getting it wrong. Helmutag trying to get away from him after making those mistakes in traffic. And Torres going completely off the track, getting too excited. And that's going to give some breathing room to Helmutag as you see. Torres also making another mistake. I think that was him. No, Torres taking, getting a long, long marshal. So we have people in here cheering on. Uh-oh, uh we have Charlie Mack in here. He is cheering on the Truggy body. And as soon as Charlie Mack came in the chat, he flamed out. That's all Charlie Mack's fault. Charlie Mack's been going all weekend. And now he comes in once, and he causes the guy to flame out. But Helmetag in that bronze, purple, and silver Ruggy body. Uh-oh, somebody else flaming out there. Oh. There we see Helmutag battling it out. Let's see as they come across the line. Helmutag, Rodelay now way back after making that big mistake. Let's see he, what is the gap when they come across the line. It is 10.2 seconds, so Jose, if that mistake... It is going to take quite a lot of good driving to get back to be a challenge for Helmutag as we are on board with, I believe this is Vincent Hall. That yellow and red buggy. Yes, it is, as he's coming up and going across the line here shortly. And Charlie Mack shows up, and here we are with Vincent. He's coming in for fuel. Let's see, let's see. Does he get a fuel, good fuel tank? Ooh, he has time. He's 7.2 seconds, but there's our leader, Vincent Hall, coming in for some fuel. Good fuel, fuel stop with the, with the fuel bottle. By his pitman, Helmutag in for fuel. And there, Helmutag, he can see Hall. He now has him in his sights. That gap is going to drop down. Jose Augustino getting around Rodelay now for third. As we see Vincent Hall. Just out of sight. There we are on board. The second place Floridian Helmetag as he comes through the minefield. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So we have it. Vincent Hall has flamed out. Vincent Hall has flamed out after his pit spot. He probably did not clear it out properly. But he has flamed out. And Helmetag will now go into first. And Jose Augustino will be up in second. So, ho Sap, Jose is now inheriting that lead. Rodelay Torres now has to put on the afterburners. If we just drop back, let's catch up second and third because there is a good battle between them because we had our leader flame out. Flame out, he did. And now Helmetag inherits a massive lead over Jose Augustino and Rodelay Torres as they battle it all second. Nope, that is not the battle for second and third. Let's see. This is... Nope. That is Helmutag right there. And Jose Augustina and Rodelay are coming across the loop. But Helmutag out there on cruise control at the moment, inheriting that lead. Yeah, it looks like our battle for second is Jose Augustina and Eric Dillon. Oh, man. That, that traffic getting away, that's Corey Jordan. He, I don't know how he flipped just now. But he is going around. Helmutag now lapping guys. As he comes across the line. And he just threw down a 44-8.
Let's see what the gap is between him and Augustine. I believe that's Augustine coming down the straight now. Yes, it is. He is 9.5 seconds back. Eric Dillon is 2.8 seconds behind him. Eric Dillon is one of those cars, either that green and white car or that other multicolored car. But that is second place that was just in front. As they come up and over the doubles, this is the battle between Eric Dillon and AJ Hovide. Hovde, sorry. I believe that Hovde is, I want to say that green and white car. As they go, as he tiptoes through the minefield, up and over that double, keeping it smooth again, smoothly uh, transitioning around that nine degree. And we see Augustine wheeling across the, the start finish line. And Eric Dillon, that is Eric Dillon, that is third. He's going to want to put on the afterburners. He can see second in his sights. He has nine minutes, 24 seconds. I'm pretty sure that these guys are going to come in for another pit. As we are on board with Augustine. He has a 3.7 second lead over third, which is Eric Dillon. AJ Hovde, 7.6 back. As we see Augustine tiptoeing through that minefield. Up and over the double. Calm now. Calming down a bit. Ooh, almost landed on that pipe. We've seen many people land on that pipe, hit that pipe. That has caused all types of problems, as you see Eric Dillon just peeping in. But Augustine is back, and he is in some lap traffic, and this is going to cause some time. For everybody out there watching, in, we should have the HD, HD feed back. We do apologize. I hope you guys uh, did stay with us. Check out the HD feed. Hope it's working now for you guys. Let us know. And Augustine up casing that jump. He is having some trouble getting through that lap traffic, and that's allowing Eric Dillon to get by and inch up ever so closely. But he's going to have to get through that lap traffic as well. As you see, Augustine with the hat to the back, up and over the double. Around, he is the truggy with the yellow wheels and yellow wing. And there is Dillon. Dillon is on his way. He got through that lap traffic, and he is gunning down the straightaway. As you see, Augustine having to deal with lap traffic. That's Corey Jordan, EKJ24000. Eric right there. As you can see, this track, the bumps, they are starting to get smoothed over. They're losing that jagged edge. It's more rounded now. And we see we are on board with second place driver Augustine as he gets uh, around this traffic, up and around that off camber. And going through the minefield, these truggies, oh! He's getting wing high, getting a little bucked around. Slash to slow down. That's going to slow him down a bit. Let's see. Oh, Dylan getting around. He wants to get around this traffic because now he definitely has Augustine in his sights. There's 7 minutes, 24 seconds left to go. Augustine can't make any more mistakes because Dylan will capitalize on that. I think Dylan came in for fuel. Augustine's going to have to come in for some fuel as well. So Dylan coming in for fuel while he can. Augustine trying to push it. I hope he remembers that he has to come in. We'll stay on him and see if he comes in for fuel. Ah, and that mistake, he's going to lose some speed as we see Dylan In our peripheral vision right there, either he made a mistake or he came in for fuel. My intuition tells me he came in for fuel. And we shall see Augustine coming in for fuel sometime soon here. If not this lap, let's see. Yep, he's coming in for fuel. And Dylan, where is Dylan? Let's see if you can see him coming by on the straightaway. Ooh, and they come out together. No. There we go. There's, there's Augustine. He comes out behind Dylan. So Dylan getting by on that first, that last fuel, fuel stop. These guys will race to the end for the next 6 minutes and 23 seconds. But it is not over because Torres is right there. He is on Eric Dylan. Eric's about to have a rear view mirror full of Torres and that multi-colored yellow winged pink front end truggy as they both go up over the double the race is on for the bump up spot and dylan getting it wrong and rodley again and augustine getting it wrong as well he must have been following his lead oh that was so close that was almost disaster as that gentleman pulled out of pit lane and just cut in front of eric dylan and almost took him completely out as he came flying down the straightaway Up and over the double. Where is Torres now? And right now, our leader, Helmetag, has a 7.7 .7 second. He is not. That is Dylan. 
We can see Helm Attack is not too far in front of him. There's Helm Attack. There's Dylan. He's chasing down first place. We see Helm Attack coming down the straightaway, getting on the binders. And Helm Attack making a mistake. He's been comfortable all this time. Well, hold on. Is that Augustine in front of? No, that can't be. That's got to be another pink. Yeah, no. Let's see. I think both of these guys got by the leader. I don't know where Augustine came from. I was watching it. Oh, so this is the battle for the lead. As we see that. That is Augustine in front, I do believe, with Dylan right behind him. Helmetag lost that lead. He should be in third when they come across the line. Let's see. Dylan to the front. Helmetag. Okay, so I was confused. That was not Augustine's car. That was another car that looked like his car. But there is Helmetag. He is now 5.2 seconds back. Eric Dylan out in that green and white car. Truggy, bruggy, as we now call it. 1817 scale buggy class, as Keith David would say, right, Charlie Mack? And we see Brian Dillon, Eric Dillon. No, that's what I thought. I could have sworn that Augustine was in front of him, but scoring didn't have him. But Augustine right there in front, going very wide. So now this is actually the battle for first. Uh-oh, Dillon getting it wrong. Augustine out front. Oh, what is going on with Augustine? It's like his, he does lost signal for his car. He just drifts straight into the pipe. And that's going to allow Dylan to get by. I don't see Augustine. Augustine must be having issues. Because he just like went straight. Yep, Augustine is out. Augustine is out, it looks like. Oh, what did Dylan clip just now? Oh, no. These guys don't want to win it. They obviously don't. But Eric Dillon now in that first position. Eric Dillon now in first. Helmer Tag will take over that second position as Jose looks to be out of the race. As we see Eric Dillon making his way through lap traffic. That traffic needs to let him go. That person needs to stop racing him. Oh, uh, it's going it's going from bad to rest. Rag tag out there. Sportsman Nitro. Gee, wow. That is some super rough drive. And let that man through. He is the leader. But Augustine fired back up after a long lap. He flamed out. But it's going to be a little bit too late. He's 26 seconds back. As Eric Dillon has 2 minutes and 22 seconds. All Augustine can hope for is a mistake by these guys. We see Augustine right there as Eric Dillon is about to lap him. That is third place in front of him. Might not be third when they come around again. Dillon making a mistake. Can't make, why is he making mistakes out there? So there we go. Up and over. No harm, no foul. But he is just going to make it harder for himself as he has to go through his lap traffic all over again. <laughs> just laughing at the comments in there. Charlie Mack, I'm going to be waiting for you to come in here all weekend, man. I have said your name probably more than anybody else this whole weekend. Eric Dillon out to a very good lead. Let's see what his gap is when he comes by with that long lap. William Brian Helmetag in second. He has 6.3 seconds back. There we are with Helmetag right there. There we see, met Brian way back in 2018 at the 2018 Raw Nationals at Southside. And Jose Augustino, who was in first at one point, if one minute left, is not looking very good to uh, bump up. If he's 25 seconds behind Helmetag and Dylan. He needs one of these guys to make an epic, have a breakage. And he can bump up, but it looks like Augustine, barring any intimate disaster from these following guys, his race day is over. So hopefully. So if you guys are still lagging on YouTube now, 
please refresh your feed as we're coming to the end of this. But we uh, seem to have worked out the issue here. We just want to make sure that you guys are having no issues on YouTube on HD, please. Daniel says, track conditions are less than acceptable. This is all for it, mate. It's rough track driving. This is even rough. I've seen tracks way rougher than this. I mean, you're welcome to come here and fill in the holes if you want. But uh, they have not done any track repairs. Charlie Mack says, I only comment on race days. <laughs> and there we have Helmet Tag getting it wrong, but he will come by and he is your second place finisher and he will bump up to the next race. So there we have Eric Dillon. Congratulations to Eric Dillon. Okay. Yes, sir. I will head out to interview Eric Dillon. Danny, can you mute me, please? All right, we're here with your uh, second place bumper up going to the A man. You're going to run another 30 minutes, Brian. You had a great lead. It kind of got away from you. What happened in your race? Um, something happened with someone flaming out, kind of threw the order off a little bit. Me and the gentleman over here, we had a good race going on. Um, I was just happy to bring home second. First or second gets us into the A main. That's all that counted. All right, well, good job. You got 30 more, more minutes of racing. Go get your car ready, get out there out here, turn marching, and good job. Thank you, sir. All right. What's up, Eric? How you doing? Woo! You had to work for that one. Woo! Man, I had a rough start, man. I had to dig it out and just keep keep steady pace and finally get back up there. Yeah, you had a good battle with Jose Augustino for a long time. Uh, he actually got in front, and um, then we saw him have an issue. He ended up flaming out, and that gave you the lead, and then you just held it on to the end. Yeah, I, uh, I just kept on sportsman class he's got to keep it from crashing you know and uh shout out to my uh, fit man uh shelby parker he did he did an awesome job shelby's well, my boy and a uh, good job to you and good luck in your amen right. thank you all right that's eric dylan he bumps up to race another day we're going to get you back to the action
Good job. They were shaking. You can see them shaking. Well, well done to the guys. Else. Now we move on to the intermediate Nitro Proggy B main. We have Scott White, Ryan Reese, Kiara Hold, Timothy Hobb, Trevor Michael, Jake Steckfeather, Joshua Victor Manny, Katie Carmandy, Mad Manny Long, Bobby Smith, Wilson Coward, Michael DeLay, Eric Hanneman, Marlo Bright, and Corey Brown and Ryder Trotter are our bump ups. We have some guys in there complaining that this track's too dusty. Maybe they're carpet racers. As we're getting ready, you see the mechanics topping up their drivers. Danny Chavez, I wonder who he's pitting for. Might be Ryan. No, that's not Ryan Reese. Oh, okay. Scott White, we see Casey Wilson uh, pitting for. Oh, we got a two minute, we got a one minute call. Oh, we got it back fired up. And they're off. This is the intermediate Nitro Truggy B, man, 20 minutes long. Chris Boyder, what's up, good buddy? Coming out to uh, All Out on Wednesday. You coming out? See you Thursday, but try, my son wants to go run some laps on uh, at All Out. We need to find him an e-buggy. E All righty. So we are on board. We'll see when this all plays out. That's Scott White out front in that purplish black truggy. As he comes by, next up is Ryan Reese, Jake Steichleather. That's one, two, three. Timothy Hobbs, fourth. Kiara Hold, fifth. Katie Carmando, sixth. Carmandy, sixth. As we are on board with set first, second, third as they go up over that double. And that's Ryan Reese making the trip over from SoCal representing Racecraft. And right behind him is Jake Steichleather. As they come around that corner, there we see Scott White. Ryan Reese. There's Jake. Who probably didn't get a picture taken. As they come down the straightaway, we see Scott White flying. This is a great battle we have on our hands right here. As we see Scott White. Down the just, oh, and there we have Jake Stackler just getting it wrong. And that's going to allow Timothy Hobbs to get by. Ryan Reese is not going to let uh, Scott White get away. This is East Coast versus West Coast. This is Florida versus California right here. The two meccas of RC. The East Coast mecca is Florida. And the RC mecca of West Coast, SoCal, California. As you see Ryan Reese in that red and green truggy. And we got Scott White out in that black and bluish truggy right there. As they go around the corners. No truggies here. All bruggies. Right, Charlie Mack? And as Charlie Mack, sure, he is fuming as he sees no traditional Truggy bodies in this race. Right now, those Bruggy bodies are killing it. As we see Scott White going up over there over the double, keeping it cool and calm. Ryan Reese right behind him. He doesn't have to beat him. He just has to finish second. Remember, the top two will bump up into the next man. You can see that these intermediate drivers are flying. Uh, the sportsman drivers just before were committing a lot of mistakes. And Scott White just makes a little bit of a bobble over there. And Ryan doesn't push the issue. He doesn't push the issue. They have a pretty big, they have a, as they came by earlier, they had a 4.9 second lead over third. Let's see. We see Jake come in there in the background. The lead is now 3.2. So they cannot get too comfortable because Jake Steichleather is coming. Now Ryan Reese gets by Scott White. Ryan Reese is just a little bit faster. Let's see if he can pull away and uh, get, that, get this win. He has 17 minutes left to go. And Jake Steichleather just coming up behind. They're just about to find... Uh, Scott White, we're about to have a three-way battle. Here's Ryan Reese getting a little bit crossed up. Good White gets up to that fluff and powers it out. I'm pretty sure that truck is powered by Bear. As we see Ryan Reese coming around, flying down the straightaway, and he just threw down a 38 flat. Let's see what Scott answers this. Scott's 1.8 back, and this is the battle. There we see Jake Steiglather. Uh -oh. ah, that's some good driving right there. He had a little peak, but he couldn't get that big, wide bruggy through there as they go up and over. But Jake Steichleather definitely has some pace. Scott White trying to hold him off. He wants to hold that position off and at least keep them close. But all this is, and there we see Steichleather is coming on the inside as White, White goes wide. Maybe White wants to be the chaser and not the chase E. As we see Steichleather just going on the inside there <clears throat> and up and over. But this bird's well for Reese. Reese is trying to pull out as Lee come by. And let's see what Reese does. That's 37-9 for Reese. 
The bear has finally kicked in. Joseph Steichleiter threw down a 37-8. So he is flying. Scott White getting it wrong over that double, getting it caught up in that in those pipes. And Timothy Hobbs is right there. So this isn't a, a pull away yet. We see Steichleiter. He is on the afterburners. He wants to be in first. He does not want to be in second. He has Ryan Reese in his sights. Ryan Reese making a mistake. And that's going to let Jake through. And we see Jake coming by on the inside and going through that minefield ever so fast compared to Ryan. Ryan just needs to get his composure back. Let Stike Leather go. They need to go. He needs to tag on with him because Scott White is right behind him. And we see Ryan Reese going over the roller, up and over the double. But right now, Jake Stike Leather is just flying. He's saying, hello, guys. It was nice racing with you guys. I'll see you on the, in the winner's circle. He wants to bump up a race that 30-minute intermediate nitro truggy main. Who is going to make it right now? They have 50 minutes left to go in this race. Scott White tiptoeing through that. What type of car does Scott White run? Uh, Danny, do you know? We'll see you as you come by. If you can see that associated blue D block. But Ryan Reese in the HB. Racecraft guys. Where's Chase Ehrlich? Is he up? Maybe. It's a. Uh, can't remember what time it is. It's almost 9 o'clock over there on the West Coast. All right now, this is the battle for the bump spot between Ryan Reese in that green car, Scott White in that black purple car. White makes, an, uh, makes a mistake. We have Florida versus California. Is that Stike Leather? No, nope, that isn't Stike Leather. Stike Leather is flying. 38 6. He has now has a 4.1 second lead over Ryan Reese. Scott White 2.1 behind Reese himself. Hobbs not too far behind Scott. So Hobbs trying to make a move and make a challenge for Ryan. We have 13 minutes, 55 seconds left to go. Okay, Scott White runs HB. Thank you. I appreciate that. We wasn't sure. Thank you, John Brett. Hope you guys are enjoying the coverage out there. I hope it's working great for you guys. The volume is great. Audio is good. The feed is good. We have a lot more racing left to go. This is race 27 of 53. This is the intermediate Nitro Truggy B main, 20 minutes long. The top two will bump up and go into the 30 minute A final for Nitro Truggy. We also be running double A mains for all A finals for electric classes today. This is the 2023 Wicked Weekend. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in Gainesville, Georgia. If you are in the area, want to come by and watch some great RC racing, Come on by. We encourage you to come by. Meet some of the top guys. Come in to see me. Get some decals. And we are racing. We have Racecraft USA in the house. Wide awake. Watching since first thing this morning. Flamingo Power. As we see the Flamingo, the mascot of the Racecraft crew. Ryan Reese looking pretty dialed out there. He has now a 2.9 second lead over Timothy Hobbs. Timothy Hobbs is motoring. He wants to make that challenge. He wants to bump up. Timothy from Tennessee, I do believe, or Kentucky, one of those two. Uh, but he is here looking to race. He had a beautiful pit bull uh, dog at the last race I was at. What's up, John Bat? John Blaze, her great coverage as usual. Thank you, John. Nice to see you in her. Uh, <laughs> I've never earned a HB or HBI. Okay. Let's go, Scott White. He is kind of fell back now. He is now in fourth. But right now, we see Ryan Reese dealing with a little bit of lap traffic, but that all birds well for Jake Steichleather. He is now 2.4 seconds ahead of Ryan Reese. Ooh, look at those truckers going through that minefield. We see uh, Steichleather just in there as Reese is dealing with this lap traffic. He's going to want to get by because he is going to have company soon with Hobbs. There's Hobbs in that green track truck. And as Reese goes wide, going out in that fluff, getting up there, throwing up some roost. This is real off-road, or old-school off-road, as we like to call it. We got Roost and everything else flying around her as we see some fuel stops happening. Let's see. I don't know who that was, but we are on board with Reese. 11 minutes, 30 seconds left to go. Looks like Stike Leather has come in for fuel. He's going to drop down to third with Timothy Hobbs and Ryan Reese just getting ahead of him. Or has Stike Leather had a... Is he flamed out? Or is this is an extremely long... Pit stop. 
But right now, we are on Ryan Reese, who is in first. And Stake, Stake, Stake Leather is dropping like a stern. Yes, he must have flamed out. He had a 1 minute and 11 second lap. So Stike Leather has 10 minutes to get those afterburners on. He is now scored in ninth. Ryan Reese has to come in for a few as well. So does Timothy Hobbs. Let's see. Timothy Hobbs having a long lap. This might be his in lap as well. So I'm pretty sure that Timothy Hobbs and Scott White are both getting few as Kiara Hood and Katie Carmando are now in second and third. Ryan Reese, we are following. Let's drop back. Let's drop back and find the battle for second between the two females racing in this race, if we can. Camera guy, Kiara Hood and Katie Carmandy. Scott White just behind Carmandy, 1.2 back. Timothy Hobbs, 1.3. Uh, one second back. Those two guys just came in for fuel, I assume. Well, I know Timothy did. But we are on board with Kiara Hill, the young lady from Florida. And she gets it wrong. Curse with the commentator. And we see Katie Carmandy not too far behind her. Right there. And there's Scott White. This is the battle for... That's Scott White. No. Nope. That was Carmandy, I believe. No, nope, that's Kiara. That was Carmandy that came in for few. I just recognized her husband pitting him. So Katie come in for few. Scott White and Kiara are battling for that second place position. Timothy Hobbs having another long lap after his fuel stop. There we see Kiara. I'm not sure if she has to come in for fuel. Scott right there. Not sure if he came in as well. We couldn't see off camera. But Scott White. Beachline RC Raceway, I'm sure, is his home track. Met him at the Carpet Championships. Out here doing a little truggy racing. So we have SoCal, Florida, Florida. And North Carolina, Tennessee in the house. Jake Steichleather making moves. He's now up to six. He just threw down a fast lap of a 37-2. He is looking to make up for that flame out that he had. But right now, we are on board with Scott White, our second place finisher, second place position. He is 9.3 seconds back of Ryan Reese. Ryan Reese out to a comfortable lead. Flamingo Power Racecraft USA. I'm sure all the racecraft guys are out there celebrating. Good to see Cody Thompson here as well. Got to see him yesterday. Always good to see my boys from out in SoCal. We need to see Chase out here in a at, at AMS. Hello, HBIRS4. He says hello from Montreal, Canada. Thank you for joining us. Merci. And bonjour. We are now on board with second place driver Scott White. That's Kiara Hill right behind him. Timothy Hobbs right behind her. The battle right now is between uh, Ho Scott White and Kiara Hope. She is looking very composed out there, young Kiara Hope. Been racing for quite some time. Her dad, Brett, is her doing the pits. Chemo RC turn on Ryan Reese. Ryan Reese is out to a very good lead. No, no tie testing, but we do have two Canadians, Cole Chura and Dylan Rapasso, two young Canadians here making the trip down. Rapasso from Ontario, Dylan from BC. All right, now it's all about Florida as we see Scott White out there in that black and blue. Kiara right behind him, composed seven minutes, 48 seconds left. She's going to start pushing the issue, but our leader now has a 9.7 second lead over second. Timothy Hobbs, 4.9. Uh oh, making a sick, going to allow Kiara by. Kiara now right on the rear end of Scott White, and they have lap traffic in front of them. Can we see Kiara pull off a win and do it for the females of RC as she guns down there? I know her dad will be super pumped as she bumps up to this A-man. Right now, there's a battle between two Floridians or Australians, as I like to call them. Kiara in the white, in the white and pink truck with uh, uh, yellow wheels. Scott out there in that black truck with white wheels. He's looking to keep up that lead and bump up and do the 30-minute main. But Kiara, oh, and look at that. She landed perfectly on the rear end of his bed. She should have just gunned it, and she would have been safe. And that's going to allow Timothy Hobbs by. We saw Hobbs go by in that yellowish, greenish car. He's not going to set his sights on Scott White. As you see Scott White up and over that double, he's looking very composed. He doesn't have to worry about finishing first. He's 12 point. Let's see when he comes by. 13.2 seconds behind Ryan Reese. Ryan Reese is out there. I'm pretty sure he's going to celebrate with multiple bears after this. And uh, as we see Scott White getting a little bit wrong, and there is... Timothy Hobbs, he is on the move. Timothy Hobbs is that green truck with yellow wheels. We're going to have to see another pit stop here from these guys, I assume. Scott should be coming in soon. Timothy as well. Scott right there in his purplish, blackish, bluish, white wheel truggy. As he comes around, the goes through the minefield, tippy-toeing through there. 
Hobbs is on the gas. Let's see what the, the, what the gap is when they come by. Kiara making that mistake. There we see Hobbs right there in that green truck with yellow wheels. And yes, Timothy Hobbs is now 5.2 seconds back. Kiara right behind him. So Scott White, if he makes a mistake, those two will capitalize on it. And he will just... Okay, so the chat says that Scott White has pitted, so he is good to go, I, get, I assume. Thank you, Drew Ring. What's up, Matt Starnes? Hope you're having a, a great time watching the coverage. We greatly appreciate it, bringing it to you. Scott White up and over, over that roller. He is in a comfortable position, but there we see Hobbs. Hobbs right there, and we see another person coming up. Oh, 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 that was close. That would have been ugly. That could have been ugly. But there we have Scott White just out there in cruise control right now. But nobody right now catching Ryan Reese. Flamingo power. I'm sure there's going to be a big set in the racecraft pits after this is done. Those guys definitely know how to party. As Ryan Reese, our leader right now, just clocks off a 38 flat. Let's see what the gap is between her and our second place leader. Right now, Scott White is in bump position. He just needs to hold on. We see Hobbs right there, though. But I'm not sure if Hobbs has come in for fuel or not. I, I can't really follow this without him being seen it up there. But Hobbs not too far behind Scott White. Scott White already come in for fuel. Uh-oh, making a mistake. He can't make the mistakes like that. And is that Hobbs that came across him? I don't know. Nope, there's Hobbs right there. Hobbs making a mistake. He got excited. He saw a second place in his, his vision, and he forgot to hit brakes at the end of that straightaway. That's going to put him back, but he still has time. Four minutes, 13 seconds left. As we see Scott White embroiled in some lap traffic. We see Scott White embroiled in some traffic. Who was that? Scott just made a mistake, and that's going to allow Hobbs by. As they come across. Oh, no, Kiara hold the big winner there. It's Kiara, Hobbs, Scott White, Katie Carmandy. Can Kiara, can young Kiara hold on? I believe she has come in for fuel, so she needs to hold on. And she can go home. I mean, she can go on to the next race. I'm sure her dad will be extremely excited as we see this blue and white truggy <clears throat> coming through the uh -oh, ooh, ooh, tippy toe in right there. Let's see. There's Kiara right there. She has Scott White right behind her. So this is the battle for second. Where is Hobbs? I think he came in for fuel. Let's see when they come across the line. Kiara throwing down a 38-6. Scott White for a 38-1. They are separated by eight tenths of a second. Katie Carmandy now inheriting that fourth position. She is 3.2 back. She is not too far out of this game. She is also in the mix here. As you see, hold. We see Scott White. And there is Katie Carmandy, making Carmandy right behind them. <clears throat> they have some lap traffic in front of them. Oh, no. Who was that? Was that White that went up over? Yes, it was. I believe it was. He just made an error. As you see that pink and white and yellow wheeled car of, of Kiara. Ooh, that was all. Who was that? Oh, man, these guys really got to do better. But now Scott White right up all in the rear view mirror of Kiara Hill. The pressure is on for young Kiara. Katie Carmende, 1.2 back. There's Katie right there. So this is a three-way battle for second. Oh, my gosh. If Eddie, the pressure is on young Kiara. She is now becoming the hunted. We see Scott White, he is hunted by Race Like a Girl. Oh, there he makes a mistake. And it's going to be in the battle with the females. We have Race Like a Girl. Don't give an inch. And she did not give an inch at all. Katie Carmandy, that aqua and white HP. There we are. Katie Carmandy, there is Scott White. And Kiara Hall is loving this because she lets them battle. Now let's see if we can see these two females battling out here as we go around. Coming down the straight, and they are separated by two seconds. There is, let's see, there is Hold. Let's see where Carmandy is. There's Carmandy. Let's oh, hold, make some mistakes. We've got one minute and 48 seconds left to go. Let's see. This is the battle of the females. Kiara, the young girl from Florida. Katie, the teacher from North Carolina. Been racing for many years, her and her husband, Dave. She has a window full of Timothy Hobbs right behind her. So this is an immense battle. This is a great battle we have here. But Kiara Hill wants them to battle out while she can just pluck away her at her lead. Oh, there's Kiara. Uh-oh. Let's see. Oh, there's Carmendi. Carmendi needs to get on the gas if she wants to catch up. Kiara, there we see Carmendi coming down the straightaway, making that right. She has a comfortable lead. 
over Timothy Hobbs by 2.7 seconds, but she is 3.2 behind Kiara. If Kiara doesn't make any mistakes, she can take this home. Here we have the young lady, Kiara from Florida, up and over that double. Ryan Reese is just ahead. He is 14.2 uh, seconds ahead of this whole race. Oh, and Timothy Hobbs makes a mistake. Let's see. Kiara out there looking very composed. Well done, young Kiara. As she bumps up. She can be in a bump position here. As she goes over and around that 180. As they come down the straightaway, there is Kiara Hull. Let's see the gap when she comes by. It's 3.3 seconds. 37 seconds left to go in this race. Can Carmendi pull it off? She would need Kiara to make a mistake. Ryan Reese out front. He could also not make it if he breaks, but he has 24 seconds left to go. Woo. As we see, Kiara Hill looking very composed in this very rough track as they go through the minefield. You see Bobby Thomas running out there. Great hustle, Bobby Thomas. Woo. I thought Kiara was going to hit that car just now. But here she goes. Seven seconds. She'll get one more lap. I don't think Carmendi will. Let's see. Nope. Carmendi. Will be done, and that ends Carmendi's uh, Nitro Truggy bid. I'm going to go out and have an interview with Ryan Reese and Kiara Ho. Danny, can you mute me, please? down the straightaway heading into the chicane we're following it live and here comes the battle for second down the straightaway it's going to be a three-way battle coming up on little bump and justin fails lutz westergaard and fend that's the battle to watch as they're coming down the step down rossiter right there with the best lap of the entire race 30.3 for rossiter up to second We're here for your uh, second place uh, finisher and bumping up to the 30 minute intermediate Nitro Truggy Man. I'm sure your father's happy. Great race by you, great composure at the end. Tell us a little bit about your race. Dude, it was a dog fight the entire time. I got up there around like five minutes in and then uh, just people started coming. Everyone was fast and it was just, it was it was a nervous race for me for sure. Yeah, I was excited. I was calling it. It was, I, I mean, all that was for position. You, Scott, Timothy, Katie. Um, like Katie says, race like a girl, don't give an inch. Well done. You live to race another day, and good luck in your amen. Thank you. All right, that's Kiara Hill. She's going to bump up. Let's talk to the man who won from all the way from SoCal coming over to the race over on the East Coast, Flamingo Power. How we doing? You're doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Just went out there, put my head down, cruise. Um, I'm doing a 10-minute pitch strategy, so I want to see how the mileage was. Once I got ahead, I went to cruise control. And, and, and try to stay away from all the other Jamopes out there, man, because they were getting brutal. Oh, yeah, it was a good race. You was out there. You, you kept it calm. You was out front. Yeah. Good driving by you, looking smooth. Doing it for SoCal. Doing it for the race draft guys. Yeah. They were in there cheering for you. Flamingo power. Flamingos, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Reese, good luck in your amen, man. Thank good you, to see you over here. You. All right, guys. We're going to go up next to our next bunch of racing. We've got some exciting B-mans. Don't get anywhere. We're going to get back to that coverage.
right, looks like everyone is in position. All right, guys, this is for the show. Turn marshals look alive. Drivers ready? All righty, here we are, ready for the start of this Pro Nitro B man, B Rose. Joey Bernard, Spencer Hecker, David Olsen, Lee Setzer, K. Burnett, Austin Vick, and Nico Listi. 20 minutes long, we have had some exciting B-mans here today. Hope you guys are enjoying the coverage. We see Joey Bernard getting out to a, a lead right away as we see B-Rose right behind him, Spencer Heckert, as they go through that minefield. That looks like uh, Austin Wick in that third position. I would assume. Let's see how it all shakes out as they come across the line. It says Bernard from Rose from Heckert. Lee Setzer. Lee Setzer on a different. Okay, there we go. David Olsen, K. Burnett, Austin Wick, and Nico Listi. B. Rose out in that green and white. Heckert in that blue, white, and that red, white, and blue. Lee Setzer in that aqua teal and yellow. And right behind him, Austin Wick. K. Oh, and B. Rose getting it wrong. Hopping it up on that pipe. As you see, Spencer Heckert, his teammate, making that move. Lee Setzer, representing Associated, the uh, Associated top driver here this weekend. And we hope you guys are definitely enjoying. We are watching the Pro Nitro Truggy B main here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. Joey Berton pulling out to a good lead here. Joey Berton was so fast in Q2 of Nitro Buggy. He was on a second place overall finish for that, and he just made some mistakes near the end. Uh, feel sorry for Joey. But a very good kid, a lot of bright future ahead of him here in the uh, RC racing sport. Spencer Heckett now in second. Uh-oh. Bardon making a mistake right there as he comes out of the minefield. Great hustle by Katie Carmendi. But Bardon now leaving that comfortable lead to have a gaggle of cars right behind him. It is Bardon, Olsen, Rose, Setzer, Burnett, Wick, and Listy. He has a rear, view, a rear view mirror full of David Olsen. It's Olsen with his teammate Brian, uh, Brian Rears, Brandon Rears right behind him. B Rears representing Texas. And as we are on tap, we have 17 minutes left to go. Only eight cars in this race. But there we have a battle for that second place. And Spencer Heckert just pulling away. Spencer the Heck Heckert looking to pull away and get a comfortable lead so he can bump up and race that 30-minute A main. And we are on race 28 of 53. Hope you guys are enjoying the coverage. Don't forget to hit that like, that sub button. And I uh, hope this go viral. And we are on board with Joey Berdon. And right behind him is David Olson from Monk's Corner, South Carolina, racing up here with the big dogs in his, I say, somewhat home turf. Ooh, and Brandon Rose just gives him a little nudge as he gets le leaves that door open. And we see B. Rose going in there. And now he sets his sights on Bordon. Bordon, 16 years old from Ohio. Uh oh, B Rose getting by. This is an epic battle. We have B Rose representing Texas. Joey Berdon in that techno representing Ohio, 16 years old. Berdon. He's had an epic year so far this year. I mean, he's had a very good year. Oh, and Berdon getting it over. He just gets it wild and rolls it. That's going to allow B Rose to get by. B Rose going to, and there we see Hackard. He is just out. He is now on a 6.4 second lead. 
as they come around, up and over, around that off camber, through the, through the middle of the minefield. Lee Setzer also getting by Bordeaux, but Spencer Heckert out there flying, just doing a 36 flat. Let's see, it's the gap is 6666. Six, six, six. Right there, Lee sets it right behind him. 1.2 seconds back. As B. Oh, Lee getting it up on two wheels. And Bordon giving him his space. And we are on board. We see B. Rowe is pulling out a slight gap from Lee Setzer, who's fending off Joey Bordon. But these guys need to work together and try to get up and chase down Brandon Rose because third and fourth won't mean anything in this race. They will not get the bump spot. As we see Lee sets are coming by. Jerry Bidon right behind it. They are separated by 1.8 seconds. They are currently 1 point behind, 1.8 behind Brandon Rose. Brandon Rose 6.4 behind Spencer. We see Kyle Herman cheering on David. David back in fifth. 14 minutes, five seconds left to go in this race. As you see, Lee Setzer getting a little bit squirrely. Joey Bourdon is on it. That truck, he is making that truck pay as he is trying to get up to speed. Lee now setting his sights on Benarez as he's got a small gap between him and Bourdon. That gap is point almost just under a second. But Brandon Rose, not in safe area. The only one safe right now seems to be Hackett. He's out there you see Hackett way out in front. And uh, Brandon Rose just there in that green and white. S-Works, hot race tires. Going through the minefield, up and over the double, back over the double, keeping it smooth. There's Lee Setzer, Joey Burdon still hanging on, David also right behind them. One mistake by Rose, and these guys will capitalize on it and overtake him. But we see Heckert getting into a little bit of lap traffic back there. Heckert, it's S-Works, S-Works, Associated, Techno, S-Works, Associated, not sure what Wick runs, and Nico Listy in the TLR. Maybe someone out there knows what Austin Wick runs. You see Spencer Hacker getting a little bit squirrely there. Becca, Spencer Hacker, very good driver. I believe he's from Ohio as well. And he's coming in for some fuel there. We see Katie Roxbury doing some social media. Joe Bornos and Scott Hacker doing the fueling for... There's Gene Stout. He's fueling for... Nico Listi, I'm sure. Brandon Rose. Ooh. Hackett getting out pretty good, but I think Lee Setzer did not pit. So Lee Setzer going a little bit long. Thank you, Humphreys. Ben is AE. So we have Hackett, Rose, Setzer, Bourdon, Olsen, Burnett, Wick, and Nico. There we see Lee in the Associated, Aqua and Yellow. Thank you, Steve. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Eric Dillon tuning in after he bumps up. There we see Bardon coming in for fuel. B Rose on tap. B Rose currently marked in fourth. Lee Setzer got to come in for fuel as well. And there we see B Rose getting around. So Lee must have came in for fuel. So now we'll see if they're going to do one more. They will have to do one more fuel stop, I'm pretty sure. And we see David Olsen. So it's S-Works to Techno. No, S-Works, S-Works. When they shake it out here. b Rose and that S-Works. Representing Mike's Golf Hobbies down there in Texas. I believe he works there. And they come around. There we see b Rose hammering it out. He decides to go through the crater. Uh, trusting his SRX car to uh, handle all that roughness that is that crater. That, cra that crater is extremely deep there. You can't see it from the video, but I took a walk out there last night, and it's probably deeper now if all the, um, the action going on here in the Truggy world. All these mains, these long mains, these cars hitting it lap after lap. Just going to make it deeper and deeper. Lee Setzer having to get Marshall, but B Rose looking quite comfortable out there. His teammate Spencer Hackett got a 3.87 second lead over him. They got 10 minutes, 28 seconds left to go. 
Troy Tim Lyon will be happy to have all these s racks in the A main, as well as Max out there, over there in Austria. We see Spencer Hackett making a mistake over that double, and that's going to let Brandon Rose take over that lead. Hackett just needs to calm down, not try to push the issue they have. Let's see when they come by, what the lead between them and Jerry Bardon. We see Bardon going over the double as Spencer Hackett and B. Rose come on. They're separated by just under a second. And let's see where they, how far, 4.5 ahead of Joey Bardon. Let these teammates work in conjunction to bump up. And that would, I think that's going to make it four s Rex buggy truggies in the A final. Tim Lime, I'm sure, will crack a frosty beverage for that. And, of course, Max, the owner of s Rex over there in Austria, he'll be happy to see. x Rex turned into a four, has a formidable team throughout the world. Juan, Juan Carlos Canas, Elliot Boots, and a plethora of other fast drivers over in Europe. They have a huge team here of Joe Bornhorse, Camden Lime, Brandon Rose, Tanner Denny, and Spencer Hecker. But right now, we see Bordon. He's chasing down Lee Setzer. These guys have eight minutes and 35 seconds left to go in this Pro Nitro Truggy B main. She's coming up into some B, some. Buggy B mains her soon, I'm sure. I'm sure. Seven minutes left to go in this race. Brandon Rose. Oh, Spencer Hacker just getting it wrong right there. But these two have a nine second lead over third. Kyle says, I'll crack one as well. <laughs> I know what he's talking about. He says, me as well. I'm pretty sure he's talking about the frosty beverages. Hello, Mugen. Okay, Mugen Mania. Uh, reading some uh, from yesterday on the live RC chat. No problem, man. We always try to encourage the youth to, to show, especially when you have their grandfathers watching them. The youth are the future here for RC racing. Spencer Hackett uh, just settling down in second. Six minutes left to go. And Pat Pat is an intermediate. Truggy, I believe. He's running intermediate this weekend. As we hear, see B Rose coming in for fuel. Camden Lime on the fuel stops there. I just saw him. And Spencer Hackett will stretch it out. That's Austin Wick. No relation to John. Spencer in that red, white, and blue. White wheels, white wing. Spencer the Heck Hacker. Get move it squarely as he goes through. And these guys are out, barring any 
disaster. They should be good as we see Bornhorst and Scott Porter just snatching that car out of the air. <laughs> big Bornhorst is a big dude. It's like, oh, come here, car. You cannot get away from me. And Hackard having some issues coming out of pit lane, looks like. <clears throat> but uh, five minutes left to go. They have a 20-second lead up on Lee Setzer. So according to time here, when they come by, we'll see. Now as Brandon Rose is now in first. Hackard coming in for fuel. Oh, yeah, I know you're on the s -Rex team, good buddy. Yes, you are. s -Rex definitely growing in America. First time I've seen the s -Rex car come over here and do so well. That's a tribute to Tim Lime and Brent Densford and all the hard work they've been putting in. But Brandon Rose and Spencer Hackert, Hackert 4.2 behind him, and they are, uh, Hackert has a 12-second lead on Lee Setzer. David also, also running s -Rex. He's running down there in fifth, fourth. Yeah, build along. We got it all fixed. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Danny worked feverishly to get it done. Danny does not take no for an answer. No, I do not want no nachos. You see my son out there anywhere, Danny? Anywhere? Let me send him a message. Make sure he's all right. No real excitement in this race because Brandon Rose and Spencer Hackett are just out to a lead. We see the battle of the young guns here in the south. We see Cade Burnett in that yellow and orange associated. His brother, his bro father, Brian. Very nice young man. It's a young man. Well, very nice uh, father. Him and his son race quite heavily. They've been hitting the the... RC scene hard. Also with David Olson from Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Barnett is a Georgia native as well. So we have Texas, Ohio, Florida slash Virginia, South Carolina, Georgia, Ohio, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, and Florida, Australia in this. Racers from all over America here and a few from Canada. Always good to see the biggest Wicked Weekend we've had to date. 666 entries. I know Dave likes that number. <laughs> 332 participants. And it's a good bit of four to 500 people milling around the traveling circus that is the RC race community. You know, it's just not the racer that comes. They bring their wives and daughters and pets and everything else. Oh, my. And we set up and obviously... I 100% agree. Tim Lime and Brett Densford, Beach RC, have definitely made s a top brand here in America. I know how much, how hard that is. So I give them all the props because we are on tap. If Brandon Rose, he's just in cruise control, probably going to save his truggy, not push it too hard. He's got he's to go get that ready for the A-Main, 30-minute A-Main coming up later on today. They will run the Pro A-Mains. I'm not sure. Actually, I, I have to ask that. Usually, they run the Pro A-Mains earlier on so people can watch them. But uh, just, I'm kind of glad that it was an exciting race so I can save my voice. <coughs> As I've got, we have, uh, we have about 25 more races to go. Slated to be done about... 9, 10 o'clock tonight. It's now going on 12. And Danny's laughing and saying, finally, I don't want to talk. I'll hold my, my frosty beverage, Danny. Watch this. B Rose coming down through the minefield, tiptoeing, not getting blown up as he keeps it smooth. His teammate right behind him. 
Tends to hack at knowing he doesn't have to push any issues. There's to a uh, comfortably and a good lead over second. They got a 15.8 second lead over Lee Setzer. And these two will bump up to next me. We're gonna have to go ahead and get an interview with from Danny. So I'm gonna leave it to you as you mute me, and I will go out there and interview. Guys, race him back to the line. You will be done. Austin with done. David Olson done. Cade Burnett going to come done. home in the four. David Brandon Olson in the five. Joey Borden in the Spencer six. Austin Wick in the seven. Brandon Rose and Spencer Hecker going to move up into the A main. Got two more trucks to finish, guys. Track is still hot. Track is still hot. Track is still hot, guys. Marshall, stay put. Track is still hot. Lee Sensor going to move up in the number three spot. Rages down the straightaway, heading into the chicane. We're following it live. And here comes the battle for second down the straightaway. It's gonna be a three-way battle coming up on Little Bump and Justin Fails, Lutz, Westergaard, and Fend. That's the battle to watch as they're coming down the step down. Rossiter right there with the best lap of the entire race. 30.3 for Rossiter, up to second. Spencer Hackett, he took second. He was out in lead, made a mistake, but uh, you kind of settled on and worked with your teammate. You guys knew you just had to come second. That's right. Four S Rex trucks in the A man. Yeah, it was good. Uh, truck was running a little bit lean, so I had to take it easy on the throttle, but uh, yeah, made one mistake and Brandon was able to get by, but yeah, pumped out both trucks in the main, so it's good. Right. You made any changes throughout the week uh, for your truck? How's your track uh, running? The, how are you liking the track today? It's gotten really rough out there. Yeah, it's gotten pretty rough. I had to soften up my shocks a little bit compared to what I was running in practice for the bumps, but I think it was a little bit too soft that time because it's a little bit warmer today and it's rougher, so probably going to stiff it up a little bit, but uh, yeah, it was good. Well, good luck in the A, man. We look forward to seeing what you can do. As Spencer Hackett came second, that's got B. Rose over here. B. Rose, you had to do it the hard way. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't uh, necessarily what we wanted to do, but it worked out. Uh, I had one really good qualifying run, and the other two I just had really long crashes, so I knew my truck had the pace to be able to win the B, and I knew Spencer, Joey, Lee, and some other boys, it was going to be a good race, but yeah, it was fun. All right, what tires are you getting out there? I haven't talked much to the hot race guys. What are you guys running this weekend? We've been on South Bangkok the majority of the time. I know some of the guys have been liking Amazonia, but it just doesn't really work for me, so South Bangkok, a little bit of sauce, that's been the ticket this weekend. All right, sweet. Well, good luck, good win, and good luck to you guys in the A-man, and uh, he's going to do it for Texas. Thank you. Hell yeah. All right. B Rose, that's your two bump ups. We're going to get back to the action here as it's getting ready to sign as we see the mechanics getting out there. I'll see you guys back in the studio. Here on the number 10 spot. Then it's red on the 11, Brad Corley on the 12, Brian on the 13, Mike Tudor 14, Connor Northwest. on the 15, and Johnson Wynn lining up on the number 16 spot. Mike Tudor. Careful on the straightaway, guys. Careful Let's on the straightaway. Five, four, three. All right, guys. Straightaway's closed. Straightaway's closed. Mechanics, come on out. Straightaway's closed. Straightaway is closed. So Connor and Johnson, you guys are going to line up on the outside of the track. Outside of the track. Not the inside line. The outside. 15 and 16 are on the outside of the track, over by Mr. Wick. 
Connor on the 15, Johnson on the 16. Roll the double-double, guys. Roll the double-double. Pit guys are right there. Let's go ahead and cut the track and get in position. Cut the track, get in position. This is a 20-minute, 20 20-minute 20 Sportsman Nitro Buggy B-Main. Looks like we got Marshalls in position. Again, thank you to all my volunteers. Alrighty, we are now with the Sportsman Nitro Buggy B-Main. And Dalton Keynes out on the lead, Scott Anderson in second, Mark West third. Good start from these Sportsman guys. A little bit hectic right there, but not too bad. As we see them going up that Dalton Keynes. I don't believe he's in the lead now. We got Charlie Mack in her train on Jim Foster. All right, so it's Mark West from Scott Anderson, Dalton Keynes, Michael Hine, Jim Foster, a big mover from 10th to 5th. David Scott, John Scrappitz, William Hel Helmetag, Johnny Brockler, Mike Tudor. So right now, this is the Sportsman Nitro Buggy B Mandy top two will be bo hoo hoo. That was close. That was close. That was very close. And uh, also Mark West making two mistakes in the minefield. The minefield blew him up, and he's going to drop down to second. Beautiful car there. Very coordinated. And thank you, Michael Lee. Birthday was yesterday. Appreciate all the birthday wishes from everybody around the world. Greatly appreciate it. See somebody doing the universal. Please get my car. I flipped over. You don't see me, Marshall. Sign. And now it is still Dalton Coons from Michael Hine from Mark West. Right now we are following, I believe this is Michael Hine and this blue car. Currently in second. Or Mark West, I would assume. You know, and he comes across the line. As he jumps up over the double ever so smoothly. This track super rough for these buggies. But uh, this is Nitro is the glory in there. Oh, looks like Mark West gets by. Let's see when they come across. That's Michael Hines and Mark West. Battling it out right there. Scott Addison right behind him. So this is your battle for second place. Ooh, Mike Hines just getting in that that bar, that crater and blocking off that orange car of Mark West. Wow, these guys are battling. This is was exceptionally clean. And we saw a mistake in the minefield. Oh, and he just jumps in. That's Mike Hines getting back in. Second, but I think when they come around, Dalton Keynes, Mark West, Mike Hahn, Dalton Keynes made a mistake. This is a race for first and second and third right here. That is first out there. That's Michael Dal Dalton Keynes in that red and silver car. The black wing right behind him is Mark West in that orange car. Orange side dams, white wheels, black wing. And there we see Dalton Keynes and Mark West just getting a little bit squarely. As they come through the minefields there. Nobody getting blown up. Right behind a Mark West, this is a battle. And right behind them, Scott Anderson. Connor Rebus. Right there as well. Connor Rebus in that black and red Ferrari themed buggy. There we see you going on the going on the straightaway. But right now, this is the battle for the lead. And there we have the battle for second. Right behind him. And Mark West makes a mistake. And that's gonna allow Mark Hine by. And can Connor Rebus make the pass stick? Oh, and Mark, Mike Hine makes a mistake. And this burns well for our leader. But now, Connor Rebus in that Ferrari-themed red and black techno nitro buggy. 
He is now in the bump position with 15 minutes and 52 seconds left to go. He has Mark West right behind him. Dalton Keynes is just in front of them. So a mistake from Dalton would see these two overtake him as well. As you see Dalton coming onto the straightaway and Mar and Connor right behind him. Rebus in that beautiful buggy. His father has the monster theme buggy, green and black. Connor seems to be way faster at this moment than, than Keynes as he gets by. Oh, and he, oh, and he makes, oh no, you, that is the one place you do not want to flip. But luckily he has 15 minutes left to go. And it, oh man, that is the one place you do not want to flip. There are hardly any marshals around there. <laughs> Anthony RC. <laughs> Universal or Universal Sign Language. I've messed up. Hurry up and get me. <laughs> oh, man. There we have the battle for the lead. We have Dalton Keynes, Mark West. Where's Connor Rebus? West, 1.2 seconds behind. Connor Rebus dropping back after that crash, but he's still in third. He's 3.1 seconds behind second. Plenty of time for Rebus, as you see Mark West getting it wrong. Rebus, besides that one mistake, has drived a fairly good race. This is the Sportsman Nitro Buggy B man. Good to see some good driving from these sportsman drivers. As we see West getting a little bit of trouble, we see also see some lap traffic. Oh, oh, they are tip dancing. These guys, and Rebus is coming, flying through the minefield, throwing caution to the air as he sends the Ferrari just like Leclerc. I was going to say Schumacher, but Schumacher never threw caution to the air. As we see that red and black car now in second. Dalton Keynes. Wow, Connor is flying. He's actually really fast. And he gets he gets really squirrely up here. Good luck, Zachary. Have fun breaking in the engine, breaking it in the old school way. And Connor all over. Uten gets it wrong. Just gets caught up in that minefield as he goes up and over the double. Just needs to be calm. He doesn't need to win this. He's faster than Dalton. He just wants to wait for his opportunity to get by, but no cause, any wrecks for either of them. Work together. Oof. He's really, really on the rear end. He needs to just back off a touch and wait. And that's what happens, see? Wait for it to come to him. There he goes. He gets the opportunity to go by him. Now he has some clear track in front of him. He could put his head down and clock off some good laps. So he might go over... Might be, there we go. He takes the jumping, that first jump into the minefield, up and over the double-doubles, looking smooth. Oh, just cased it, coming up a little bit short. Has to get on the binder, see? This is the issue. Don't need to beat this guy. Now, uh-oh, he flames out, and he flames out. He was in first. Impatience. Im impatience has caused young Connor Rebus has caused young Connor Rebus. He did not need to push the issue just now. But that what happens with uh, being a young driver and un uh, inexperienced. He could have just went in second. But I, I know how it goes when the heart is pumping and you are got that controller in your hand. You just can't control it sometimes. So now Dalton Keynes in that red and silver, white car, wow, car with white wheels. He's back in the lead. He doesn't have to worry about Rebus uh, on his... And now Mark West is quite far behind him as he comes in for fuel. Let's see. And her is second of Mark West. He's coming in for fuel as well. And look at that. Johnson win. All right, so this is the battle for second right there behind us. Oh, wow. Dalton Keynes hitting that nail. Oof, those nails have been an issue for many people today. But Dalton Keynes, we have a battle from our bumper upper, Johnson Wynn. He is bumped up. I can't remember. If this is the fourth time, I think. He's in third right now. He's looking to bump up one more time and make it to that A-man. He's in second at the moment. He is 2.3 seconds back of 
our leader. There we have the battle for second. There is Johnson Wynn and Mark West right behind him. This dude has got copious amounts of track time today. Now he's in a 20-minute sports and nitro buggy B man. He had a 15-minute C man here. He knows his track at the back of his hand. But Mark West just skying over there as Johnson Wynn takes it the smart route. <clears throat> he wasn't able to double, double, so he just single, single. And we see Wynn powering down the straightaway. He's good. I think this is going to be a great racer as they allow Dalton Keynes to pull off. Poor Connor Rebus, who was in the hunt in the beginning. He's way down in 13th. Unfortunate for him. As we see Johnson Wynn and West battling out West in the orange car. Wynn in the pink, white, and green car right behind them as they go through the minefields. Wynn going right down the middle. Oh, he taps his wing just a little bit, and Mark gets around. That's going to allow Wynn by. And that is our leader, Dalton Keynes, who must have come in for fuel. And it's Johnson Wynn, I, I believe, that Keynes came in for fuel. I would assume, or had a very long lap. But now, Keynes, one second back of, I mean, Anderson, one second back of Keynes. with you as well safe travels thank you Johnson win where's Johnson uh-oh Johnson sharing the red line of doom long lap for Johnson might have been a fuel lap I missed it but right now Mark West being scored out in front there's Johnson right behind Dalton Keynes Yes, sir. Okay, the feed is going to go down for two seconds. Don't worry, we'll be right back, everybody. All righty, we are back on board. We see Johnson win, who's currently in third. Dalton Keynes right behind him. Scott Ellison moving up to that second position. Mark West out in front. That's not... That's win. Where's Keynes? Keynes is behind him now. Yes, he is behind him. Ooh, what a beautiful car that is. As they go up and over. Mark West, Johnson win now up in second. Scott Ellison dropping down to third. Dalton Keynes inherited that third position. Scott with a long lap. Johnson win looking to bump up again. He wants to make it to that A main. He would have the probably the most track time out of anybody this weekend. That nitro buggy staying together for him now for four bump ups. And he has, I don't think that's for position behind him, but that is an exceptionally beautiful car. That, <clears throat> that's Lucas Chasso, actually. Lucas Chasso, and we have Wynn coming in for fuel. Let's follow him. Let's see who's doing the... Nope, that's Wynn right there. So, uh, no, I think Wynn came in for fuel just now. What's up, Paul Rodman? How you doing, man? Good to see you in there. How's Larry doing? Lawrence. Right now, this is Da Mark West in this orange car, white wheels. He is currently in front. He has a 4.1 second lead over Johnson Wynn. Getting a little bit sideways, giving us a little sight of his chassis right there. Um, Johnson's nickname is Blondie. He's a Wolf Den driver, bump from the bottom, and hoping to make it to the A main. Which one? I've, how you doing, Mr. Fuller? Let us know which one he started in, Kyle. I know he's, he's had about four bumps so far. It's four bumps. Hopefully he can bump it up again. He's now in third. I believe he came in for fuel. So he is good to go to the end. Oh, no. Mark West out there in that orange car. White wheels. Car looks very good, too. Orange side down. Scott Anderson now in second. 
He is 3.1 seconds behind Mark West. I'm pretty sure Scott Anderson has to come in for fuel. Or that was his fuel out lap. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So Mark West in for his last bit of fuel. Johnson win. Lundy back up to second. I should be at AMS, buddy. I'll be, the plan is to be here doing exactly what I'm doing now. I'm working with WRCE. We do RC Media. Mark West still out front. Johnson win in second. Scott Anderson in third. Dalton Keynes fourth. We have four minutes and 50 seconds left to go. We are on board with Blondie. Johnson win, Wolf Den driver. That pink, white, and green car with a black wing. I'm assuming that's a Hot Bodies. Top two bump. So it's going to be 16 car mains, 14 through, and two bump up. Johnson has bumped up four times now. Plenty of track time for Blondie. He's looking calm and composed. He's all his track time he's had. He's seen the track go from off. Goes, man, why rails that berm? Gives a little roost. And he has he has actually first in his sights. So, oh, oh, oh. He went wide. I thought he was going to go over the pipe just now. He needs to get around his lap traffic. <clears throat> and he can, uh, there we go. Let's him by. The gap between... Wayne and West is eight tenths of a second. So now Johnson win, not only looking to bump again, but looking to take the win, move up a spot on that starting grid from 16th to 15th. Ooh, he gets a great run down as Mark West is really slow coming out of there, just tiptoeing around that crater. Probably the best thing he could do is let Wynn go in front of him because they currently have a 15 second lead over third. Uh oh. Mark West is having an issue. Something is wrong with his car. He cannot get power to the ground. Oh, he has blown a diff, according to our cameraman. Can he hold on? For no, he cannot. That car is not going to make it. It is not going to make it. He cannot get any power on. This is going to be good for Dalton Keynes. Dalton Keynes right now battling it out with Scott Anderson. Let's see what the gap is, down to 9.3 seconds. There's Dalton, Mark West, not going to make it, not going to make it. Will he finish it? He needs these guys to battle it out and crash each other. Oh, and Mark West, uh, Dalton Kane just takes a big chunk out of that jump. Whereas Dalton, he is limping this car around his track. Unfortunately, he has too much time. And that car, is that engine is going to blow <laughs> if he keeps it up. Dalton, Keynes, and that, uh-oh. There we go. Unfortunate. Oh. I don't know. It's like his car has power. No, no, no power. No, it's like it wants to go, but might as well put it off, Mark. It's over for you, good buddy, unfortunately. Now the race is between Dalton Keynes and Brian Helmetag. There you see Helmetag. He has Keynes in his sight. Johnson win. Lundy, Wolf Den driver, out there in front. He is doing right quite well and that is helmet tag right there helmet tag getting a good run now we have a battle for second with one minute 43 seconds left to go helmet tag looking to get another bump up as he comes around he is flying through there helmet tag now in third hounding down dalton canes they are separated by not much as oh he goes for the outside pass as they come along the straightaway and they are separated by five tenths of a second they have one minute and 21 seconds left to go. Johnson win just out 18 seconds uh, in front of Dalton Keynes. The Blondie just going out there for track time right now. As he comes up, we see Helmetag losing slightly. A bit of touch towards the rear end of Dalton Keynes. Helmetag looking really fast in this part of the track as he keeps it tight. The off camera going wide, getting out in that fluff, powering out of there. He gets a great run coming off the doubles, looking for inside. Oh, and he gets it on that inside. Can he make it stick? Nope. That, oh. that actually, in my opinion, should have been a penalty. Or at least he should have stopped and made it. 
Combo tag, putting, oh, he goes so wide there. So excited. He forgot to hit brakes. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Michael Hine Dunn. Jim Foster Dunn. What a race. Johnson win from the C main to the B main. Now taking the win Johnson and bumping to the A main. Oh, we got one upside down on, on the straightaway, guys. One upside down on the straightaway. Go inside on the straightaway, guys. Inside on the straightaway. Inside, inside, inside. All drivers are finished. That is a race, guys. Everybody is done. Johnson win. Dalton Kane. Welcome to the A main. So I need Johnson and Dalton. Johnson and Dalton, please report to the interview booth to talk to Keenan. Johnson and Dalton, report to the interview booth. And you guys are going to race number 46. 46. Mark, 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 unless Bobby told you to do that, please do not do that. All right, track crew, I need that pipe fix, guys. On the back side, got Davy Talon put some nails in. One minute to the start of the race. Marshals to the track, guys. Marshals to the track. Hold them, guys. We're just fixing the pipe. We're not doing anything else. Only that pipe is being fixed. We're not doing anything else. Only that pipe is being fixed, nothing else. I mean, if Dalton Kane still pumped up, that was a hard race, man. You had to lead for a while, then you We're lost just gonna it. put some nails in that backside back in the pipe, guys. Tell us a little nothing bit about else. that. Yeah, it was one of the most intense races otherwise. I've ever been in. I held the lead the there for the first half, and they started pushing really hard, and uh, I got in a little bit of trouble, and then uh, had some fortunate breaks, but uh, it was a battle to the end. All right. uh, what you going to do to your car getting ready for your A-Main? I'm just going to clean it up. I think everything's running good. Let's do a track, quick guys. check. Marshall's we'll be ready to go. Where are you from? Uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Again, we're only fixing the pipe. I'm, Nothing I'm else. from The Rock. You're from The Rock? No, you are. I am from The Rock. I am. Yep. Good stuff. All right. Well, good luck in your A-Main, man. Thank you. Good job. Let's go. Where's, where's the bump master? Let's go. Come on, Blonde. Man, you are on a roll. You again. What up, man? Where am I going? Where am I going? All right, right guys, we're going to go. All right. I get a top and lefty. Hey, how many turn times turn have turn you bumped up today? Turn Three, I think? I think it's four. Four? I don't even, I've lost count. I've been so busy wrenching, changing diffs, doing what you're supposed to do to get into the A main show. Dude, you have got some a lot of track time. How are you liking the track? This track flows. I love it. Race Time Entertainment always does a good event. My first event was last year at Psycho Nitro. I was only two months into racing. Crazy experience, but I survived. Yeah, yeah. and guess what? Here we are here. Hey, you're bumping up. You're looking good. I'm told that your nickname is Blondie. You're representing Wolfden or Asian Hobo, they call you. Yeah, Asian Hobo. Thank you for the Wolfden uh, family. You guys helped me out a lot. And a shout out to my wife and uh, family at home for allowing me to do this. Well, good luck in your A-man, and congratulations on the bumps, man. Thank you so much, Lefty. Good job, man. Thank you. All right, there's the man of the hour. He's bumped up about four times. We got some hardcore racing going. We're going to get back and do some coverage. What's up, Tony Palashar? Daniel Cotto on the 11, Josh Feature Domi on the 12, Wilson Coward 13, Matt Navoso 14, Will McGyver 15, Philo Hat 16. Straightaway is closed, guys. Cut the track. Straightaway is closed. 
Roll the front double-double, guys. Roll the front double-double with pit crew there. So Will MacGyver and Philo Hatch, you guys are starting on the outside of the line. Outside. Will and Philo, you're going to be starting on the outside by the marshal. Philo and Will, you guys are starting on the outside line. Philo and Will on the outside. There we go. Looks like Marshall's in position. Thank you, sportsmen, guys, for getting out there in such pronto hasto. All right, this is a 20-minute, 20 20-minute 20 intermediate nitro buggy B-Main. Get everybody in position. All right, looks like we are ready to go. Drivers, are you ready? Marshall's look alive. Here we go. Let's fill them up, fill them up, fill them up, fill them up, fill them up. And let's clean them out, clean them out, clean them out, clean them out. All right. And we are off. Dylan Rapasso from Ontario, Canada. One pole. Jake Steichlather from South Carolina, North Carolina. Eddie Cordova, Cody Thompson, SoCal. Braden, Bruce, Trent Walker. As they're off, this is the intermediate nitro buggy B main. And let's see. It looks like Raposo has lost that lead already. Up next is your pro Nitro B main. Don't go anywhere. That's a 20 minute barn burner coming your way. Lila Rapasso, Drake Sykleather, Eddie Car Cody Thompson, Brady Bruce, Drew Williams. So right now we are on board with Jake Sykleather. And, oh no. Yep, Dilla Rapasso still in front. Jake Stackleather, Cody Thompson, Brady Bruce, Drew Williams, Danny Kay from Malaysia. See Adam Freak Reed turn him on. All right, now we see Stackleather and that associated tip turn through the minefield. Right behind him should be, let's see, I believe that's Braid and Bruce. Let's see when they come across the line. Raposo got a 2.8 second lead. Braid and Bruce from Cody Thompson, Drew Williams, Daniel Cato. Drew Williams, your top five. Braden Bruce looking to catch up and give Jake Stike Leather a challenge. As you can see, there's buggies. They're able to go on the inside of that crater. There's Braden Bruce right there. And we are in for 18 minutes and 17 seconds of intermediate Nitro Buggy B main action. Braden Bruce in that white car. Jake Stike Leather in that pinkish, uh, that white pink. And there is Dylan Rapasso. Must have made an error because now Jake is right up on his rear end. He had a 40.3. The gap is just now 1.1 seconds behind him. Cody Thompson, 3.4 back from the leader, 1.6 back from third. Now these guys are looking to get up into that second position so they can bump up to the A main, which will be 30 minutes long. We have 17 minutes, 43 seconds left to go. And Braden Bruce getting around Jake Steichleather. And while these guys battled it out, Dilla Rapasso representing Ontario in the Otter. He is out front in that X-ray car. Wilson Coward, a big mover from 13th to 6th. Trent Walker, who is one of the favorites to make the A main here, is down in 11th. Not having a good qualifying there, Brent, uh, Trent. Daniel Cato out early, unfortunately. He has the red line of doom. Drew Williams also dropping like a stone. But right now, it's Dylan Rapasso from Braden Bruce from Jake Stike Leather. Let's see what the gap is between these guys. Uh-oh, Braden getting it a little bit wrong over there, but able to recover. Uh-oh, lap traffic already anyway. And we see Braden Bruce is going to take over that lead as lap traffic on the straightaway caused Dylan Rapasso to have an accident. <clears throat> and now, this, oh, Braden Bruce getting it wrong over that over that rolling double, giving that lead back to Dylan Rapasso. Dylan just needs to calm down and gather himself. I would, I would definitely agree that that pink car is lap traffic and needs to let these guys out of the way. He has caused a couple of accidents so far. As we see Dylan Rapasso come, coming down the straightaway. 
Young Dylan from, I believe he's from the Ontario area of Canada. Does a lot of racing at the Otterville. Uh, good to see all my Canadians making some trips down here to race. They do race in Canada. Another young man, Braden Bruce, not sure where he's from. I'm sure somebody in the chat will let me know. But he gets caught up, man. That, that pink car needs to stop. He is not in position, and he is causing a lot of problems. I think they should give him a stop and go so he can clear the, clear the field because that guy is just out there going crazy. But Dylan Rapasso, Braden Bruce, Jake Stikeleather, Brendan Bartlett now making some moves up in fourth, so he's looking to capitalize. He's 4.2 seconds behind third. 12 seconds. <laughs> uh, no, just uh, saying. Dylan Rapasso is still out in front. Let's switch over. Let's get on our leaders, Danny Paz, if we can. All right, so I don't know where Danny Paz is at this moment. He kind of disappeared. So I'm going to have to give you the best calling of this race right now. We have Dylan Rapasso. He is out in front. Braden Bruce second. Third is Jake Stikeleather. Will McIver making that move up to four. Brendan Bartlett now in fifth. And we have some pit stop cycling. All right, so Dylan Rapasso coming in for fuel. He just on a 45, no, not coming in for fuel, just having a long lap. Jake, Jake Stike Leather now moving up to second. Uh, not sure where Danny has disappeared to. I needed to switch over the cameras. Braden from Fort, yeah, that's right. I did meet them the other day. Uh, Arkansas, you got it. Thank you, buddy. Very short lift as Daniel Cato was out. He's at the very rear end. All right, so we are on board with Braden Bruce from Arkansas, Arkansas, as some may call it. And he is right embroiled in a battle with Jake Steichleather, who's right behind him. As they are now two and three, they would want to. That's Braden. Jake wants to get where Bruce is, and Bruce wants to not let where Jake gets through. They are 5.5 seconds behind the leader, Dylan Rapasso. And there we are on board with Jake Steikleather, who has now moved into second. I'm assuming that Braden came in for fuel with that 45-second lap. 
So 11, 11 minutes left to go. What's up, Mike Cash? Track is holding up. It's rough, though. It is holding up, but it is rough. <clears throat> we Will McGyver's in fourth. Cody Thompson, fifth. Brendan Bartlett, sixth. Trent Walker moving up for seventh. But he has a lot of work to do if he wants to get to that second place. Mark Atkins, Atkins Diet, turn on one army. Brendan Bartlett and his brother Dylan making the trip down from Sasquatch land, Montana. Jake getting a little bit wrong over that double, just casing it and hitting the pipe, but no harm, no foul. But the young Dylan Rapasso doing it for Canada and looking to keep it smooth and bump up to Looking to bump up into that A final. Jake Steiklath are right behind him. If I, oh, not right behind him, but he's got an 8.4 second lead. What do you want about Justin Mitzkak? People had issues, dude. The top three guys are all on 32, 31, 31 laps. And as we look at Dylan Rapasso, right now we are on board with Jake Steichleather. There's Braden Bruce, uh, Will McIver right behind him. Both of these guys are racing against each other quite a lot. Will out there in that Agama N1. He's looking... I know how Arkansas is pronounced. <laughs> I just like saying Arkansas. <laughs> that the pink car. Dylan Rapasso, Jake Snackleather, William McIver. And there is Will in that N1. He fell back a little bit. Not too much. This is our battle for the bump up. As Dylan Rapasso has got a 10.7 second lead. Will right on him. We see that Agama N1 going through the minefield and handling that. You wanted to know about the rough handling characteristics of the N1. There is a true test as we see a Will McIver all up on the rear end of Jake Steichleather. These guys probably raced against each other for many, many years here in the South. Shout out to Bullet Ton RC. And we're going to go back to the leader, Dylan Raposo. Raposo. I keep on saying Raposo, Raposo. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was, uh, you're talking about the pink car, Justin. Yeah, that was a little wild. It's still a little bit wild, actually. Um, as we see Dylan Raposo, he is now an 11-second lead over second. Jake Steichleather, the young man from Canada, representing X-Ray. Ontario races does a lot of racing up there at the Otterville track. They're a beautiful facility. <laughs> okay, I wasn't wondering what you're talking about, Justin. I know what you're talking about now. That was nuts earlier on. But Dylan Raposo coming in for fuel. We see his dad there. Let's see how it looks when he comes down. Oh, he's he's not in no hurry whatsoever. Very calm, collective pit stop. <laughs> he saw that was so calm. Like, hey, buddy. We're just going to make sure we get all the fuel we can in there. Not in a hurry at all. Should have let him clear it out a little bit better than that, though. That's where he should have let him. Should have let it been a little bit slower. But Dylan Raposo, with 6 minutes and 45 seconds left, his last fuel stop. Actually, the battle is between Jake Steichleather and Will McIver. Hello, Mr. Casson. How you doing? Good, sir. Dylan Raposo. Oh, wow, what a great, oh, great line going outside. Outside cutting into the inside. 
And there's the young driver from Canada, Ontario, going through the minefield with six minutes left to go, but really the battle is on for a second and third. There we see Agama N1, and he's coming in for fuel. Let's stay on Will. Woo! Jake Stagler comes by, so he must have had fuel. Will coming in for a fuel spot. Fuel, spot of fuel. And he's going to go out and try to chase down Jake. Pretty sure Jake has come in. What's up, Jimmy Woodley? How you doing? Thank you for the gas truck, man. Jake Stagler getting it wrong, but self-marshalling himself in the minefield. I got it sitting right here. I'm going to pack it up in my suitcase tonight. And we're going to take this back to the DR and build it up when I get home. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Up next is the Pro Nitro B main, Buggy B main. <clears throat> Which one of these top pros will bump up and do battle in the 30-minute A main? And the now prestigious, always been prestigious, definitely probably the biggest pro attendance we've seen here. Definitely the biggest attendance we've had. they've had at the Wicked Weekend, 666 entries. So this race has definitely grown in popularity since last year. I've been around for 12 years talking to Dave up here in Gainesville, Gain I'm gonna say it for it again, Gainesville, Georgia, under this beautiful roof with open sides. And we are happy to bring you guys all the coverage out there. I did not get any of the tackies from Gene, unfortunately. I honestly have been, been here in the, the booth for the last two and a half days, so. Not much, I'm just going out to do interviews and coming back in here. So we are on race 30 of 53. Three minutes, 33 seconds left to go. Will McGyver and Brendan Bartlett are already wrapped up in a battle. If we can uh, drop back and probably find a battle with Brendan Bartlett and Will McGyver having an issue, he's dropping. So Brandon Bartlett looks like he's going to be going over the, I'll let you know when we see him. I see Stike Leather coming across there. Um, I think Brandon Bartlett's right here. Coming up over the double, he'll be coming around to come on the straightaway around the corner. That's Stike Leather. There we go. There's Bartlett. One Army, Montana. He's trying to put the clock off some fast laps. Trent Walker now moving up to that fourth spot. With only two minutes and 38 seconds left. It's a tall ass, but anything can happen this time. This is RC car racing. We can have cars break. We can have cars flame out. But right now we are on board with Sasquatch, Sasquatch Country, Montana-based One Army driver, Brendan Bartlett, the older of the Bartlett brothers. As he is gunning down the straight in that one army equipped HB. HB, as my Australian guys would say. <coughs> and but Jake Stikelather got a comfortable 12 second lead over Brendan. And I'm fortunate that this will end the the Bartlett's campaign here in the Southeast. Good to see the Northwest drivers coming over here to race with the Southeast drivers. Now we need to get some of these Southeast drivers to go up and race in the Northwest, I would say. Unfortunately, it looks like Braden Bruce, who was in contention for a bump spot early on, is out of the race. Wilson Cowart also out. But right now it's Raposo who has led from, from the flags. For the lights, sorry. He has an 8.2 second lead over Jake Steichleather, who has a 12.6 second lead over Brendan Bartlett. There's a 9.9 .9 second lead over Trent Walker. So Canada looking to bump up into the, the A main and join his other Canadian counterpart from over on the west side of Canada, Cole Chura. 
But don't go anywhere, everybody. We have a barn burner of a B main for you guys, which is the in, uh, Pro Nitro Buggy B main. But looks like Dylan Raposo is going to bring this home with 33 seconds left to go. Jake Stike Leather. I want to shout out and say thank you to G3RC for bringing me some homemade pork rinds. I had a few of them there. Absolutely scrumptious and delicious. Thank you. I feel like um, I, my cricket commentators back in the day, when they used to watch cricket on Bermuda, they used to talk about the food. The people used to always bring them food to eat. So I definitely feel like a little that's happening for me. And I'm going to go out and interview our top two. Thank you, Danny. We're on. Court of a done. Brendan Bartlett done. Trevor Michael Dunn. Daniel Cato Dunn. Thanks, Cole. Cody Thompson Dunn. Philo Hash Dunn. Trent Walker Dunn. Still waiting on All Dylan to finish? Finished. That is Dylan a race, guys. Everybody done. is done. Dylan Raposo, Jake Sykleather. Welcome to the A Main. Please report over to the interview booth to talk to Keenan. So Dylan and Jake, please report to the interview booth to talk to Keenan. You guys are going to race number 47, gentlemen. 47. Down the straightaway, heading into the chicane. We're following it live. And here comes the battle for second down the straightaway. It's going to be a three-way battle coming up on Little Bump and Justin Fails, Lutz, Westergaard, and Fend. That's the battle to watch as they're coming down the step down. Rossiter right there with the best lap of the entire race. 30.3 for Rossiter, up to second. Jake Stike Leather. How many Stike Leathers racing here this weekend? Four. Really? So who is it? Three generations. So we got me, my dad, my brother, and my son. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, good job on the bump up going into intermediate. Wasn't easy for you, but you got it done. Got some track time. Going to make any changes to your car going in? Definitely. Shock changes. Uh, the bumps. My car, not good. I'm having to baby it. Everywhere else, I'm fast. Good corner speed. Any smooth section, I'm, I'm good. These guys are getting to rail it through there. I don't know. Uh, it's not catching them like it's catching me. So we're going to make a change, and we'll be ready for the main. All right, Melmo, good luck in your A, man. And good to see the three generations of Spike Leathers racing here. Thank you. All right, good jobs, Jake. Come over, Dylan. Doing it for Canada. Come over here, good buddy. How old are you, Dylan? I'm 14. 14? OK, I had it wrong. Uh, you're from Ontario, correct? Yes. Representing the auto. I know you always do a lot of testing up there in Otterville. Good job on the bump up. Your first wicked weekend. Pardon? Is this your first Wicked Weekend? No. I have been here last year, and that was my first. So what's your plan going into the A main? Um, it was really just keeping it clean, more or less. And I did have one mistake at the start of the straightaway, and I did manage to recover the position. But after that, it was all about keeping it clean, no mistakes, and making sure the car's on the right line and doesn't hit any bumps or ruts. Well, good luck in your A main, man. Good job. Thank you.
full freight train of cars down the back straightway. Three wide going into the infield. 20 minute race, guy. 20 minute race. Take it easy now. Clean it up. Clean it up. All right, so Spencer Hecker leading him around. Lap number one, Mason Fuller in the number two spot. Julian three, Camden four, Walker in the five. Battle. All right, we are here with the start of the pro Nitro Buggy B-Man. We see Spencer the Heck Hecker there right behind him. Looks like Mason, Iceman, Fuller, Julian, Oliver is in Camden line. All right, he then has these pro guys. Heckert from Fuller, from Oliver, it's Camden Line, Student Radical, Caden Fuller. So it's looking like it's starting in order. Good job by all these top racers. As you see Spencer Heckert, he has the Iceman right behind him. I silently picked the Iceman to win this. I probably jinxed him even thinking about him winning this race. As he goes through that HP car, he gets by the Heckert. Up and over the Iceman looking smooth. He's on a mission. He says, I just want to get 20 minutes of practice. As Spencer Heckert makes a mistake, that's going to allow Julian Olivares by. I'm pretty sure his mom and dad are super nervous watching this race. Julian Olivares currently in that second position. He has Camden Line, Walker Spin Ride right behind him. Can young Julian hold this? Line and do it for Florida. <clears throat> As we see, kind of line at s -Rox. He has Walker spin around right behind him. That's Spencer Heckert, and that is Caden Fuller right there. Cole Caston also in the mix, Georgia native. We got Joey Alavino turning on Walker. Jason Raleigh turning on Mason. Let's go, Iceman. Iceman out there keeping it cool. You like that, don't you? Pun intended. Iceman got a two second lead on Julian Olivares. Olivares, 2.1 seconds uh, in front of Camden Line. Heckert, 0.7 seconds back. So Camden and Heckert embroiled in a big battle as we are on board Julian Olivares, the young man from Florida. And we see, I'm not sure who that is out there, but that is lapped traffic. And there is the Iceman. He is out. He is like, okay, guys, I just done the B-Man to get practice and fool you guys. A little bit of mind play. But Camden Lime looking very racy there. Very fast right now. Just threw down a 36 flat. Mason Fuller throwing down a 35-9. But that's not as fast as lap. He's got a 35-8. So Camden Lime just casing it up there. Julian Oliver is looking pretty smooth and solid. He's not going to open up any doors for Camden Line to get by. This is your battle for second and your final bump-up spot. Remember, only two bumping through. As you can see, the Iceman in his orange and yellow HP gunning down the straightaway as we are on board with Julian right behind him. Camden, oh, no! Camden getting it wrong in the straight. Oh, no, that is not the place you want to flip over. As we see Danny K, Brent running over. Camden Lime having a disastrous crash on the front straightaway, giving some breathing room to Jolie, Julian Oliveras. That's going to allow Caden Fuller to get by. Can Caden Fuller get up and beat and race with his uh, race with his brother? Mike Fuller is going to be super busy if both these young men jump, bump up to the A main. But I'm sure he'll be a happy busy. As we are on board, Julian Oliveras with 15 minutes 47 seconds left to go. Mason Fuller now the gap is 1.7 seconds back. So Mason Fuller making a, a mistake at some point. Allowing Julian Oliveras to capitalize. I'm pretty sure his mom and his dad are super nervous right now watching this happen. Uh, whoever's pitting for him, because I know they are very emotional about their, their Julian. As we see Julian right there looking calm and collective. No, not really setting blazing laps, just being very consistent, very tight. Not opening up the door, keeping that line tight, not be, you know hitting his points every second. Uh, let's see what the gap is when they go by. It is, there's Caden though. Caden is flying. The gap is now 2.2. Maybe we're seeing a little bit of, uh-oh, uh here's that in the middle. Okay, we'll get by Julian. Julian just now throwing a 36.4. Mason Fuller, a 35.9. Caden for a 36.1. Walker Spinra from Spencer Hackett, Camden Line, Cole Caston, Lee Setzer. 
David Austin, Austin Wick, Greg Harmer, Evervale, Cade Burnett, Hunter LaFour, Nico Listi, and Jonathan Reeves. Hope you guys are enjoying the coverage of the 2023 Wicked Weekend. We are on board with our second place runner and in the final bump spot, Julian Olivares running the associated chassis, J Concepts Tires from Florida. And he is being hunted by Caden Fuller, the younger brother of Mason Fuller, who is currently in the lead. And we see Julian just being very calm and collective, not getting too crazy, hitting his lines every bit that he can. He doesn't have to win. He just needs to finish second. And we see Mason Fuller up there putting the hammer down, maybe slowing up a little bit for his brother. Let's see. Coming in for fuel. Let's follow Julian right there. Let's see if we can follow Julian. Let's switch over to the pit camera. All right, so we see Julian coming out, and he is going to be behind Caden, but these two will have to both come in for fuel. I'm assuming they're going to come in here soon. Maybe they're, uh, I'm pretty sure, one after the other as Caden sets his sights on chasing down his brother. But Julian right behind him with a great pit stop coming in early. Let's see what happens with Caden and Mason. I'm pretty sure Mason's coming in for fuel now. Let's see if we can see peripheral vision. Nope, he's still going. That's a slow lap of 37-1. And Julian Olivares just dropping down to third as Caden clocks off a 36-9. They are, he is 2.4 seconds back. He is in great position to take advantage of any mistake made by Caden or when Caden fuels. We see Brent Densford fueling up Camden line after that horrendous crash on the straightaway. And there is Caden Fuller and Cade Burnett right behind him, the associated driver, but that is not for position. Actually, that's not Cade Burnett. He's not in this race. That might be Mason Fuller. So did Mason come in for fuel and we missed it? There's Ma there's Caden coming in for fuel right now. So let's see, Caden is out. Where is Julian? There's Mason. So I'm assuming that Mason came in. I just missed it. There is no Tyra in here today, James Duarte. No Tyra and Tessman in the house today. Mason Fuller out front. Let's see when he comes by. Mason's coming in for fuel now. Getting a little bit squirrely. Uh, Mike there doing the fuel stops. Ooh, pretty good fuel stop by Mike Fuller. Julian Olivares back up to second. But looks like he comes out behind Mason. And there's Caden. So good fuel stop. And he has to deal with Mason Fuller in front of him and Caden Fuller behind him. And... Olivares pitting earlier than both of these guys. Uh-oh. Have a little lap trafficage right there coming out of the minefield. Let's see. 41-6. Pit lap. Pit out lap for Mason Fuller. And we have some traffic in between Fuller and... Julian, thank you. He pulls over just like a pro driver should in this class. If you don't know how to get out of the other person's way. Oh, no. And Fuller and Julian makes a mistake. And that dry, uh, that tire marshal has to hop over Caden now. Caden gets back into second. Looking to calm down. Just catch up to his brother and probably just ride around. And get in that second place as we see Fuller coming by. We'll see the gap when they come by this time. It is 4.777 seconds back. Julian is 2.1 behind that. So can Julian put the, his head down? The clock off some laps. They have 10 minutes and 29 seconds left to go. Thank you, Andrew Smith. Shout out to Race, Race Time Entertainment for the coverage. That's right, WRCE. And it is Fuller from Fuller. Olivares, Heckert, Kasten, Lime, your top six. So Mason Fuller out front, the older of the Fuller brothers. There we see Caden coming on in that multicolored HB racing car. Julian Olivares is two seconds back. There we see Julian just peeking through. And Spencer Heckert is 1.4 behind him. Cole, Kasten, six tenths of a second behind Spencer, Camden Line, 2.4. 
So we still have a race going on. But Caden just pulling away ever so slightly. Uh-oh, making a mistake. Can't make those type of mistakes. Julian and there's, there's Gago of, oh! He gets an extreme rip right there and shows us the underside of his chassis, keeping that car completely under control, hitting a divot or something in that jump, and we see Caden powering down the straightaway, uh, just putting on the brakes good enough, and there is Julian Alvarez right behind him now, and behind Julian is Spencer Hackett, so Caden has a gaggle of cars following him. Any mistake by Caden now, we'll see him lose multiple positions as Julian Alvarez is just right behind him, by Spencer Hacker behind him, and that is Cole Caston right there as well. Caden tiptoeing through the minefield on that HB, HB, HB car, as the Australians would say. And Julian is putting on the Alta Brothers right now because he is flying. Let's see what Julian calls. Wow, that was a 36 1 for Julian. He's now 1.4 seconds back. Spencer Hacker throwing down a 36 5. So right now, Caden's about to have some company in multiple. We have Julian Alvarez and Spencer Hecker right behind him. And Cole Casson not far behind. Behind Cole Casson is Camden Lime. There we see Caden tiptoeing through the minefield. I believe that is Mason. Uh -uh, is it? Nope, Mason's already gone by. That is no idea who that is. So... Alvarez now 1.3 seconds back. Spencer Hackett 1.3 behind him. Cole casting 2.1 behind them. And Camden Lime 4 seconds behind Cole. And we see some lap traffic in the way. They need to move. Oh no. Did Julian get by him? I missed it. I did miss it. Julian got by. So Caden must have had an accident. Now Julian Alvarez to that second position. There's 7 minutes and 43 seconds. He's going to have to come in for fuel. Sooner than these guys, Julian back up to the front. He is 0.6 tenths of a second ahead of Caden Fuller. Spencer Hackett right behind him at 1.2. We have a race, ladies and gentlemen, of the RC Racing World. Here we see Julian Alvarez coming up over the double, keeping it smooth. That lap traffic just getting out of the way just in time as we've seen Julian keep it very tight on the lines, driving very good consistently, not taking any risks. This would be a great accomplishment for the young Floridian. I'm pretty sure his mom and dad will be uh, ecstatic if this happens. And we see them both coming in for fuel. So it's Caden and Julian coming in for fuel. Well done, fueling. Oh, let's see, let's see. They get out in this. We have a race, ladies and gentlemen. We have a race for second to the end. We see the young Julian Alvarez and the younger Caden Fuller, the younger brother, the Fuller half. We have not gotten a nickname for him. We don't know what we're going to call Julian Olivares, but the young Floridian here with his mom and dad watching patiently, probably nervously from the sidelines. Let's not get off this battle. Let's stay right here. Please do not leave this battle. This is the battle for second, as our cameraman knows. And they are getting into some lap traffic. Look at this. And there we see Spencer Hackett coming in. Doesn't really matter because Spencer Hackett is in second. But he, oh, but it does matter because now we have a three-way race as a great pit by Joe Bonas and his dad. Oh no, and Julian Alvarez! No, it looks like Julian Alvarez lost complete control of his car. I hope he is still in this race. Oh no! Oh no, what happened to Alvarez? Did he lose control? Oh no! Oh my gosh! I think Alvarez might be out. Let us know, cameraman, what happened if you know. Oh no, now it's gonna be a battle between Heckert and Caden Fuller with Julian Alvarez making that mistake. I'm hoping it was, uh-oh. Oh, no, we have a dead car on the shredder, baby. Oh, no. Olivares is out. Olivares is out. I feel so gutted for Olivares. He was on a championship bumping run, and then it looks like he had something go wrong with his servo. He lost, lost complete steering after taking that jump. It went straight off into defense. But now we put our focus on two. Caden, Fuller, and Heckert. We have HB versus SWAX. Heckert looking to bump up. Joining his fellow s -Rex drivers in the A-Man. He's already bumped up in the Truggy Man. Caden Fuller, Cole Caston right behind them. They have five minutes to go. This is Nitro Racing, everybody. Anything can go wrong in this 20-minute A-Man. That is actually Mason Fuller. Mason Fuller is out on a Sunday afternoon drive. He's got a nine-second lead over Spencer Hackett. But that can be diminished by any accident as we see... <sighs> 
as we see Spencer Hacker just finding his rhythm, getting through those, that minefield, but Caden Fuller getting, making up some time through there. He seems to be much faster than Hacker through there. Makes a mistake. Makes a mistake, and I thought that was Caden just now who was going to overtake him there into some lap traffic right there as we see Hacker powered on the outside of that traffic. And Caden's right there. Very good job by that driver pulling over, understanding that these leaders are in a broiled battle for second place. At stake, the bump up spot to the A main, pulling over like a good driver should. Sportsman drivers and intermediate drivers can learn a lot from that. As he goes around, Caden Fuller not letting Spencer Hacker get too far in front of him. We see Caden Fuller a lot faster through her. Even though he makes a mistake, he's able to power through those. That minefield goes a little wild, gets a little squarely, goes up, but he is right back on the rear view mirror of Spencer Hacker. Then the gap between them is five tenths of a second. Half a second separates them. As they go up and over, getting a little bit squarely there, we see Heckert calm and composed, hitting his line, staying in the middle of the track. He whoo, gets it up on two wheels. Caden makes a mistake. It is extremely, there's a massive, massive car swallowing hole right there on the... Uh-oh, Caden got a little... He has been faster than Heckert the entire time through that session. This is a battle to the end. Will we see the two brothers making it to the final? We see somebody cheering them on. I believe that's, uh-oh, oh. And Hackett gets a little bit squarely. Caden right now seems to be the faster of the two as he is looking to take that pass as they will have some lap traffic right ahead of him as they both get by on the inside. Good job by that car by letting those guys by. <clears throat> and he's, oh. And Caden, this is where Caden is extremely fast. He gets a little bit wrong going out there, and Hackett's better, able to get a better drive out of the corner. But Caden looking to join his brother Mason up there and race against him in the A main. Ooh, and we have 2 minutes 39 seconds left to go in this buggy pro nitro buggy B main. We have had some great racing going on today here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. We see Spencer Hackett going wide, coming in, cutting in right there. He seems to be just slightly faster than Caden in this, this part of the section, but Caden has made up some time in the minefield right here. Let's see if he can do it again. Oh, no, and Caden gets it wrong, but he self-marshals. But you know what? That is Cole Caston right behind him. Cole Caston is in the mix now. The Georgian in that techno ride, the techno cars have been flying all weekend long. We saw Seth and Dana and Ryan Mayfield both looking good in these cars. Seth and Dana, obviously, your TQ of this class. But now we have a three-way battle for the lead for the second-place bump-up spot as we see Caden Fuller now trying to fend off Cole Caston. That spells good news for Spencer Heckert as he is looking to take a confirming lead. And uh-oh, uh-oh. So see, we have seen Caden so much faster, but now he's trying to push the issue, getting a little bit wide. He makes up so much time on Spencer Heckert right here. They have one minute, 32 seconds left to go. Let's see when they come around the line what the gap is. It's exactly one second. And Cole Kasson is 1.3. Caden Fuller right back up on the rear end of Heckert. It is HB versus SWAX. Caden putting the hammer down. Oh, they skate through that hole. Just sketching it. There is a massive car swallowing crater right there. Come on, Caden. You can do it. Oh, he's got the drive. He's got the drive. What a great run. He is all up. Spencer Hackett has to tiptoe while Caden can come through there. Way more punch. This is a race to the end. And if they make a mistake, Cole Caston is looking. Oh! And MEC Hacker get super squarely. And that's going to give the lead back to Caden. As we see Caden. Can he hold on for 45 more seconds? This is an exciting pro Nitro Buggy B main. This is the battle for the bump up spot. As we see Hackett putting the hammer down. Caden. Uh oh, Hackett making an error. That's going to allow Cole Caston. That's going to allow Caden to pull off a little bit as Heckert and Cole Caston are now embroiled in a battle for third. While that happens, oh no, Heckert getting it wrong. Cole getting it wrong, and this spells it all. Great times for Caden. With 19 seconds, Heckert getting it wrong again. But Caden Fuller now coming down, looking to join his brother, the Iceman, Mason Fuller, in the 30-minute Pro Nitro Buggy B main that will be coming up later on today here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. Woo! What an exciting B main this has been. And now Caden Fuller is looking to bring it home. His brother will win this as he comes across. Mason Fuller 
Caden Fuller, the Fuller brothers are making it to the A-Man. All of HB Nation goes wild. <sighs> I will be going out to interview both of them. All right, Danny. took that second bump up spot. You had to work for it, man. You and Hackett had a very vicious battle. You and Julian had a battle. Uh, tell us a little bit about your race. Uh, yeah, it started off just trying not to wreck and keep it smooth, and then I was battling with Julian, and he had a problem with his car, and then me and Spencer battled until the end, and then last lap, he hit the pipe, and I got around him. All right, good lap. So who's going to pit you? Who's your dad going to pit, you or your brother? My dad's going to pit Mason, and Joey Bourdain's going to He'll probably fit me. All right, he did a good job with you. Good luck in the A-Man, man, and we're racing with you, brother. Good job. Where's the Ice Man? Come over here, Ice Man. Hey, man. Good job from flags to finish. I think you just wanted to get some extra track time out there. Yeah, I mean, I guess I wrecked a bunch of qualifying to just get some extra track time, but no, I just had rough qualifying. Uh, just didn't wreck in the main, and that's all it took to get the bump in that one. What did you learn from this man that you're going to take into your A-Man? Uh, not Rick. And then you might do pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's getting pretty gnarly out there. It is getting pretty rough and dusty. Well, good luck to you. Good driving here, your brother in the A-Man team. Fuller all the way. We got the Iceman. He just bumped up. We're getting ready for the Pro Nitro A Buggy Man later on today. You'll get your car ready, good buddy. Good job. We're going to get back to the action for you guys. We got some E-Buggy action out there. Marshall, top left corner. Caden, you hustle on over there? Okay, good job, buddy. All righty, guys. 40-plus E-Buggy B-Main. 16 will enter, 2 will advance. Winner gets a nap. All right. Here we go, guys. Marshall's looking live. Driver's ready. Marshall's ready for the double A-Main show and old man E-Buggy. Less than five. Here we go. Keep it clean, guys. Keep it clean. Easy. Easy. Watch it. There we go. Not too terribly bad. Good job, gentlemen. So Vic Aloprando leading him around. From pole, you got Alan Abbas in that number two spot. Oh, Marshall, middle double, middle double. Look out, guys. Carnage, carnage, carnage. Easy, easy, guys. You got to go around each other, not through each other. So Vic Aloprando in the techno, going to lean him around for lap number one. James Large in that number two spot. Randy Ellis from the 15 all the way to the number three. Randy, a bump up from the C main. Now finds himself on the verge of in the A main. Might delay in that number four spot. Bobby Smith in the five. Nine minutes left. All right, guys, one down, nine to go. One down, nine to go. Race number 32 on the track. Race number 33, you guys are up next. Pro E-Buggy B-Main. Race number 33, you are up next. So, so Vic Aloprando, orange, black, and gray, down the front straightaway, yellow wheels, yellow wing. Michael DeLay in that number two spot. Now Mike in the HB. 
You got James Large and Atetna running in that number three spot. Eric in the four, Bobby Smith in the five, Alan Abbas in the six, Louis Perez in the seven, Randy Ellis, JJ Truett's nine, Craig Action Jackson in that number 10 spot. Owen Simmons in the 11, the C-Main sidekick. You got Darren Sansom in that number 12, Renee in the 13, Charlie German 14, Tommy Rogers 15, and Greg Smith rounding out our field. We are two down, eight to go, drivers. Two minutes, minutes down, left. eight minutes to go. Vic Aloprando, your race leader, down the front straightaway. Michael DeLay in that number two spot. Eric Hanneman now up into that number three, 1.5 seconds outside of transfer from the number 10 spot. You, got, you then got Bobby Smith and Alan Abbas, four and five. All right, guys, coming up on three down, seven to go. Three down, seven to go. Vic Aloprando, your race leader. 1.5 seconds up on Mike DeLay. Oh, caution straightaway, caution straightaway entrance. Caution straightaway entrance, guys. Hug the inside pipe. All clear. Vic and Michael, one and two. Got a two-second lead up on Eric Hanneman in that number three spot. All right, guys, we got a white Chevy, white Chevy behind the driver's stand, blocking the driveway. We got some guys ready to uh, ready to leave. There's a white Chevy out in the driveway behind the driver's stand that needs to be moved. We got a camper that is ready to leave around spot number 13. Need that white Chevy move, please. Alan Abbas now into that number three spot, four and a half seconds outside of transfer. So it is Tetno leading HB, HB, Kyosho, Kyosho, top five. Six minutes left. Four down, six to go, guys. Four down, six to go. Pro E Buggy B Main, you guys are up next. Pro E Buggy B Main, you are up next. Aloprando, DeLay, Abbas, Smith, Hanneman, top five, Simmons, Perez, Large, German, and, and, and Renee in that top ten. Mama. Was it was it Julian Switch? Oh. So the receiver went part time. He's so fast, his car can't keep up with Five him. Left. That's the problem. Yeah. Five down, five to go. Yeah, Katie, if you don't want your eardrums to bleed, yeah, move over just a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. All right, six down, four to go, guys. Six down, four to go. Michael DeLay only a second and a half back from Vic for that top spot. Four minutes left. Watch yourself, Nico. Here comes your leader right here in front of stage and going to be coming up on the back of Craig Jackson. But Mike DeLay is right behind him. One and two down the front straightaway. Alan Abbas only three seconds back in that number three spot. There it's Hanneman and Smith, Kyosho teammates, four and five. The C main sidekick holding on to that number six spot. Nope, he's down to the seven. Louis Perez now up into the number six.
Austin, how, how old are you now, dude? How old are you now? Good Lord, I'm old. <laughs> You're like twice the size from the first time I saw you. Holy crap. What's your diet, dude? Red beans and rice? Okay. <laughs> Jeez. All right, guys, seven down, three to go, guys. Seven down, three, three to go. Seven. Michael DeLay now, new race leader, making the pass on Vic, but Vic still holding on to that top spot. But he's got 1.4 seconds up on Alan Abba, so Alan charging hard. He's wanting a spot in the, those old man double shows. And in the minefield they go, one, two, and three. Mike DeLay, white, green, and blue. Vic Aloprando, gray, yellow, orange, black. Down the front straightaway, Alan Abbas right behind him. HB leading Tetno, HB, Kyosho, Kyosho, as Hanneman and Smith, four and five, not too terribly far behind, with just over two minutes left to go. Two minutes left. Eight down, two to go, guys. Eight down, two to go. Michael DeLay, Vic Aloprando, Alan Abbas, one, two, and three. Coming on to the front straightaway. Eric Hanneman not too far behind in the four. So Eric's starting to close the gap on Allen, but Allen's less than a second behind Vic for that final transfer onto the left-hand side, up and over the bat double, down the bat straightaway. Vic and Allen... Vic in the Tetno, Allen in the HB, over the middle double they go. They're also closing the gap on the leader. The leader's coming up on two cars into the minefield. Trying to see who those are. Leader coming up on a solid blue car. Thank you, sir. Second and third right behind you. Allen trying to look to the inside. Oh, Vic, he's going to shut the door. Eric Hanneman just turned the fa his left. fastest lap, which is also the fastest lap of the race at 38.6. Looks like Vic having a little trouble going to the inside. Going to have to fix it himself. So that's going to give the position to Alan Abbas. Hanneman now also to the three. Seconds left. So Eric putting pressure on Allen now as they also have Michael right there in their sights. Coming on to the front double-double. This is for the double old man e-buggy show. Into the roller double. Aaron looking to the inside of Allen. He's going to shut the door. Coming on to the front straightaway. Allen in the white, orange, and blue. Oh, Aaron going to spin out right there in front of staging. Going to have to marshal it himself. So that's going to open the gap to two seconds. This is the final lap. This will decide it with 15 seconds 15 left seconds to go. Left. Your leader coming up on some lap traffic in the infield. Alan Abbas right there on the back. Oh, he's going to get tangled up with lap traffic. He's going to collect Eric with him. Clock has its spot. Oh, going into the off camera. There are all kinds of carnage. Eric and Alan into the minefield. Oh, Eric's going to jump on top that. of Alan, going to spin out. Coming over the front, double, double. Just two more corners to go. Alan's going to get a bad bounce. Eric to the inside. Eric came down to the down. front straight away. It's go. Oh, they're going to both try to roll Alan upside down. Oh, Eric man, Hanneman it's going to be Eric Perez Hanneman done. with the Alan bump spot. Luis Perez done. Last turn Alan of the done. last lap. Bobby Smith done. Craig Jackson done. James Large done. Owen Simmons done. Eric Han Michael DeLay, Eric Hanneman going to bump up to the double old man e-buggy show. Done. Valiant effort by Paul Alan Abbas going to come home in the number Renee three. Luis Perez in the four and Vic Aloprando going to round out the top five. So Michael and Eric, please report to the interview booth to talk to Keenan. Michael and Eric, you guys are going to races 41 and 49. 41 and 49. All right, guys, we got a missing e-buggy body. All right, pro guys, hold him in staging, guys. Hold him in staging. Hang on, hang on. Michael DeLay, Eric Hanneman, please.
support to the interview booth. Michael DeLay, Eric Hanneman, please support the interview booth. The rest of my old wise e-buggy drivers, come on out to turn Marshall, please. All right, guys, we got a rogue e-buggy body for an HP wine and green. Techno I believe we got taken off in the windstorm Techno yesterday. RC is a championship winning manufacturer of high performance scoring. A scale, TED scale, nitro, and electric RC buggies and trucks. With a worldwide dealer network, USA and Europe headquarters. Check him in, guys. Eric Hanneman. Sorry about that. Man, Michael you Michael. talk about winning that on the last corner. Uh, yes, and it spun close. out. Both of us spun out right at the I end. And uh, I just was able to get on the wheels quicker and go. Was running them down and uh, lucked out on that one. Funny enough, I bumped an E-Truck the same way on the last lap. No way. Well, congratulations <laughs> to you. And, hey. He, he hit me up a few weeks ago. And, uh, he said, you know what? The Kyosha team's growing. I want to shout out to the Kyosha team, to Mike Sorchi. That's right, man. Show us some love on that podcast, baby. Come on. What does Sorchi say? He says, we, no call it a comeback. We never left. <laughs> <laughs> good job and good luck in your amens. All right, Mike. Now come over here, Mike. Congratulations, man. Thanks, man. How's that track getting out there for you? Oh, it was rough out there. Very slick. Just trying to keep it clean the whole race. Well, what are you going to do in pre preparation for your A-man? Going to have to go through those shocks again and, and think about my tire choice a little bit better. Now, it is getting very gnarly out there. Good job on the bump up and good luck in your A-man, good buddy. Thank you, sir. All right, good job. All right, let's get back to this race in action. We've got a lot more bill paying action to go. We're going to take you back to Danny. All right, Danny. All right, this is the Pro Electric Buggy B Main. Jared Riggins, Tyler, Joseph, Tyler Jones, Jonah Wilson, Jared Tebow, Tyler Hooks, Brennan Schimmel, Cade Burnett, Cole Casson, Brandon Rose, Camden Lime, Jonathan Reeves, David Olson, Greg Harmer, and Austin Weekend. They are off. Run. Jared Wiggins, the wizard, but Tebow, oh, hold on, there's Jonah Wilson behind Tebow, Tebow out to the lead, Jonah Wilson right behind him, let's see when Tebow comes by, Tebow 36-3, Jonah Wilson 37-3, Brennan Schimmel, coming up there, Visiting us from the 10 scale world out there in that pink and yellow TLR right behind him is Tyler Jones and the Mugen MBX 8. And they see them powering down that straight area by Tebow right out there in that MX 8E prototype E buggy. We see Jonah Wilson, <clears throat> very impressive young man from Tennessee racing up there at the rock. Oh, and he gets it wrong as he clips a point pipe. These guys have 8 minutes 55 seconds left to go. As we see Tebow powering down that straightaway, we got our second cameraman out there, Gene Shrout Jr., doing an excellent job there. <coughs> As we see, we are now, now we are on board with, let's see, this is Brennan Schimmel, who's looking to bump up. I, I got to know Brennan Schimmel when he, start, when he was racing in the eight scale world, and that was his main class. And he stopped racing for a while to focus on the stock class and 10 scale. And now he's coming back to his roots here. 
at the Wicked Weekend running in the E-Buggy class and Nitro Buggy class here in the Pro class. As he now has lost that second place and given it off to Jonah Wilson, who's back in second. Jonah Wilson looking exceptionally fast. Probably the most impressive young man I've seen so far this year. He is extremely fast and uh, was very good at the Nationals here recently. And Tebow out there trying to get some extra track time and bump his way into the A final. This will be his final Wicked Weekend. So we see Mike Cash cheering on Tyler. Tyler Jones also looking to make it up and make it into that A main as well. He's currently sitting down in fourth. He's 0.5 seconds, half a second behind. Jared Wiggins, who's 1.7 seconds now, 2.47. Camden Lime moving up. Wiggins falls down. And Camden Lime is now 2.4 seconds behind Jonah Wilson. And right now, that is Tebow out there. He is on a he has a 5.8 second lead. And we are on board. There's Camden Line getting it wrong. And that is Jones getting by him with Wiggins in tow. So Jones going to set his his sets set his sights on Jonah Wilson. But Jonah Wilson has a three-second lead over him. And Jared Tebow has a 6.5-second lead over Wilson. As we see Wilson going up back over the doubles in that purple and black associated white wing. His dad is also racing here, representing Tennessee, The Rock. Jonah Wilson, 16 years old. As he comes through the minefield, tiptoeing over that double. There we see the young man, Jonah Wilson from Tennessee. Very impressive, lots of talent. Probably has a very bright future in front of him. He puts the work in and the sacrifice. Good to see him going out to the West Coast races last year. Hello, Mr. Hine, have a good day. <coughs> as we see Jonah cutting it close up oh, inside. No, that's actually Tebow with the white antenna. Good to see Tebow rocking the antenna. Still, white antenna tube. Always, I always thought the white antenna tube was cool. Had some myself back in the day. As we see Tebow up there in that MX-8E prototype Mayako buggy. Looking pretty smooth. He says, I want to have a great e-buggy race. I haven't had an e-buggy race in quite a long time. So he is looking to bump up with five minutes and 45 seconds left to go in this race. It's Tebow from Wilson, from Jones, from Wiggins. Jones now... Losing some time. He has now fallen down to fifth. And Jared Wiggins has moved up to third. He is 5.6 seconds behind Jonah Wilson. Brennan Schimmel, Brennan Schimmel just under a second below him. But right now we are on board with Jared Tebow. This will be his final Wicked Weekend. This is his final year of professional racing. He said he will still race, but not on a professional level. As he is going to take some time to focus on family and his business, JTP. We are now on board. Wiggins right there in that techno car. Chasing down Jonah Wilson. He has 5.3 seconds to make up. As you can see, Jonah Wilson going out the back stretch. But behind Wiggins, he has a gaggle of cars. Tyler Jones, Brendan Schimmel, Brandon Rose, Austin Wick, all trying to bump up, bump up and catch up Wilson. But Wilson is pulling away from these guys. As you see, Wilson going down the minefield. As Wiggins goes around the 180 on the off camera, keeping it tight around the pipe. He has a lot of time to make up. He's not going to make it up like that as he gets crooked in the minefield. He needs to follow Seth Van Dalen's line through that. Seth Van Dalen was the fastest car through there yesterday. Let's hope he can repeat it. As you see, Wiggins coming around the corner, gunning at Don straight away. He has Tyler Jones in tow. Tyler Jones just 1.1 seconds behind him. There we see Wiggins up and over the rounds. Jones making up some time. He's now in the same frame as Wiggins. Jones looking fast. Still has a lot of time to make up. Wiggins right there, but... Jonah Wilson just out there on a Sunday afternoon drive. He's just keeping that lead at a 5.2 seconds. Might be less as we see. Wiggins, he must have heard me. He is going down the inside of the minefield. The same line we saw Seth, his teammate, Seth freaking Van Dalen do yesterday. And we see poor Brandon Rose jumping out onto the straightaway, but getting it back. But still, that, lap, that gap has just dropped now. It's 4.77 seven seconds back. Jonah Wilson, 8.3 behind Tebow. Tebow out there cruising, looking to make it to the A main, having some bad luck in qualifying. So three minutes, 30 seconds left to go. Mike Cass says top five cars, white wheels. <laughs> okay, we got Bob's RC, Curtis Baker, join us, Ethan Martinez cheering on Tebow. 
And Jonah Wilson getting a little bit squirrely there in that blue, white, and black, or dark blue, purple associated car. This young man is impressive. Lots of talent. Nice young man as we see Tebow going through there. He is coming up on some lap traffic. That is Tyler Hooks as he goes by Tebow in that iconic blue, white, and black paint job and his iconic white antenna tube. Jared Tebow out there in that Mayako MX-8E prototype Mayako buggy. He is looking really racy. We have 2 minutes 27 seconds left to go as he goes through the minefield up and over the double. Great shot from our second cameraman. You can look forward to this in our mains coming up later. Getting by that lap traffic. That looks like that is David Olsen. As we see Tebow up and over those doubles. But here is the battle. Wiggins and Jones. There you see... Jonah Wilson going flying by. They have two minutes to go. And barring any intimate disaster from Jones, they should, uh, they have two minutes left to go. We shall see if these two can capitalize on any mistakes made by, jo uh, by Wilson. As we see Jared just pulling out a little bit of his former teammate on the techno team, Tyler Jones. Jared the Wizard Wiggins out there probably burns more fuel Burns more tires than anybody in RC. This guy, I'm pretty sure he'll be at an RC track tomorrow when he finishes up as he is off and running. Ooh, Jones having a peek there on the outside. Doesn't see a spot. And he goes, wow. Oh, and Jones gets it wrong. And ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Wall rides the, uh, wall rides the, um, dry, uh, the pit entrance. He was lucky. That could have been well, well wrong for him. Went very wrong for him, but he was able to cap, to keep it under control. And he just fully punched it and landed back on his four wheels like a cat. But right now, the story is Jared Tebow, who is out to a 9.1 second. Let's see what it is when he comes by. When Wilson comes by, it's now up to a 9.8 second lead. And Wilson has a 4.2 second lead over Wiggins. So Jonah Wilson just needs to keep it on all fours. Don't make any mistakes, and he will bump up with Tebow. Tebow kind of has to do the same thing, but he isn't slowing down. He is like, I'm just Jared Tebow. I'm a world champion. I've won national titles. I've won Reedy Race. I won Neo six times. I'm just going to punch it through here because that's what we do. Jared Tebow things. Uh-oh. And we have some. There we see Wilson navigating his way through some traffic. And we have 11 seconds left on the clock. We'll see Wiggins come by for another lap. Jones come by for another lap. Brandon Rose, Brandon Schimmel as well. And that is it. The clock is off. And we are on board with Jonah Wilson. He just has to cruise to a victory. As you see, Jared Tebow come by, taking the win. Going up into pit lane. Jonah Wilson should be right behind him. But Wiggins isn't too far behind him, actually. So let's see, yep, and Jonah Wilson will win, and we are going to go out and have a chat with these two drivers. Right, Danny? Techno RC. Techno RC is a championship manufacturer. I'm here with young Jonah Wilson, representing Tennessee, just bumped up into the E-Buggy A-Man. Tell us a little bit about your race, buddy. 
the start was kind of hectic. Everyone kind of got together, and I was able to get into second. And once I was there, I just told myself, clean, smooth laps. The track's rough. People are going to make mistakes. If you just keep it on all fours, you'll get it, and the car is great. So you got double A-mans coming up. What's your plan going into your A-mans later on today? Uh, more of the same because, you know, the track can really bite you if you try to push too hard. So just stay smooth and hopefully improve on my position. Right, you've been super impressive this year. Um, impressed me quite a lot. Good to see you still doing well here at Wicked Weekend, and good luck to you today. Thank you. All right. What's up, Tebow? You said you wanted to do well. In an in e buggy, you're gonna do it the hard way. You lead, you lead from lights to flags. Tell us a little bit about your race, your weekend. Yeah, the weekend's been super mixed so far. Um, I've had really good speed. I would say more just like straight s speed where I feel like I could be fighting up front than I've had. Um, but man, I don't know. Just like I kind of just I think I was just choosing the wrong tread pattern yesterday and uh you know i had good nitro buggy runs but i drove really well in those ones the other ones i just would have like one mistake you know every run i'd have a mistake so i wanted to have a clean 10 minutes and that was the best drive i've done the whole time i've been here i had a flawless 10 minute run no, no crashes or nothing and yeah like the three guys in front of me all crashed into each other on the first lap i just went inside of them and i've been messing with my shocks all weekend and like nothing's really changed and so i was thinking a little bit and uh made a decent like rear end geometry change and my car was awesome my car was so good that time so that was really fun i'm i want to do good in e-buggy i just feel like i just can't put it together and you know, it's a bummer. I'm, I mean, I, at least I got out of the B, but it's going to be tough starting in the back. I feel like I have some good lines. So just got to hope that people crash and and I can just kind of have some good races. But I'm really excited for Nitro Buggy now. Okay. Uh, I got some changes I'm going to do to that. And I, I'm super excited. I can't wait for Nitro Buggy. All right, sweet. Well, congratulations on the bump up, and we look forward to seeing what you can do in Nitro yeah. Buggy. Good luck to you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for watching. All right. That's Jared Tebow. We're going to get back to the action here. Uh, we'll get back to some e truggy action for you guys. The five, AJ Waters from the 12 all the way up to the number six spot. It's an early race, though. Early race. Oh, touching in midair. Able to save it. Easy. Whoa, Dominic going whiskey throttle coming off the bat straight away. So right now, it is Nick Reppin, your race leader, coming over the front double-double, green and orange. That looks like a Toot Hollingsworth tribute car right there. You got Corey Mack in that number two spot, Nelson in the three, Dominic in the four. Calvin Bruce now to the five, Cam Hamill sits, AJ Waters seven, JJ Truett's eight. Key Johnson down to the nine. Don Hovde, your early top ten. One thirty down, eight thirty to go, drivers. Nick Reppin, your race leader, up and over the front, double double. Nelson Garcia back up into the number two spot. All right, so we are here with the electric truggy B man, Nick Reppin, out there in front. Nelson Garcia, Corey McEwen, Dominic Aleprando. <laughs> and there we are. <laughs> I'm laughing at Mr. Civically Minded's comment. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, Jones is running Associated for those out there. There we are with Nick Reppin. <clears throat> He's looking to bump up. He's starting in the seven position. Big mover right. A trotter from 15th to 9th. Nick Reppin from Nelson Garcia. Nick Reppin coming by, just running on a 37-2. Nelson 6.9 seconds behind him. This is Nelson and Corey McEven here battling out. Lefty literally talks 65 seconds in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, no, we see one E. Truggy retiring early. I believe this is Nelson Garcia right here we're following. You'll see when he come out. That might be Corey, actually. Okay, so we are on board with Corey McLeaven from Myrtle Beach. 
big E truggy, E buggy racer. Loves that class. Always racing at Beach RC. As you see, Nelson gaining his composure in that white and green car in the back. But this is all for Nick Reppin. He has pulled out a massive lead of 7.2 seconds last time by. Nick Reppin coming by. Let's see what that gap is when he comes by this time. 8.5. Calvin Bruce now in that third position. He is 1.7 behind Corey. There we see Calvin Bruce in that all-white car. So I thought that was uh, Nelson. So Calvin Bruce looks like he's driving an associated e truckie. He's looking to chase down Corey. And get into that bump position. Whoa-ho! Man, these e truggies are so powerful. So powerful. Right now, this is your battle. This is Dominic Aleprando, Nelson Garcia, and David Sawyer. Oh, and they get it wrong there. That's Aleprando in that purplish car truck, I believe, as Danny has his picture up. Let's see as they go by. David Sawyer is not a friend. Dominic, Dominic Aleprando is right behind him. Let's see, we have the battle for a second here as Corey McEwen goes by. That's dropped on to less than a second. So this is the battle for the bump spot. Let's let's stay on this. Let's We'll watch this race to the end. We'll try and figure this out to somebody gets by. Corey McEwen now has the pressure on him. As we see Calvin Bruce right behind him. Oh, and he has a look at the inside and he gets him. He gets him. He did jump to the inside. Now Corey's going to have to fight back and get back up there. He has four minutes and 17 seconds. Can't leave that door open. Not at this level. These guys will take it by force. And Corey getting it wrong again. And that's going to allow Calvin Bruce to pull out to a bigger lead. Let's see what that lead is when they come by. It's up to 5.5 seconds. Three minutes, 58 seconds left to go. If you look at this gaggle of E-truckies coming through. There you got a good shot at how this track is developing. It is getting super gnarly out there. Rough, rough, rough. Rougher than the moon, or as rough as the moon. But these E-Truggies can handle it. As you can see, where the acceleration points and braking points for these Truggies is digging into that ground and making it super rough. A little bit warmer than it was yesterday. It was <clears throat> lots of cloud cover. So it kept the track nice and cool. And there we are on board with Calvin Bruce and that white truggy. That is not for position in front of him. So Calvin with three minutes, 12 seconds left to go. He has a very good lead over third place. He just wants to keep it calm, keep it on all fours, and bring it home and live to bump up to that A main for night uh, for E truggy. There will be double A mains for all electric today. So, Calvin Bruce in that white car. Let's drop back and catch up with uh, that battle for third, fourth, and third and fourth, if we can. Because Calvin's kind of out there on his own. And there we go. Our cameraman is on it. There's Ryder Trotter. Let's see when they come around. There's Dominic Aleprando. He's currently in third. There's David Soar in fourth. So these two are battling for third and fourth position. Looking to capitalize on any mistake by Calvin Bruce. We have seen these e truggies A few of them fail to finish the races. Thank you. 
All right, we have one minute and 18 seconds left to go. Nick Reppin out there. Nobody challenging him at the moment. He's got a nine-second lead over, sorry, he has a nine-second lead over Calvin Bruce. Calvin Bruce is 18.8 .8 seconds up on third, so these guys are looking to bring it home and have a good start in the Double A mains coming up later on today. That's right. All electric classes will A mains will be double 10 minute A mains, just like motocross. Uh, Nick Reppin with 41 seconds. Just taking it easy through there. There we are on board with Nick Reppin. Looks like he's running an associated. I think all these cars need to have brighter D blocks so we know which cars they are when they go. There we go. I vote for that. Now, come on, SRX. Let's make some red anodized D blocks. All right, 14 seconds left, and unless Calvin Bruce breaks, he should be bumping up. That is David Sawyer. He's trying to catch up Alaprando. Oh, no, he's gotten past Alaprando. Let's go out and have a word with our two bumper uppers. Reppin going to take the race win and bump up into the double A main show. The battle for the lead rages down the straightaway heading into the chicane. We're following it live. And here comes the battle for second down the straightaway. It's going to be a three-way battle coming up on Little Bump and Justin Fails, Lutz, Westergaard, and Fend. That's the battle to watch as they're coming down the step down. Rossiter right there with the best lap of the entire race. 30.3 for Rossiter, up to second. See that? Two, one. All right, straightaway's closed, guys. Straightaway's closed. No, they're in this heat. I apologize. They're in this heat. They're running back to back. All right, everybody is checked in. Uh, I believe I got a marshal right there on the infield bat double. Oh, they're just chit chatting. Okay. Dominic, is somebody over there on that bucket with you? All righty, so I'm standing over to get an interview, and they're in this race. Can't interview them while they're racing. Lee General Jones is running a Mugen this weekend. <clears throat> All right, this is Intermediate Electric E-Buggy B-Man. Electric Buggy. 
Do I need to call it electric e-buggy? Just call it e-buggy or electric buggy. Race 35 of 53. DJ Hepler and Poe, Wade Pickett, Calvin Bruce, Smiley Hand, Braden Bruce. Brendan Bartlett, David Carmandy, Ethan McManus, Dylan Bartlett, Matt Maddie Long. Bella Rogers, Nico, Nico Parr, JP Sands, Bo Zarin, Nick Reppin, Shelby Parker, and Grant Walker. They're off. Woohoo! E buggy paying the bills here. That's a pretty, was almost a pretty clean start. A little bit of carnage, but not too much. As you see, DJ still holding on. As you can see, that crater, that is an absolute crater right there. But DJ wheeling around it, getting there on that s wax power car. I'm assuming that's Wade Pickett behind him. DJ making the switch over to s wax from Techno. DJ Wade Pickett. Let's see where Calvin Bruce is. Smiley Hand, Brendan Bartlett, Dylan Bartlett. Calvin Bruce in fifth. Braden Bruce. I wonder if Calvin Bruce and Bra yeah, they are related, I believe. <coughs> Father and son. But right now we are on board with the blue and white car of DJ Hepler. Right behind him is the gray, uh, black, and orange car of Wade Pickett. Pickett. And DJ and Wade have pulled away from the rest of the pack as it is Smiley Hand behind them. I think Smiley had an accident. Let's see when they come across the line right now. So it's Brendan Bartlett, Smiley Hand, Calvin Bruce, Braden Bruce, Dylan Bartlett, David Carmandy, Nico Power. Moving up from the 12th to the 9th. Lee Chandler says, I'm Tyler's newest, biggest fan. Well, he runs whatever he wants, Lee Chandler, and he unfortunately has not made uh, a main yet. But DJ making a mistake and Wade getting by. No, DJ getting by Wade as well. As they go up and down around the rollers, navigating that 180. These two don't need to get in each other's way. They have seven minutes, 54 seconds left to go. They just need to keep calm. And they have a very big lead over Brandon Bartlett. But we can see is that Brandon, he is pushing. He's that orange and yellow car, red reddish car, making the trip from Sasquatch land of Montana. He <laughs> says White Claw huggling in the house. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Can I cast says look at that mug? It does some of these pictures do look like mug shots. Especially DJ Haplers. DJ out there in front. As you can see from this view, you can see how rough this track is getting. Wade getting it wrong in the minefield. And let's see. That's gonna he's gonna lose a lot of ground to DJ. And that is, I would assume, that's not Brendan behind him. Let's see when they come around. That's Calvin Bruce. Calvin Bruce, look at the bump up as well. He just bumped up an e-truggy. Can he get the bump in E buggy? It's Hepler. From Pigott, Bruce, Bartlett, Smiley Hand, Dylan Bartlett, Nico Parag, David Carmandy, JP Signs, and Bo Cern, your top 10. Calvin Bruce making a mistake and dropping down to fifth. It's Hepler, Pigott, Bartlett, Hen, Bruce, Parag, Bartlett, Carmandy, Signs, and Bo Cern, your top 10. DJ Hepler has a 2.4 second lead over Pigott. Brandon Bartlett is 3.6 back of Pigott. There you see Bartlett right there. Oh, and there you see. Way doing a wheelie. He hit a bump and that e buggy decided to power out of there. Fourth and 
over to Bartlett. As he is now 2.6 seconds behind Wade. DJ right there. Oof, look at that crater. That is humongous. It's getting deeper there. There you see Wade in that orange and black car. Let's see where Bartlett is on the track. Wade is 3.6 behind Hepler. We have four minutes and 45 seconds left to go. DJ Hepler, Wade Pickett, Brendan Bartlett. Brendan now dropping that gap down to 2.2. Wade's about to have a whole bunch of trouble here. DJ Gurton through that big rivet, that big divot. We got Dean Sexton in the house, in the basement. Double, double, <laughs> trip, double, triple, double. I love this. That's from his song. This will be my, out, my, my new outro, outro song, actually. Hopefully we get Dino to make a cool NNRC intro song. Maybe some funny stuff about JQ. He's known JQ for many, many, many years. A DJ Hepler out there. On cruise control. He's have a guy named Chris Cruz. He said, oh, but no, no, not on cruise control. That's what I say that. <laughs> and those guys have company. Just when we thought things were going to be a little bit boring, we now have a three-way battle for first because there comes Brandon Bartlett, Sasquatch country. Wappa, 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 wappa. Um, I don't think a Sasquatch would make that type of noise, but anyway, I just thought it would f be funny. And there we have Donnie B cheering on Danny Hepler. There we see DJ in that mugshot. And now the battle is between Wade Pickett Let's follow that second place battle right there after this blue car of DJ Hepler. We got Heat Wave Hugnan in the house. Let's go Miller time. I'm not sure who he's rooting on. Miller Freud's not running. He's already made it to the A main, I believe. Oh boy, this is a drag race down the, down the back stretch as we see Wade Pickett trying to hold off the hard charge of the Bartlett from Montana and that one army HB. And we see James Kincaid cheering, cheering on Wade. We got Donald Talbert cheering in, tuning in from Alaska. What's up, Donald? And Wade Pickett. He now let's see what that gap is when they come across the line. Is that DJ? Yep, that's DJ. That's Wade. That's Brendan. Brendan is 1.7 seconds back. Wade is 0.8 seconds, 8 tenths of a second back from DJ. So DJ getting it wrong at some point. Wade trying to capitalize. He wants to put DJ in between him and Bartlett. There we see Bartlett flying down the back straight, going wide around that space divot. Hello, Guru Kundo from India, Kundu. Is that a shiitake mushroom? <laughs> DJ, Wade Piggott. They are extremely close on the track. And coming is Brendan Bartley as DJ is going to try to play defense. And that's just going to play into, into Bartlett's hands as we see Wade flying over that jump. Look at that. Big giant hill. It's got multiple levels, not just one. Ooh. One accident from any of these guys, and Brendan Bartlett will be in position to take advantage of that 
accident and a bump spot. Thank you, my son, for bringing me a Dr. Pepper. Next time, do it with more energy. As I need a little bit of cold drink to wet the whistle and massage the vocal cords. And we have a great battle between DJ and Wade. Uh-oh. Don't get it wrong. Five seconds left to go. Wade gets by. Any mistake now. And Brendan will be there. Did Brendan come? Oh, no. We ha this is going to go down to the wire. It's going to go down to the wire. Brendan pushing. DJ pushing. Oh, boy. No. Oh. Wow. That was a good race at the end. Very good race at the end. Let's go over and talk to DJ Hepler. The battle for the lead rages down the straightaway, heading into the chicane. We're following it live. And here comes the battle for second down the straightaway. It's gonna be a three-way battle coming up on Little Bump and Justin Fails, Lutz, Westergaard, and Fend. That's the battle to watch as they're coming down the Come here, Ray, I think he just won his race and bumps up to the next man. How you feeling, man? You're gonna do some double A-mans here coming up shortly. Oh uh, yeah, my car was great. I had a lot of fun. Just like to thank my parents and my sp all my sponsors that helped me out, and just ready for the names. Where are you from? Uh, Parksburg, West Virginia. Okay, so we got a West Virginia guy in the house. How are you enjoying your wicked weekend? Oh, it's great. I love it. Good stuff, man. Congratulations, and we look forward to seeing what you do in your A-mans, man. Good job. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's see. Let's get uh, Nick repping. Uh, let's get Calvin Bruce. You, you finished second, right? Calvin, Calvin come over here, Calvin. <laughs> Calvin from Arkansas. Arkansas, that's right. That's right. Uh, you bumped up there in the e truggy man. You guys was calling you over interviews, but you guys had to race. Uh, you, it was calling you for interviews, but you, you had to race. So uh, tell us about your weekend. weekend. I think you're here with your son. Uh, yes, sir. My son. He just he just ran. Um, it's both having a good time. Yeah. Running J Concepts tires. They're getting it figured out. Blues is definitely where it's at. In case anybody don't know. Um, yeah. All right, good luck to you in your uh, e truck man. How's your son making out? Uh, his weekend's over, unfortunately. He just, too many crashes. Well, that's the story of his weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to you, man. Thank you for coming to join us at Vicky Weekend, and good luck to you in your, your A finals. All right, thank you very much. All right, come on, Nick Reppin. He's going to get you, DJ. Hey, how's it going? What's up? You up in this race, DJ? Uh, Nick Reppin, congratulations, you bump out of uh, e Truggy. Yep. Uh, you getting ready for your A final? Yeah, um, I just had to run back to back, and that was, you know, get real shaky and everything. You get tired, it's hot, and uh, yeah, but I'm getting ready for the A final. Um, I don't know if my battery's going to make it, because I thought I, that was the last one on it, so it's getting a little puffy. Hopefully it'll make it. We'll see. Hopefully it'll have a lipo fire. Well, yeah, good I don't think we'll do that, but. Yeah. All right, well, good luck to you, man, and good job. Thanks, Thanks Lefty. Come on, DJ. You got to get up there. Are you racing in this race? No, oh, okay. DJ, everybody's saying your picture on it, on the online looks like a mugshot. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I take bad pictures. Uh, DJ, you've been racing for how long now? How many years have you been racing? Uh, 14 years, maybe. Yeah. I took four off, but yeah. Yeah, you are a stalwart here in the Southeast. You're racing against a lot of people that you raced against for many, many years. A lot of new talent coming up. Uh, good job on your bump up to the B-man there. Are you going to make any, different, uh, any preparations for your A? Uh, no, not really. Drive better. Yeah, you switched recently. Switch over to S Wax. How's the S Wax cars working for you? They're good. They're good. Yeah, yeah. I like them. My Techno's good too. Yeah. I just, you know, I'm old. Time for a change. Well, good job, man, and good luck in your next final. All right, appreciate it. That's DJ Hepler, and we're gonna get back to the action. We got some glory. Uh, we got some e buggy action going on. I'm gonna get back, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit.
All righty, we are back for the Sportsman Electric. Buggy B-Man and Johnson Wynn, who has been the bump master today. Bumped four times in Nitro Buggy. He has had a plethora of race time, race uh, track time today. Let's hope that he can make it all count. As we have this Sportsman E-Buggy main starter, let's see where these guys all pan out. Oh, getting it wide, Rhonda. Let's see what the lo lineup looks like when they come by. Don Hovday, D Dawson Woodyard, Johnson Nguyen in, in third. Andrew Williams, Alex Esser. So we are on board with Don Hovday. Hovde. And that should be Dawson Woodward behind him. And my boy, Blondie Win, Johnson Win right there in third. The bump master. And there we go. Win going to take over that second spot. He's looking to bump again. Man, you can see just how rough this track is getting from this camera view. And I got a little break. I'm going to take a little walk out there because, man, it is rough, 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 rough out there. But that's how we like it. We like it rough. This is off-road. And there is Don Hovde, Johnson Wynn, Raiden Murphy up to that third spot. He's point. He's half a second behind behind Wynn. Oh, and Raiden getting it up on a, a steep endo there, getting it under control, just accelerating. And he gets by Wynn. Wynn getting it wrong off that double. He's going to want to collect himself. And we see Murphy getting it wrong right there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They're all getting it wrong. Now, I think that was Wynn who just got by him. We'll see when he comes by. Blondie Wynn. Wolf then till he dies, he says. Just started racing last week. Last, sorry, last year at PMB. He had been racing for two months. And here he is at Wicked Weekend on the bump train. So, Johnson Wynn still in second, Raider Murphy's third, Dawson Woodward fourth, Alex Esser fifth, and Felipe Rodriguez sixth. All right, now, there we are, Don Hovde. And that orange and white car, he is a Georgia local racist on at Loganville, I'm told. Lots of Loganville racers here. Georgia racing seems to be very healthy here. Whoa, 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 whoa. These guys are flying all over the place in the minefield. The minefield causing a lot of problems, but I think Johnson has dropped back to fourth. Let's see. Yes, he has. He's dropped back. Let's see when he comes across the line. Yep, Johnson is back and forth. 2.4 seconds behind third. Uh, first has a 6.2 second. Oh, boy. Kimo and Salty together. Mm. All righty, then. There we are on board with Raiden Murphy. I like that name, Raiden, from Mortal Kombat. As he is bouncing on his car, looks great, too, with his uh, side dams. Gotta love the new fad in RC. Having colored side dams really sets your car apart. Really liking these metallic candy apple side dam colors that we're getting. And we see Raiden up there in that blue car, blue and green and yellow. What a beautiful car that is. I'd like to see that up close. I'm going to try and have a look. Hopefully, he brings it to the interview area when we have the interview. But where we have an up close in person with Don Hovde. He's looking to bump up to that A main. And Raiden is not that far from him, as Danny says. He's 1.8 seconds back. So six minutes to go. Don must have made a mistake because Raiden is right there. That's not Raiden. That's not Miller. It looks like Miller. Uh, it is Miller. I forgot that Miller was even in this race. Miller for the other bump master. I believe he started in the second to last E-buggy race, so let's follow this. He is right behind Raiden. Now, Raiden is in third. And there is first. I'm going to shoot. I'm, that is third and second right there. That pink car, I believe, is second. That's Andrew Williams. But Miller is flying. He is on a mission. As you see Miller coming through, he has had plenty of track time. Woo! Alex, I mean, Andrew Williams almost clipping him, guarding that. 
Guarding that inside line, we have people cheering for Miller there. Miller has five minutes. He is absolutely flying. He is on it. I'm pretty sure it's just a matter of time and he gets by Andrew and sets his sights on Don. So, oh, and there we go, and there we go, Raiden and Miller. I think Miller started in the last main of the day. I think he broke in both Q's qualifiers. Kyle says Don used to run Mayako and he is now on Techno. He's been on rails, so that's good. Don Hovde, but he has a, he has a, there we go, as Miller is right there. Miller is now in third, Don Hovde is in second, and he is about to have a rear view mirror full of young Miller Freud, the Floridian, driving that x-ray car, and there is Raiden right next to him, so Raiden is tagging along, as you see that traffic pulling over, good job right there, and as Raiden, and Don Hovde leaves the door open, and Miller will get by. Miller is flying. Miller is looking to bump up into that A man. He has been driving all day. I think he started driving last night, to be honest. So he is looking to pay some bills with his E buggy. I think he's already in the Nitro A buggy. And Miller just first on A37.9. He is flying. Don Hovde still holding on to second with Raiden right behind him. He is just under a second back. Miller up there and over the doubles, flying in that yellow and red, yellow wheels. I really like his wheels. And Claire Miller, true form wing. As Pete says, Miller time. Don getting it wrong off that jump. He has Raiden right there. Raiden giving a little bump. This is the battle for the final bump up spot. As we see Raiden in that blue car. Don going wide. Raiden able to. Ooh, Raiden just turns right into that pipe. And we see Don Hovde just about to come around. And Don is straight away. He now the gap is two seconds. Between him and now, Dawson Woodward is actually up to... Oh, so Raiden actually made a couple mistakes because now we're seeing Dawson Woodward in that third position, but none of these guys are going to match Miller. Miller's been bumping since last night. He's going to continue to bump. Uh-oh. And the way he's driving, he might just do well in the A-man, too. Let's go. Miller. Miller time, says. We got Kang Goff cheering him on as well as Pete. I don't know who Pete is. It's just Pete with no last name. And there you see young Miller Freud. And Don Hovde, he has a bunch of, that's not Don, sorry, that's Miller. But Don, stretching out a little bit of a lead. He's got 4.3 seconds now in between him and Raiden. So Don looking comfortable out there of 1 minute 23 seconds left. But can't make any mistakes. There's Don, there's Raiden. Don just keeping it smooth through that rough section. Going wide, out in that fluff. Johnson win. With one minute left. Does not look like he's going to bump up into the Sportsman E buggy A final, but that's fine. He, uh, he, he had a lot of track time today. And he is going to be in that Sportsman Nitro buggy, man, where he bumped up at least four times. Cam says, I think I'm in a hot and heavy points battle with this kid. It's pretty nerve-wracking. Yeah, he's good. He's definitely good. All right, now we are on board with Miller Freud, who has played the bump game. He's looking fast. He's looking comfortable. 
He is going to be in this A final. And Don Hovday, if he keeps it on all fours, he will be as well. As they are going to race to the line. And Miller will take the win. Let's find out how many times Miller has bumped when I go interview him today. I think Miller might have bumped more than Johnson. Kyle, I think he did. Let's go find out. Danny, don't forget to mute me, good buddy. Techno RC. Techno RC is a championship winning manufacturer of high performance A scale, TED scale, nitro, and electric RC buggies and trucks. With a worldwide dealer network, USA and Europe based headquarters, comprehensive warranty program, and global race support, Techno RC is excellence in RC. View the full lineup of Techno RC race proven vehicles by visiting www.technorc.com. Bump man, he has bumped five times today in E buggy. We had a really bad qualifying then. Yeah, in Q1 we got a rock in our drivetrain and shipped a spur, and then in Q2 our sensor cable came unplugged. And then Q3 we had a good run. Well, hey, you've got plenty of track time today. You also in the nitro buggy A man as well? Yeah, second. <laughs> so, um, what have you learned over this track over the day? You started racing man last night? Uh, sorry, what? When did you start racing last night? Uh, Thursday. Right. No, I mean on your main. Oh, yeah, last night. All right, so the track has definitely changed for you quite a bit. Yeah, it's gotten rough, pretty rough. Well, good luck in your double A mans, man. You're looking faster there. Got plenty of track time, and good luck in your nitro man as well. Thank you. All right, this Miller Floyd is from Florida. I don't know where Don Hovde is, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get back to talking. And Teddy's not gonna photobomb me right now. Ah! Fifteen seconds to the start of the race. Five. Less than five, four, three, two, one. Going home, okay? All right, guys, one more lap, one more lap. Let's line them up, line them up, line them up. Brandon Melton going to line up on All righty, so we are in the first part of our, our A mains. First up is the 4D Plus Nitro Buggy A Main. This is for the old timers. This is the class I'd be racing. What's up, Bo? 
You must be Connor Rebus. Because I just see our gaggle of young racers coming in and going up to talk to her. Right, so Brandon Melton. DJ Hepler, Donald Elder, Elliot, Brent Talkie, Gene Hickerson, Chris Pace, Philo, Philo Hatch, Bobby Smith, Weston Wilson, Mark Moon, Ken Rand, Marlo Bright, Randy Anger, Alan Abbas, Luis Perez, and Curtis, Curtis Crum, Crumbs. There we go. Get ready to start. And they're off. Let's see what's going to happen here. This is the first of our many Nitro mains. This is race 37 of 53. It is 2.30 p.m. EST. And we see Brandon Melton getting out to that lead. 30 minutes of race time here for Brandon Melton. He has DJ Hepler right behind him and behind him. Oh, and he gets it up on two wheels. Don Elliott in that N1 right behind them. Oh, oh Don Elliott squeaking by. And <laughs> Don Elliott's going to come out the leader. Of all of that, as we got an up close and personal look at that Agama N1 as it sweeps through those points, Don Elliott is a star with her. He races every, every weekend, Eddie Can and Don Elliott. 39 1, followed by Brendan Melton, Philo Hatch, Chris Pace, Weston Wilson, DJ Hepler dropping all the way down to sixth. Uh oh. Uh-oh, who was that? Was that Don Elliott getting it wrong or Brandon Melton? I think that was Melton. That was Melton. And there is Don Elliott. He is out to a commanding lead right off the bat. Let's see what it is when he comes back. Comes by 3.6 seconds to Brandon Melton. Chris Pace right there. So Chris Pace and Brandon Melton, both associated guys, been racing each other for many years, as well as Don Elliott. Philo Hatch from Texas, up there in that fourth spot. DJ Hepler, Curtis Combs of Crumbs of Peach State Hobbies. Ken Rand, Gene Hickerson, Randy Ecker, Anger, Marlowe Brighter, your top 10. Don Elliott representing the Nemo USA Agama team with that N. Ooh, somebody getting it wrong over there. Well, right now, we are following that battle for second with Chris Pace in second with that yellow and blue car and Brandon Mountain, the team manager here in the Southeast, that white and pink car. Alrighty, so Don Elliott got a 4.2 second left, but lots of time left to go in this race with 27 minutes, 30 seconds left to go. Two minutes, 30 seconds down here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. We're starting to see people leave, starting to see things thin out. This is the, oh, the great day because it's the finals day, but it's also the sad day because everybody starts to leave the race. <clears throat> and we always like, we never like to see that happen, but you know, everybody has to go back to work and we will see them at the next race. As we see Ryder Trotter coming in here, giving me the evil eye. And we'll go around. There we have Chris Pace right behind his team manager and his friend, Brandon Melton. As these guys have been racing for many, many years together. And this is the 40-plus Nitro Buggy class here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend record entry. 666, 332 people looking at these cool trophies down here. Very nice trophies this first place winner is going to go here with a nice metal heavy metal trophy and uh dave spared no expense with the trophies here looking very good as we see brandon melton out there in second but don elliott just pulling away now he has a six second lead and melton getting it wrong through that through that minefield There we are on Don Elliott. He is now stretched out to seven seconds in that uh, Agama N1. He's starting to, he is starting to lap people already. That's probably Randy Enger or Weston Wilson. Or Weston Wilson seems to be off the track. 
And there we are along with Don Elliott. This man is a racing machine. Any given weekend, he is racing somewhere in the southeast. I've seen him travel up to the Rock to race. Uh, Don Elliott rocking that Agama. He's been Agama for many, many years as well. So now he's running that N1. Hope you guys are enjoying the coverage out there in the YouTube and Facebook Olandia. Hit that, so that like. Like Bob says, smash that like button. Hit that sub button. Leave a comment and please share this. Let's let this go viral. Let's get this RC racing out to the public so they can see what we do. You see Chris Pace just rolling it over right now. I believe that's Chris Pace. No, sorry. Oh, man, that car has actually not got a tire. So, But Don Elliott in the groove with that Agama N1. He's lapping guys right now. He has a 6.5 second lead on Brandon Melton. We got a good shot of Don Elliott right there by our cameraman Gene Shrout Jr. Good to have Gene on board. He's... uh. Just taking up the camera for the first time. And, of course, we have Travis Melton. No relation to Brandon Melton. On the other side of the driver's hand, he's been great to have him here as well as he is an excellent cameraman and knows what he's doing. Knows all these races by hard. Alrighty, we are still on camera of Don. Let's see, he should be coming in for fuel soon. We're gonna see if we can get a good video, a good picture of this fuel. Yes, Don is a famed wolf driver as well. Susan Sims cheering on Donny. Uh, yep, I believe that's Don Elliott. Let's see if he's coming in. Yeah, nope. Brandon Melton inherits that lead as Don has come in for fuel. We're on board with Brandon Melton right now. He'll be coming in for fuel shortly as well. Let's see if Melton comes in for fuel now. That he does. So Melton coming in for fuel. Here's his son, Travis. Doing the fueling duties for him. There we see Jeremy Talent fueling up Chris Pace. Brandon Melton, Chris Pace, Don Elliott. Let's see where Don Elliott shakes out here. There's Don Elliott back in first. And Brandon Melton behind him. Don Elliott got Brandon Melton right now. This is the battle for first place after the fuel stops. Don coming in one lap earlier than these guys. There's Don Elliott. Now he has Brandon Melton right behind him, Chris Pace behind him. Philo Hatch in fourth, but he's not in this mix. As you see, Dirty Don out there keeping it smooth, going around the, going on the inside of that crater. The RC Offroad Racing cheering on Don. Don is a stalwart in the racing community here in the Star West. And Brandon Melton gets on the inside as Don leaves that door open and Brandon takes it. 20 minutes, 57 seconds left to go. Lots of racing left to go in this. 40 plus Nitro Buggy A main here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. Don now chasing down Brandon. Let's see if Don can keep him in sights. And Don gets a little bit squarely right there. 
Chris Pace embroiled in a battle with some lap traffic, it looks like. But Don, Brandon Melton getting by. And there we see. Don just keeping it smooth. Chris Pace getting by that lap traffic. Now he sets his sight on Don and his longtime friend and team manager, Brandon Melton. Don out there in that Agama N1 with those laid down shocks. Been running that car for a few months now. Him and Will McIver over here in America. And we are on board there with Don Elliott. And there we see Brandon Melton keeping it tied up around. You can see that big hole that's developing that off camber uh, hump there. And Chris Pace must have crashed because he's now lost some time to these guys. Don Elliott coming in for fuel. Don coming in for fuel at the 19 minute mark, I believe. Looked like it anyway. We're trying to find a battle here on the track. We just saw Don Elliott come in for fuel. DJ Hepler has moved up. Actually, if we drop back to DJ Hepler, he and Marlowe, right, are having a battle. Two best friends. Having a battle on the track. So let's find that blue car of Hepler and Marlowe Bright while we let Don Elliott chase Don Brandon Melton. So DJ and Marlowe are now coming over. We are on board with Melton. Melton might be coming in for fuel shortly. I don't think so. All right. If we go on the, on the Danny wants us to follow the first place driver. Okay, let's find Hepler then, if we can. Uh, Travis, Hepler in that blue car. He should be coming up around that double. Can we follow Hepler there, please, Travis? That's the closest battle there. DJ Hepler and Marlo Bright. DJ coming onto the straightaway now. If you want to get him there, he should be coming. There we go. There's DJ. Marlowe was right behind him, but looks like he's made some mistakes. But now, Don, six seconds back of Brandon Melton, 17 minutes, 23 seconds left to go. We are on board with fourth place driver DJ Hepler. Ken Rand right behind him. There's Ken Rand right behind Hepler. All these guys have been racing each other for many, many years. But Brandon Melton is comfortably out to a lead. Don Elliott trying to chase him down. I believe Don had to come in the pits or made a mistake and had a long lap at some point. But Hepler. Now losing out. Ken Rand is around him. Hepler must have come in for fuel while I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, must have. He's got a 45-2, so Hepler came in for fuel. And that's allowed Ken Rand and those guys to go by him. So I'm sure that Ken Rand and Philo Hatch are coming in for fuel at some point soon here too as well. There's Ken Ran. There's Ken Ran and Hepler sights now. So Hepler chasing down Ken Ran again. Philo Hatch coming for fuel. He had a 42 7. As we are on board, Philo is right behind Hepler. This is the battle for fifth. There is Hepler. I mean, there is Philo and that green and purple. Fluorescent yellow. Uh-oh. Who is this? 
That's Carlos Sigi. Who is he? That must be Luis Perez. Vale, vale. Chris Pace is 8.2 seconds back of Don Elliott. Don Elliott, 7.6 seconds back of Brandon Melton. Right now, the closest battle we have rolling right now is DJ Hepler and Philo Hatch. DJ trying to catch Van Ran, who's just in front of him. There you see Philo right behind Hepler. Hepler coming in for fuel, it looks like. Rand, co Rand coming in for fuel, so let's see. Did Hepler come in as well? Or did he stay out? There's Hepler, Katie pitting Hepler. And that looks like Brandon Melton coming out as well. Or maybe Brandon Held Hepler coming in for fuel. There's Don Elliott coming in for fuel as well. And there is Chris Pace. Well, that was an excellent fuel stop, actually. But Hepler now out. He has Chris Pace behind him. Nope, that's not Chris Pace, sorry. But he has Ken Rand in his sights right there in front of him. And he's chasing him down. There is DJ Hepler and Philo Hatch. Hepler coming by the line. Philo coming by the line. This is the battle for six. Let's find the, there we are. There is actually first, because I believe uh, that that is Brandon Melton coming around to put Hepler a lap down. Yes, that is Melton and that associated. So now he's lapped up to fifth. Don, and let's see if we can find Don Elliott. And that Agama N1. There is Melton. Let's find uh, Don Elliott. He just he looked like he just came out of the pits. Or just coming on the straightaway, sorry. He's in second. Pink and white car. There he is. Oh, where is Don? Oh, that's not him right there. Don should be going over the doubles. He's getting ready to come down the straightaway, I would say, pretty soon. There's Don. And that N1, he's trying to make off some time. He's 10 seconds back of Brandon Mountain. Who's that being walked off the track? 11 minutes, 53 seconds left to go. So your running orders, Brandon Melton, Don Elliott, Chris Pace, DJ Hepler, Ken Rand, Philo Hatch, your top six. DJ trying to chase down Chris Pace. Brandon Melton is out there on rails. And that associated car, he has a 10-second lead up on Don Elliott as we are in place with Don Elliott right now. As we can see, Melton right there going down the... The minefield as he gets ready to go on the straightaway. And he powers down there. Full chat getting on the binders as he makes that right hand 90 degree turn. DJ and Philo having a vicious battle between fourth and fifth right there in the back. They're just coming on the straightaway as well. But we're going to stick on Don Elliott for a little bit. 
Let you all have a look at that. That uh, a Gama N1. Derek, where are you two? Did you go home, Derek? Or are you still here? He is looking good at the N1. Donnie B. Uh-oh. Melton. Is that Melton? Yep. Melton getting it wrong. Coming onto the straightaway. Don't want to make those mistakes. This can break a car. Cost you time. And we have 10 minutes left in this Nitro Buggy main. 40 plus Nitro Buggy A main. Anything can happen. We have 10 minutes left to go. So... Oh, we have some pit stops. That is. That's Alan Abbas. And Don Elliott. Gunning it down. And we are on board with. Don Elliott and that N1. That horizontal, uh-oh, Brandon Melton getting it wrong again. That is just going to, he must have hit that big hole right there. Let's see what the gap is when he comes by. He had a big gap on Don Elliott. That's dropped down to 6.3 seconds, so Don is chipping away at that gap. As we see Don Elliott coming through in that N1. Up and over. That looks like Ken Rand might have flamed out. Yep. Brandon Melton coming by. That gap now is down to 3.9 seconds, so Don Elliott is in position. Uh-oh. Who was that? No, it was Oh, Melton's right there. Okay, I thought that was Melton that flamed out just now. But Donald Elliott trying to catch up to Brandon Melton. There we are on board with Brandon Melton right now. Uh, no, who's that? That's somebody else that's flamed out, had some issues. But Don Elliott right now. 3.9 seconds according to scoring behind Brandon Melton. We see Brandon Melton get ready to come on the straightaway. Let's see what the gap is now. Don Elliott making some mistakes and it's going to be a little bit further. It's dropped down to 5.6. Not unattainable. We can now see Don Elliott in the same frame coming around those corners as Brandon Melton. If he makes any more mistakes, Don Elliott. Oh, and that's as I say that Brandon Melton makes a mistake. And he gets back, and there is Don Elliott. We have a race on our hands. I told you anything can happen with 7 minutes and 50 seconds left to go. Don Elliott slowly catching up Brandon Melton as they come around that corner. We can see that's lap traffic in between them. There we see Don coming over the double. What's the gap? Brandon Melton coming off of fuel. Let's stay on Brandon. Let's stay on Brandon. Let's stay on Brandon. We see Dirty Don coming in for fuel as well. Nope. Nope. Sorry. That was Hepler. Katie calling in Hepler. Let's, uh, it looks like Don came out. He was having for a few as well. There's Don. So right now, they are very close on the track. We have 7 minutes and 21 seconds left to go. There's Brandon Melton. He came out of the pits. And there is Don. Let's see if Don. Don's right there. Come on, Don. You can do it. Represent a Gama Nation. Uh-oh. We have another retirement. Somebody's associated is out. But Don Elliott chasing down Brandon Melton. We should see Don coming. There it is, Don. This is the battle for first. Brandon had a huge lead over Don, but Don was able to chip away from after Brandon made some mistakes. So we have Don Elliott chasing down the associated of Brandon Melton. These guys have raced against each other for many, many years here in the Southeast. We see the conventional associated suspension versus the Agama N1 new horizontal suspension. Woo! I thought Dirty Don was going to clip that turn, Marshall. But right now... Brandon just pulling out slightly in front of Don. One more mistake by Brandon, and Don will catch up with him. But Brandon tiptoeing through that minefield, keeping it smooth at the double doubles. Up and over. Getting on the binders just in time. Let's see. There's Don right there. Let's see what the gap is when they come by. It is now down to 3.3 seconds. So Don making up some time. He has six minutes left to go. I don't think they have to pit again. So that's always good. We're going to see these guys race to the end as we are on board with Brandon Melton. He's trying to make some space between him and Don. Let's see. There's Don. That's not much space. He's lost time. One little mistake, and that is it. And Don will pounce like a jaguar on a crocodile. 
Brandon Melton going around the corner, getting ready to gun it down the straightaway. He gets a little bit fishtail around there. Where's Don? Don coming by. He is now three seconds flat behind. He making up. He is making up some time. Don wants this win. He wants to win the Wicked Weekend 40 plus Nitro class. If it's a Gamma N1, I think this will be his first big win with that car if he can do it. Brandon Mountain wants to show that Associate is still the dominant car here in the Southeast as we watch him go by, getting by some black traffic. And Dar Don, there is Don. Oh, Don makes a mistake, but he gets marshaled. Don just makes a slight mistake, and that's going to cost him some time. Oh, no, Don making a mistake. And let's see, he is not in shot, so he has made another mistake. Oh, no, what happened to Don? Where is Don? Oh no, did Dawn flame out? Oh no, that was just a really long lap for Dawn. He is now 9.8 9 seconds back. Brandon Melton getting a lucky flip from Dawn. Let's see, there's Dawn hammering down the back straight. Hammering down the back straight, trying to make up some time after that mistake. There's Brandon Melton. He's just keeping it smooth. Lap was the gap was 9.8 seconds last time by. Let's see what it is when he comes by now. Don having another bad lap. It's down to 11.2 seconds. And there is Brandon Melton. Three minutes, 55 seconds left to go. This is Nitro Racing, though. Anything can happen. You can lead this right up into the end, and you can flame out with 30 seconds left to go. But right now, we are seeing Don Elliott trying to put the hammer down, but he, he bridged that gap all the way up to three seconds, but made that one mistake, and it has cost him immensely. As you see, Don Elliott. The Southeast Stalwart. Let's see what the gap is now. It's down to 10.4 seconds. He's making up time. He needs Brandon to make a mistake if he wants to capitalize and make a challenge. He had it, but he made that one mistake right there. He flipped over, and that allowed Brandon to get by. Let's see if this lap traffic will affect Brandon in any way as he tipped her through that minefield up and over the double. Lap traffic has been a problem all weekend. But Don Elliott's helping. They hold him up. Just enough so he can make up charge. Three minutes left to go. They don't need any fuel. What's the gap when they come by? Let's see. We got EKJ24000 filming me talking to you guys. Left tire salute. What's up, brother? How you doing? Don Elliott having another long lap. Another long lap for Don. 45-1. Oh, I think it's all over for Don. He's going to have to settle for second. With two minutes and 36 seconds left, he's going to have to hope that Chris pay uh, that... Brandon Melton has a failure, and we shall see how things go. My boy, Corey Jordan and her coming in her filming for his YouTube channel, EKJ24000, go check it out. Brandon Melton just coming across the line, and I just think that it's a little bit too late for Don. He made those mistakes late on in this race, and he's just... You know, yeah, 17.1 seconds back. One minute, 59 seconds. What he needs is uh, multiple accidents from Brandon or a failure from Brandon in order for this, for him to capitalize and win this. So Dawn making a valiant effort, but uh, just coming up short with those mistakes. But like I said, with one minute and 42 seconds left to go, anything can happen. I heard Lance getting excited. He can see what I can't. But Chris Pace and Philo Hatch having him. And Philo Hatch looks like he's gotten by Chris Pace. This is the battle right here for third and fourth. 
We see Chris Pace in that blue and yellow associated Philo hatch. Not sure what car he runs. So Chris Pace just getting by that lap traffic. Oh, oh, oh. So right Let's see what happens when they come by. There's Philo, I believe, in that yellow wing. Yellow tires. Nope. That's not that's not from the there's Chris Pace. He's got a two second lead. Over. From Philo Hatch, let's go have a talk with Brandon and Dawn. After that 30 minute Nitro Buggy A main. All right, we're here at Brandon Mountain, who just won the 40 plus Nitro Buggy Man. Uh, you had a little bit of a race there, Chris, at the beginning. Then with Don and later on, you made some mistakes. Uh, but a smooth race yeah. and leading and a good drive by you. Yeah, they're in the whoops. Me and DJ got together, no fault of anybody. It's just everybody's tiptoeing through there, get together, no big deal. And I just knew if I tried to get in the rhythm, keep it clean, I would catch those guys. I race with, race with Don a lot at home. so. I just felt like if I put in my laps and let the race play out, it would come to me and then, you know, I took the lead and really the mistakes I had were, I've done this long enough, I should know, but the mistakes I made were from trying to back it down mm. and protect the lead mm -hmm. versus just staying in that race pace. So, you know, you always say if you had to do it over again, you'd quit being cautious and just go for 30 minutes. But um, I just knew if I kept it running at that point and my son's always clutch on pit stops. So, I didn't think anything would happen in the pits and just got into a good mindset and ran laps. All right, well, congratulations. And um, we're going to let you go get over and get your nice big trophy and good job, man. Yeah, it's my third one of these. So right. I uh, took the original Pro Buggy in 2012 and then did 40 plus in, I think, two years ago. So I like adding these up. Congratulations, man. Right. Good job. Thank you. Brandon Melton there, he takes you in a 40 plus Nitro Buggy. He's going to run over there and get his trophy. And I'll see you guys back in the studio. Here comes champion. All right, here we go. Top five fastest here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. This is 40 and over Nitro Buggy taken. That number five spot is DJ Hepler! In the number four spot, Philo Hatch! Taking that number three spot, Chris Pace! 
In the number two spot, Mr. Donald Elliott. And your top qualifier and 2023 Wicked Weekend 40 and over champion, Mr. Brandon Melton. Good job, guys. Well done, long weekend, a lot of hard work putting it up there on the podium, good job. All right, Lance, take it away. All right, guys, let's quickly get our turn marshals out here, please. Turn marshals, come on out. Turn marshals to the front.
What's up? What's up, Ryan? Now Mason to Marshall. Mason to Marshall at the end of the front straightaway. Mason to Marshall at the end of the front straightaway. Louis Perez, where you at, buddy? Louis Perez. Louis Perez, got a turn marshal. Where you at, Louis Perez? Turn marshal. Curtis. Are you out there? Oh, I see him over there. Louis Perez, I need you to turn marshal. You're in the front straightaway. Louis Perez. All righty, everybody. Are you ready for 30 minutes of Sportsman Nitro Truggy A main action? This is race number 38 of 53. Here we see Lance Flowers, Mark Whitlow, Cooper Phillips, Dalton Kings, David Scott, Scott Anderson, Dan Taylor, Andy Gross, Ross. <laughs> Andy Gross, Adam Turrell, Justin Keynes, Mark Ress. What's up, Axel Owens? How you doing, good buddy? Cameron Tanner says he's checking in from Jamaica. Hope you're having fun there in Jamaica. As we get ready. <laughs> and they're off. 30 minutes of Nitro Truggy Sportsman A main action. And Mark Whitlow and Lance Flowers get out to a good start. I think that's Cooper Phillips behind them. I can't tell. Oh, no. We have the wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That was Mark who went upside down. Let's see when they come by. It is Lance Flowers. Oh no. Something's wrong with Lance Flowers. Okay, it did count. Lance Flowers, Scott Ellison, Mark Phillips, Cooper Phillips, and Andy Gross. You're a top five. On board with Lance Flowers, uh, Peach State Hobbies, Ogo, Ogo Tires. Those guys have been importing their tires, been testing quite a lot. Seem to be highly impressed with them. As we are rebooting our Facebook feed as it timed out. <laughs> How you doing, sir? Alrighty, so Lance Flowers out to, let's see what his lead is on Cooper Phillips. As Cooper Phillips is now in second, son of Chad Phillips on that HB Truggy. He has a 3.3 second lead in front of Cooper. As we are on board with Lance Flowers, as he comes down that back straight, you can see that big hole that has developed right there. Up and over the double. And around as they, uh-oh. Oh, and Lance getting it wrong as he tries to go too hot through that minefield. You know what happens when you go too hot through that minefield. It's going to blow you away as he goes up. And he uh, needs to get it just under control. And powering down that straightaway. There's Cooper right behind him, I assume. Yep, that is Cooper. 0.7. He's just 7 tenths of a second behind him. Uh-oh, and it goes from bad to worse for Lance. Uh-oh. Oh, no. No, he's waiting. That's what he's supposed to do because he uh, he waited because he actually cut the track. So good move by Lance, waiting for the uh, Cooper, even though he uh, flipped over to that side. What's up, Lucas Shasso? Have you, are you on the road, dude? Safe travels back to... I forget where he was from. Iowa? No, he can't be that far away. My geography is skewed. But there we are on board with Cooper Phillips in that white and orange HB. 
son of Chad Phillips. Constant, always chatting in our NNRC Discord. All right, well, safe travels to you, Lucas. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Safe travels back. Iowa it is. Woo, that's a long drive. And right now, Lance Flowers uh, is 5.6 seconds back of young Cooper Phillips. Scott Anderson in third. Mark Whitler in fourth. Mark West fifth. We're looking quite composed as he goes around and comes through the minefield. And that HB racing truggy. But right there we have Mark Whitlow, who is currently scored in fourth. I assume that's Mark West right there. All right, let's see who we are on board with now. As we come across the line at Dalton Keynes and Mark West in a heated battle for a sixth and fifth. As I'm trying to get our Facebook feed up and working here. What's up, Kevin Mendez? Toby Walker wants a shout out. Tim Smiley, Aaron Koss says, funny to see how many chassis sponsored drivers there are. And sportsmen fast enough to have a chassis ride, then you're fast enough for eating intermediate or pro, just my opinion. Well, I'm going to have an answer to that. Right now in RC, sponsorship does not represent skill level. That went away a long time ago. Just because you're sponsored doesn't mean you're sponsored because of skill. Right, BJ Williams, we got the first round of pit stops coming up here shortly. Cooper Phillips, we are on board with Cooper. Let's see how he does in his pit. He should be coming in soon, I would say. Let's stay on Cooper and follow his pit. He has a 4.1 second lead over Lance Flowers. Is he coming in now? Nope. Gonna stay out there again. Young Cooper. Uh oh, we have a flame out out there. 22 minutes, 25 seconds left to go. Derek, if you're coming over to see me at any time soon. I would appreciate something cold to drink. If you're still listening, Derek, I'm pretty sure Brent has something over there in the cooler. I'm a bit parched over here. So I would appreciate it. We got BJ. Most of these dudes don't have full rides, man. It's just like 10. Okay, yeah, all Nolan. I get that, Eric. I get that, man. Um... I, we talk about that constantly on the podcast, too, uh, how sponsorship is not representative of skill. Old school, back in that day, man, you had, to, you had to be asked to be sponsored. So you had to put in work to get sponsored. So now it's a little bit different. Um, we'll see if the manufacturers clean it up a bit as we see Cooper getting it wrong right there. 
Let's see. He should be coming in for a few. Yes, he is. Let's see who's pitting. There's Chad Phillips pitting his son. There's the coop. Rocking coop. Good, good pit stop. Boy, making sure he gets full up. Ethan Martinez, lefty. Who you have? Who you got winning each pro class? Come on, Ethan. I don't want to jinx the people. I don't want to jinx nobody. Oh, I, 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 I already thought about Mason, Phil, Mason Fuller winning, and look, he was in the B man. He had a bump out of that. So I jinx people even when I think about them winning. And Facebook is live again, guys. We have to restart the feed. So if you are watching on Facebook, it is live again. So I get you, Eric Haas. We are on board with young Cooper Phillips. He is now chasing down Lance Flowers. He has a 3.4 se second deficit to make up. Mark, uh-oh, uh-oh. Whoa, oh no, what a bad marshal by that marshal. That's that's all right. We saw the panic rev of every RC driver when they get marshaled like that. Looks like we're gonna have some drone footage, I think. Nope. Lance Flowers coming in for fuel. Let's see who's doing Lance Flowers. Pit stop. That's the GA Georgia crew, Peach State Hobbies Georgia crew. Lance Flowers coming out. He has a 12.6 second lead over Cooper after that pit stop. Let's see. Uh-oh, we have a flame out there. That is Leo Moreno in that Kyosho. And there's Mayfield pitting somebody. Not sure who Mayfield's pitting, but that's good of Mayfield to pit somebody. So if you guys were watching this on Facebook, it is live again. Had to restart the feed, but Lance Flowers coming in for that pit. Let's see where he shakes out after this. He is still in front of Cooper Phillips, but this is the race right here. That's Cooper Phillips and Lance Phillips right there. They are getting into some lap traffic with 18 minutes and 53 seconds left to go. There we see Lance Flowers in that gray and white and white wheel black wing associated. And there is Rockin' Coop right there in that orange and white HB. Cooper going wide, getting out in that fluff. Going nose high. He looks like he's... Oh, Cooper, you got to keep it on the control. Don't go so wide. And the gap is now to 1.4 seconds. These guys are racing for position. Hello, James. How are you from the UK? Good to see you tuned in. What part of the UK are you tuned in from? It's what, uh, 8.30 over there, 8.25 p.m. on the Sunday evening. Hope you had your Sunday dinner. Nice Yorkshire put in roasted beef and potatoes. Haven't had a good Sunday roast in a long time myself. Uh-oh. We see somebody getting it wrong, but that is not for position as we see Cooper there in that orange and white black winged HB trying to chase down Lance. Let's see where Lance is when they come across the gap. La oh, and La he has gotten across Lance Flowers. Lance Flowers experiencing an issue. And now that is a, uh-oh, I thought that was Cooper for a second. There's Lance behind her. He's having some sort of issues as Cooper has gotten by him. It's now a 5.1 second lead. Mark Whitlow has got Lance Flowers in his sights. He's 8.9 seconds back. He's looking to to catch up and get on that top step. We have 12, we have 17 minutes and 11 seconds left to go. Rocking coop there. Let's find a battle. There's no real close battles on the, on the track at the moment. Uh-oh. Rockin' Coop getting it wrong. Is he trying to throw it away? Come on, Cooper. And there is Lance Flowers. Now we have a battle. Lance Flowers coming through. This is the battle for first right here between Lance Flowers and Cooper Phillips. Associated versus HB. As they go up and over, Lance and that gray and white associated. And there we see the white and orange of Cooper Phillips. As they go through the minefield, Cooper taking a slightly wider line. Going up over, these guys will be nose to tail as they come around her. 
They are battling for position here. As we see, Cooper just keeping it smooth over their lands, not getting flustered. They have some lap traffic, traffic ahead of them. They have four tenths of a second in between them. Phenom going to win today. Had control problems last week, says Jeff Myers. Well, he's unfortunately not doing too well this weekend either, buddy. Seth Van Dalen's on rails. I'm not saying he's going to win, but he is definitely looking freaking awesome. We shall see. And Lance Flowers pulling off a slight gap on Cooper, but not too much. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Cooper going a little wide, going a little hot into there. Lance getting squarely on that there. On that, we see Brian Helmetak flaming out. Uh, going up the going up laps. Uh oh, it's all it's looked like it's done for Helmetag. Looks like he's got some steering issues or something's happened there. We see Tony Brown and Leonard looking at his car. Oh, there we go. He's back on. Leonard's <laughs> like, whoo! Glad that didn't happen. There we see one of the Mills Pond guys. He must be pitting. Not sure. There we are of Cooper. I think that's Lance Flowers just in front of him. These two are battling it out with 14 minutes, 56 seconds left to go. Lance coming across the line with 41-1. Cooper coming across with a 40 flat. They have one second in between them. It's closer to that on the track. This is Sportsman Nitro Truggy A main action. 14 minutes, 42 seconds left to go. There's Cooper Phillips right behind him. That white and orange HB truck chasing down that associated. We have the Northeast versus the Southeast. Georgia versus the New York Cooper or New, up in New Jersey, New York area. Uh-oh, Lance getting it wrong through the minefield, allowing Cooper to get by. And there we see the orange and white car. Uh-oh, Lance getting it wrong right there. That is going to, oh, ooh. that is going to give Cooper some breathing room as he goes on. I'm sure we're going to see some pit stop action coming up soon. Not sure, Josh Keith. You're gonna have to figure it out. We are. It should be coming up soon, actually, because they have the. Uh, oh no, we have a runaway there. Is that Lance? No, that's Brian Helmetak. He was having some radio issues earlier. Um, I don't think we'll have drone footage. I was asking Cooper. Maybe. I hope so. Oh no, going from bad for us for Leo Moreno. Uh, Josh Keith, you'll have to look it up. We are on pro. Uh, Sportsman Nitro Truggy, amen. So. Cooper getting it wrong over there, allowing Lance Flowers to get by. This, these guys have been battling. And though they're at the end of the, end of the straightaway. Got you, Herman. Thank you. Nelson Garcia, Mills Pond. The guys down there keeping the track in order. Lance Flowers out front, but he's not out front when he comes around this lap. If we see Cooper, these guys have been going back and forth the entire time. 15-year-old Cooper. Lance probably looks about a little bit younger than me. And Cooper doing that again. He's done that twice now. And he has to stop doing that. He's losing so much time. He just gets in front of Lance and does it all over again. Lance Flowers. Alrighty, we are on board of our leader, Lance Flowers. Let's see where Cooper is when he comes by. Cooper having a long lap just now. Cooper having a very long lap. That's somebody flaming out there. Cooper, you're now 11.3 seconds behind. 11 minutes to go. Cooper's going to have to put his head down and drive smart. If he wants to get that win, he's been fast, but just inconsistent. 
Uh oh, oh, Lance getting it wrong. That's going to help Cooper out. That is another hard spot to turn to. And there's Cooper going by him. There you go, Josh Heath. Thank you. About 40 minutes to Pro Nitro Truggy Man. Thank you for working that out. I just don't have the time to look it up as I'm calling the race here. I do appreciate that, man. Thank you, Herman Perenza. Nelson Garcia. Met to meet all those guys down in Mills Pond. But, man, it's, it's hard. I, I forget. I'm bad with names, man. Really bad with names. And there we are. Lance Flowers now dropping down to that third position. Mark Whitlow moving up into that. Second position, Cooper Phillips. Right there, there's Cooper. Cooper has nine minutes and 38 seconds left to go. And this man, he has swapped positions back and forth with Lance Flowers all day. He wants to just keep it smooth and bring it home. Mark Whitlow is 5.9 seconds back of him. 15-year-old Cooper Phillips, son of Chad Phillips. And there we see Cooper gunning it across the line. He just threw down a 39.8. Let's see what Mark does in return. Mark answers a 41, 40 flat. And they are now 6.2 seconds back. Lance 3.4 back of and back of Whitlow, Dan Taylor, Adam Terrell, your top five. Dan Taylor, another Mills Pond racer. Met him at Florida Champs. Uh-oh. Cooper getting it wrong again. Cooper does not want to win this race. He is making mistakes on the straightaway. He has to just calm down. Calm down and slow down, and he will win this race. He has 8 minutes, 18 seconds left to go. He needs to come in for another pit at some point. He, is just, he probably needs to come in for a pit just to calm his nerves. I'm pretty sure it's shaking. No, that's not second place. Second place is an all-white car. Whitlow. Lance Flowers back up in the second. It looks like Whitlow came in for fuel. And for 47 8. Dan Taylor now in fourth. Lance Flowers back in second, 4.1 seconds behind young Cooper Webb. Cooper about 16, maybe 15, 16. I think he's 15. Josiah Lero, Leo Moreno out. No, no idea. He had some flame out issues early in pits, and then, I don't know, probably flamed out again. We're not down in the pits. We can't talk to them, unfortunately. Well, we are on board with Lance Flowers. Peach State Hobbies. I think he might have got across Cooper. Nope, Cooper's there. Ethan Martinez Leaf lefty. How was your birthday yesterday? It was great, man. I talked RC all day. I don't know. I'm going to spend some time in Florida, so maybe I'll Monday, if we get home in time, which I doubt we will, Tuesday I'll probably go with my son and have a little nice dinner with him. And then we want to go to All Out on Wednesday, maybe do some club racing. Yeah, Cooper, I, come on, man. You know what I mean, Atkins. Chill out. 
I know his name, Cooper Phillips. But Cooper now out to a five. Let's see when he comes by. It is 8.2 seconds, so F Cooper got a, a comfortable lead. There he is. He just needs to calm down. Pretty sure his dad's telling him to just chill out and bring it home as we see another car limping off. Not sure who that is. Atkins Diet. Then there's Mark Whitlow. He is in the embroidered battle for second. Let's see where Lance Phillips, uh, Lance Phillips, Lance Flowers is. <laughs> I'm calling Lance Phillips. I need some food, I think. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mark is actually in, s yeah, he's the, so. Mark coming in for fuel. Okay, so he had a long lap. There's our third place driver. Quick pit stop by his wife. But Cooper Phillips. Let's see what the gap is when they go by. Something on the track there. I don't know what that is. Thank you, man. Oh, that's heavy. And here is the last pit stop for Cooper. His dad, Chad Phillips. Let's see when they come out. Woo, the pressure's gonna be on Cooper. No, he had an 11 second lead last time around. Let's see, there's Lance just coming. I just saw him coming around the corner. So Cooper got out in time. Three minutes, 29 seconds left to go. <laughs> Eric Haas says Cooper's gonna be beating his pop soon. I'm pretty sure that's what all fathers want. I'll tell you how my, my birthday was, Ethan. I got to see my son race for the first time, and I was super proud of him. Never, ever even driven on a track. He decided he wanted to drive, and my buddy Blake let him borrow his car and gave up his e-buggy. <laughs> Cooper almost went end over end again. We've seen him do that quite a few times. So I got to see my son ra drive, you know, for the first time ever on a track. Or drive, period, really, like a car. He, he did drive when he was younger, but never on a track, maybe once or twice on a small track. But at a big race like this, and he wasn't scared, and yeah, he did pretty good. So thank you to my buddy Blake Breaker and Dave Burkett. They were coaching him, even though he doesn't speak English. But Dave, uh, Blake let him run his car, and now my son wants to go do some, some club racing. Thank you, Alan Smith. Thank you guys for all the support. Let's see as Cooper comes by. Let's see what the gap is between him and Lance Flowers. It is. Oh, Lance having a long lap here. Now back to 9.3. Whitlow is, it was eight seconds back. That's cut down to four. So Whitlow trying to gain, gain some time. And he would like to get up and get higher up on the podium with two minutes left to go. Cooper just got to keep it calm. <laughs> Ooh. Uh-oh, see, Cooper can't be doing stuff like this. He just needs to keep it calm. You need a boat lefty. Well, you got to go buy one, buddy. If you're saying what type of boat to buy, well, that would be a whole conversation we have to have in private. As we see Coop going up over the 180s, around there, up and over that roller, taking it easy, looking composed, Putting that truggy into that moon crater. Um, he, I think he was in like the last main of Sportsman E buggy. He almost bumped out, bumped out, and I told him to take it easy. You, you know, you're racing against people that have definitely raced before. You haven't, so sounds like we're gonna have some fun when we get home with the boats and bashing cars. And then my 
I'm pretty sure my daughter's want to be want to be involved. She wants to do whatever her brother's doing. So, yeah, absolutely right. Sounds like it's going to be expensive, Lucas. We're going to have to figure out how to get some basher trucks and stuff for these kids to play with and go make some YouTube footage, I think. Come on, Cooper. Do it for the HB crew. Do it for the NNRC Discord. I'm pretty sure all the guys in the NNRC Discord are going to congratulate him. This is going to be a big win for Cooper. If he can pull this off, with 30 seconds left to go. And I'm going to go over and have a little chat with him. And, you know... He's super chatty in the NNRC Discord. Let's see if he's super chatty in person. As we get ready with 16 seconds left to go. And young Cooper Phillips driving a great race, making some mistakes, coming back from behind. He's going to give HBD Sportsman Nitro Truggy win. Barring any disaster, two seconds left to go. Come on, Cooper, you can do it. I actually think that's... That is actually second behind him. So it's not over yet. <laughs> Come on, Cooper. Oh! Come on, Cooper. Don't mess it up. Come on, Cooper. Lance is trying to take that win away from you. Well done, Cooper. That race came down to the last corner. What a great race. Good job, Cooper. Good job, Lance. Let me go and get an interview with Cooper. I will be back. Phillips, man. What an exciting uh, Sportsman Nitro Chuggy race. I don't know how many times I'm there screaming at you not to throw it away, but good job, man. Thank you. Uh, it means a lot. I've been having a lot of struggles with the truck class recently, so it means a lot to me to finally get a win in truck. I'm sure everybody's cheering for you in the NNRC Discord. Good job. Again, down to the last corner, man. Uh, it's good to see you getting a good win here. I'm sure your dad's happy as well. Yeah, he's definitely happy. I can see the smile on his face. Uh, it just feels great. I don't know what else to say. It's, it's awesome. All right. well, good job, man. And go ahead and give your dad a hug, man. Good job. Well done. Thank you. That's Cooper Phillips. That's what it's all about. Father and son having a good time. Uh, well done, Cooper. He's awesome in our NNRC Discord, and he did a good job there. So we're going to get back to the action, everybody. And good job to young Cooper. Hold track. Mr. Hubby, Hubby, AJ, Hubby, you ready for your interview? No? He's like, no, I ain't looking at that guy. All right, Cooper, going around there. Good hustle, Cooper. Gold Chevy Cruise, Gold Chevy Cruise with Georgia Plates. You need to move immediately. Gold Chevy Cruise, you're parked in front of a trailer. You need to be moved immediately. Well done, guys. Thank you for the hustle. Here we go. Top five fastest in the Sportsman Nitro Truggy class here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. Taking that number five spot, Adam Terrell. In the number four spot, Dan Taylor. In the number three spot, Mark Whitlow. Your top qualifier and second place finisher, Lance Flowers. And your 2023 Wicked Weekend Sportsman Nitro Truggy Champion, Cooper Phillips! Good job, guys. Hey, 
Chad. Just fire him up, fire him up, fire him up. Race number 39, fire him up. Kerr Marshall's come out quickly. I'm here the with track. Chad, a proud dad. Chad, what a heck of a race by your son, Goober. Yeah, I'm so proud of him. We don't, we haven't been able to practice much, so to come here and win this was, uh, you know, a, a cherry on top. Awesome, man. Congratulations. Mr. Chad Phillips, longtime sponsor of the race time events, Absolute Hobbies. He is also the Hot Bodies for the HP Racing Team Manager. So congratulations, Cooper. Lance, take it away. All righty, everybody, we are ready for the Intermediate Nitro Truggy A Main. Ready, 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 ready. What's up, Ed Zlux? Nice to see you. Matt Stahn to turn on MacGyver. No relation to the TV character. And we have, is that Will Mac oh, Mill MacGyver on pole? Gene Hickerson throwing him out. Patrick Russell to Trent Walker, Ryan Daze. This should be a good race, actually. Some fast guys in this one. As we see. Uh oh. That's uh, Will I Am back to Patrick Rossiter. Let's see if I see Trent Walker come by. Oh, that's not Trent. Eh, maybe it was. Yep, there's Trent Walker in third. Cody Thompson fourth. Kyle Neary fifth. Ooh, those Chuggies look great coming down that trendy way. I have to give you, I, I should say, Ruggy Chuggy Mix. Riley Mac, are you out there? Thank you, Woodland Hobbies. I appreciate it. Um, you still got a few more hours of hearing me. And we have a lot of a lot more racing to go here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. As we are on board with Will McGyver out there in that X-ray truck running the old style truggy bodies for the win. As he goes up and over that double. Great shot from Gene Trout Jr. There's P. Diddy Patrick Russell right there. 
Trent Walker just chilling out in the back there, maybe saving his tires. Do you have 28 minutes, 34 seconds left to go in this Nitro Truggy Intermediate A main? Wheel looking pretty smooth out there. Running that mandatory X-ray Lexan wing. <laughs> X-ray says Lexan wing. Don't say it. It's a comeback. It just never went away, according to X-ray. Alrighty. Uh oh, missed that. That was oh oh oh. That's hectic. That is hectic right there. There is Patrick Rossiter. We are looking at our leader, Will McRiver. He has a rear view full, rear, rear mirror full of that green and white SRX truggy of P. Diddy. What happened to Trent? Trent had a bad lap or something. He's back down in, still in third, about 5.1 seconds back. Uh-oh, Patrick getting it all wrong over that double. As they go up and over and coming down the uh, end of the straightaway there, as we see Patrick keeping in touch with uh, Mill McIver and Trent just behind them. Not too far. He's now six point, uh, sorry, 3.4 seconds behind. Ethan wants to know, has anybody know how... Sc Scotty's good. He's having a straight line shootout this weekend. So he has a big drag race this, pa this weekend. His own drag race. So he's up there. But uh, he's got the live RC crew up there. We are doing the coverage here with WRCE Danny Paz in, in conjunction with Race Time Entertainment. But Scotty's been a busy, busy man. So he was in Australia, then he was in Europe, and then he's now got his race going on. So shout out to T Scotty and his straight line shootout. Not sure where it is. Somebody, I think it's an, oh, somebody will fill me in in the, in the, in the drag racing world. But well, right now we are watching the intermediate Nitro Truggy A man. What's up, Kev? How you doing? And after this, we will have the pro Nitro Truggy man. So don't go anywhere, guys. As we are on board with, let's see when they come across the line. That looks like Cody Thompson, actually. No, this is, uh, that's Cody Thompson and Cole Chora right there. Got to be. Yeah, that's Cole Chora in front or in back right now. Uh-oh. Flipping over, yeah, that was Cody Thompson because that was a, look like a HB. Let's see when they come across the line. I'm pretty sure that that is Cole Chura. Representing BC Canada. There, of course, that was Cole Chura. He's 6.7 seconds behind Trent Walker. Will McIver out to lead. He's got Patrick Russell at 1.8. The gap between Trent Walker and Cody Thompson is ooh, 10 seconds. Axel. But Will McIver, well, he's got, he's got, there's Patrick right there. There's Will and Patrick battling it out. They probably raced each other a few times over the years. As we see Patrick in that white and green s rex truggy. And he's coming around. They got some lap traffic in there in their sights. Trent Walker now falling back to Cole Chura. Not sure what's going on with Trent. He's dropping. What's up, Justin? Says I'm watching live uh, club racing at Dean's all out. I think I'm coming to Dean's on Wednesday night. My son wants to do some club racing. Hopefully I can get wrangle up a car for him to, to drive. We'll see.
Thank you, Carlos Rivas, sending me some pictures, some cool pictures. I love that. I'm going to actually use that picture. Will McGarver out front. We are on tap with Will McGarver in that X-ray car running that mandatory, obligatory Lexan wing by, by X-ray. As we have 23 minutes left, should be coming up on some, some fuel stops here shortly. Yeah, sure, even if it's a slash or something. I just want him to go. He just wants to go on and drive. My buddy Blake said we could take his e-buggy there. I might take him up on the offer, to be honest. Just leave it with Lance, he said. But we'll see. Will McIver going up and around. As you see, Will... Where's P. Diddy right there? They got that pink truggy in between them. Trent Walker embroiled in a battle. Embroiled in a battle with Cole Chura. William McGarver and Patrick Rossiter are having a battle of their own. Looks like Will might have came in for fuel. I missed that. Let's see. Nope, there's Will right there. Patrick came in for fuel, it looks like. Patrick out on his fuel out lap. We are following Patrick right now on that white and green bruggy. Oh no, Javon having an issue. Javon flaming out there in pit lane. And Patrick coming down pit lane. Oh, somebody that's pit lane is busy, 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 busy. Here we see Blake. I wonder who is pitting. He must be pitting. Nope, I don't see Wilson. But Patrick now out front. He should be. Then you come. No, nope. there's. Yep, he's in front of Will. They have some lap traffic behind them, in between them. But this is a battle for first service. Patrick came in earlier to pit, and Will McGarver is right behind him with that traffic in between him. And there we see somebody getting pitted by Derek Vanderham. <laughs> oh, look at that, Charlie McKeenan. Look at that real truggy body in the lead. I knew you was going to sign in. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. But I know you're super excited about that. Uh, but thank you, Justin. We might, we might take him up on that and let him run a, one of your HBE buggies. We have nothing. No radio, no nothing. So I wasn't planning on him racing. But he wants to run again. Ethan Martinez left is you can bring back anything back into RC. What would it be and why? Hmm, I'm going to have to think about that. If I can bring anything back. Hmm. Tracks that require you to run crime fighters. There we go. Crime fighters worked everywhere. All right, we are back on tap as we see Will getting by. They are in a gaggle of cars there. Lap traffic all throughout. I don't know what's happened to Trent Walker. He is dropping... Dropping down, we see Ryan Reese getting up there. Ryan Reese and Cody Thompson racing each other. Patrick Rossiter, Will McIver. We're going to get some drone footage for you guys. But well, Will McIver and Patrick Rossiter separated by one second after they got through that gaggle of traffic. And we see Will out there in that old school truggy buddy making Charlie Mack extremely happy. And that obligatory Lexan wing. <laughs> Lee General saying hashtag no buggy. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wonder when these truggy, these truggy guys are going to realize that bruggy is the future. And they're going to have to adapt to this bruggy body style. Oops, almost knocked over my television here. But right now. Will got some traffic in between him. Not well, got some traffic in front of him. Is that eh, he lets him by? Good job. Patrick just dropping off the back of Will there. Don't know what's going on with traffic with, with, with Patrick, but just off the pace a little bit, maybe backing it off a bit with 18 minutes 50 seconds left to go. Will McGuire, Patrick Russell, the Cole Tour, Trent Walker, Cody Thompson, Ethan McManus. Cole Tour making the trip down from BC.
Anthony RC says the origami truggy body is my answer. <laughs> Charlie Mac, the trugginer, will have to change his name to the brugginer at some point if he wants to continue to run bruggy. But right now, Will McIver is doing it for you old school guys. He even said it in his interview the other day, yesterday, how he's loving the truggy body. He doesn't run truggy that much. But now we see P. Diddy. Thank you, Justin. I just saw your message. Yeah, we'll, I'll take you up on that offer as well. I'm coming out there Wednesday. We're going to drive up from Fort Lauderdale probably Wednesday morning. I'm going to chill out in Fort Lauderdale for a day, get some rest. I appreciate that, man. And we see Patrick Rossler getting by that pink car who's lap traffic. He's setting his sights on Will. Where is Will? What happened to Will? I don't know. Did Will have an accident? I missed it. Okay, Danny. Eagle-eyed Danny Let me know that Will had an accident. And we see Patrick Rossiter out to the lead here. And he has now got his second win with 17 minutes, 25 seconds as he guns it down the straightaway. And he's looking to put some time, some space in between him and Will. But there is Will right there. Cole Chara. Not too, let's see. Cole Chara is actually 3.4 seconds back from Will. So right now, P. Diddy Rossiter out there trying to get some space. There's Will McIver keeping it tight around that 180 as they go through Patrick going down the middle of the, the minefield. And we are going to get you guys some drone footage up as our pilot Cooper Lycom gets ready, gets in the zone. And been some, a great addition to having this drone footage for our viewers at home. And we're about to get some more for you guys here. As we see Patrick coming up with Kyle Neary. And I, I love Kyle Neary's truck. It looks so great. like that dude a lot, man. He to get up to his home track. And we see the white and green truggy of... Patrick Rossiter coming across the loop, and that is a 36-9 for Patrick. Will answer for a 37-4. He's two seconds back. Let's see where Cole Chura is. He's 3.7 back of him, and Trent just having, not having a good truggy run. I mean, he's in fourth, but what's up? That's got to be Tim Lime. What's up, Tim Lime? How you doing? One of your S-Rex truggies right here in front right now. If Patrick Russell with 50 minutes left to go. And we're getting ready to bring you guys some drone for the fuel. I don't know who that was pitting him. That was an excellent pit stop. That was an excellent pit stop. Don't know who was pitting him, but that was extremely fast. Patrick's about to come on the front straight. There he is going over the doubles. He's got Will McIver in front of him. This is the battle for first. Patrick coming out in front, coming out right behind him in the pit lap as we are about to go to our drone footage. Hope you guys enjoy this from our drone pilot, Cooper Lycom. And there we see Will McIver, Patrick Rossiter right behind him. Patrick Pong, Truggy original. He's his nemesis, the Truggy body. Charlie Mack, how rough this track is as they zoom down that Straight away, up and over that double air. They are about to get into some traffic right there. Let's see how they handle the traffic. Will navigating that first part, that traffic. Woo! Oh, wow! Oh, my gosh. There we see Patrick. Uh-oh, getting it wrong. No, that's Patrick right there in front. So that's Kyle Neary right behind him as they go through that minefield. Great flying by Cal Cal Cooper. Like him. And there we see, uh-oh, Will getting it wrong, going wide. He's coming in for fuel. Gene Hickerson snatching Will out of the air. Oh, Blake was pitting uh, Patrick. There we go. And there we see, we are on board with P. Diddy as he goes up and over. Up over that double. Ooh, woo. he almost got taken out by that lap traffic. That's a great shot, too, as well, as he's on board with Patrick. Rossiter as he's going down through that 
taking it wide, going down through that minefield as we are going to follow him down. Here we are of this young Cooper following it, following Patrick, bringing you live drone footage from this race. This is an awesome view. Hope you guys are enjoying it. We have multiple different angles for you guys here at the 2023. Will McIver's car is the original Truggy body. We are on board that drone footage. We can see Patrick Rossiter going up over that double. <coughs> Bill McIver, we have 11 minutes and 52 seconds left on the clock. Sure, BJ. Patrick looking dialed in. He was looking a little bit shaky earlier, but he seems to... Well, we know he's shaking. I'm pretty sure his hands are shaking like he has Parkinson's. But he is looking smooth out there on the track in his green and white S-Rex Truggy. And let's see who are we going to figure out, who are we going to follow now. I have no idea who that is, but let's follow him. As we are on board with Will McIver and that yellow wheel truggy, running the old school body, all for Charlie Mack out there. Won't let truggy die, won't accept the bruggy movement. As we see Will down there in that x-ray truggy, gunning down, just going over that traitorous hole, coming up around, going wide around there, up and around that. Oh, Will getting a little bit sketchy out there. That is, uh-oh, who's that? To the, that is true, absolutely true. Everybody say what's up to Cooper on that great, excellent drone footage as we are on board with Charlie Mack. And I think that's Kiara Ho, but she's a little bit behind. We're looking for culture. We see Danny K from Malaysia up in that fourth spot. He's made some movement. We got eight minutes and 44 seconds left to go. One more pit stop for these guys. And Alrighty, we are back on board. Who are we following? Is this Will? No, nope, that's Culture, I think. Yep, that's Culture coming in. He's currently in third. Oh no! Oh, I thought he flamed out. I thought he flamed out. Thought he flamed out. Uh, oh, great pit from Blake right there. Excellent pit. That was a that was a great pit right there. For Patrick Rossiter, he's pulled out to a 4.2 second lead over Will McIver. Let's see what it is when they come across the loop.
Will McIver now inheriting that lead after Patrick Rossiter's few, uh, pit stop. We got Pro Nitro Truck up next for everybody. How you doing, Mr. Cop? Will McIver, Patrick Rosser, the culture, but the battle right now is between Will McIver and P. Diddy. Will McIver coming in for fuel just now and giving that lead back to Patrick. This is all Patrick's to lose. I know this is going to be an inter interesting interview. If he wins, it's always a fun interview with Patrick. We're going to get him on the podcast. That's going to be fun. But Patrick Rossiter doesn't have to come in for fuel. We saw Will McIver just come in for fuel. So Patrick, barring any intimate accidents or failures, will bring it home for S-Works. Tim Lime, I'm sure, is going to crack a cold one on that. If he hasn't already. Patrick Rossiter, he comes across... It is down to 7.7 .7 seconds. Can young culture catch up Will McIver? Can Will McIver do it for the culture of Truggy? Or is this the end of the Truggy class as we know it? And we're just going to call it Bruggy. There's only a few people holding on to that statement. And they are Charlie Mack and his crew down there in the southeast Mississippi. Thank you, Josie, for bringing me some libation. I'm getting parched here. Already, we have three minutes and 14 seconds left to go. Patrick Rossiter out front, not looking to relinquish that, that lead. As we get ready for the Pro Nitro Truggy A main coming up. Ryan Mayfield, your TQ. And we still have two minutes and 54 seconds left to go in this race. So don't go anywhere, everybody. Okay, all right guys, the HD should be back. Let us know if it's back for you guys. <laughs> Come on Patrick Rossiter, do it for the new school Bruggy. Let's go Patrick, let's just bury that Truggy movement right now, right here, right away. We can now silence Charlie Mack, the, the one hurled out in the truggy life. I'm only joking. Of course, we're going to see the old school bodies until they don't make them anymore. Refresh, please, Doug. And go down to if, and, and let us know. It will be back.
Let's go, Patrick Rossiter. You can do it for the Bruggy movement. It's all about Bruggy. Patrick Rossiter carrying all Bruggy hopes on his shoulders. He doesn't know the pressure that is on him. If he knew the pressure, he probably would crack. But Patrick Rossiter doing it for the Bruggy world. Will McIver trying to conquer everybody in his Truggy class. But it's not going to happen today with 45 seconds left to go. Thomas Sherman says, let's go, stick boy. Charles McKenzie is booing. He knows he just can't accept the bruggy life, but he loves Truggy so much he's going to have to. As you see Patrick Rossiter coming around that 180, up and about, and off that off camera, keeping it smooth. It's Patrick Rossiter from MacGyver, from Cole Churi, and Daniel Cato in fourth, Alex Thomas fifth. Very good to see young Daniel Cato from Malaysia. And we got Patrick shaky hands. Rossiter doing it for the Bruggy class. Nine seconds left to go. This should put the nail in the coffin for that Truggy class once and for all. As we see Patrick Rossiter coming up over that double. And he is looking to take this, barring any intimate disaster. We won't see him alligator like we do in Truggy class. And we are going to celebrate as the nail in the coffin goes to that Truggy class. As we shall not see Truggy bodies anymore after this. I'm only joking, everybody. I'm only joking. Don't take me seriously. But well done to Patrick Rossiter. Let's go on and get an interview with P. Diddy. And he does it for the movie. He doesn't. He puts that nail in the coffin of the Truggy class. Patrick Russell, a.k.a. Shakes, he just won uh, a very long 30-minute Bruggy main yes. for Charlie Mack out there. He beat the old-school Chuggy buddy. Bruggy is here to stay. Tell us a little bit about your main. All I got to say is y'all need to get a Blake Baker. That is the best setup kit ever. Blake Baker is the best pit man I could ever ask for. As far as the engine, 83, Adam, my older brother, thank you, buddy, for the beautiful engine. Tim Lime, thank you for importing a great truck. Jason Rona, Paul Wynn, thank you guys for making great tires. Drew Singer, thanks for the great servos. Futaba, thanks for the great radio. God, thank you for the great air. And Keenan, thank you for the great company. I'm just, um, I'm like a fat girl at the prom. I'm just happy to be here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this, this is just amazing. I'm, people always getting on to me on defaults on his mortgage because I took him out. I'm not going to do that. So running open or diet pro at a national level, it's, it's, it, you, you're really hanging with the boys, you know, and it's all about lap times. And I seriously think the only reason I, cur I really won is because my fuel stops were on point, the consistency, everything. So, you know, just props. I'm, I'm, I'm just speechless right now, okay. even though I just said a lot. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. All right. Hey. There's Patrick Russell. We're getting ready for that pro truggy man. We'll see you guys back in the studio. class here at the 2022 Wicked Weekend. In the number five spot, it is Alex Thomas. In the number four spot, Daniel Cato. In the number three spot, Cole Chura. Taking that number two spot and your top qualifier, William MacGyver. And your 2023 Wicked Weekend Intermediate Nitro Truggy Champion, Patrick Rossiter! Great job, guys. Well done. Heck of a weekend for everybody up there. A lot of hard work putting it in the top five. All right, Lance, back to you. All right, guys, fire him up, fire him up. Race number 40, let's fire him up, please. Fire him up. 
I will give you a full five minute warm up, guys. Full five minutes of warm up. We're going to blow the track off after this race. All right, missing all my turn marshals out here. Marshals, come on out. Need Rossiter, McIver, Chura, Cato, Thomas, Reese, Mallory, Thompson, McManus, Rand, Navoso, Neary, Daze, Hold, Walker, and Williams. All righty, guys, let's get our marshals out here. Marshals, any marshals in the middle section of the track, please? I'm sorry, man. Are y'all gone? No. I'm missing a marshal in the middle. I shouldn't be missing anybody. Trent Walker, I need you to marshal. I don't see Trent out here. Trent Walker. Trent Walker to the track, please. Kenny Williams. Out there, sorry. All right, everybody. We are working on the feed for you guys. These guys will get a five-minute warm-up. So don't worry, Danny Paz is working feverishly to get everything back and working for you guys. Uh, great intermediate truggy main. If we can have a pro main as exciting as that, we are looking forward to that. And like <laughs> Patrick Rossiter, he just termed a new, he just gave us a new term for open pr diet pro. If you, you are, uh, uh Anybody got any questions for me? How are you guys enjoying the coverage? You guys on the fence of coming to this race next year? Check it out. It's been an epic race here. It's a beautiful facility. The weather has been great. Uh, Bruggy one, Truggies, you know, says Ethan Martinez. <laughs> I know Charlie Mack has now left the building. He wants to tech Patrick's Truggy, Bruggy, but uh, no tech here, good buddy. We are working on the buffering. If you lower the quality of the feed to 380, it will be all right for now. They have a five-minute warm-up going on here right now. They are working on it basement, take it easy. That's why we're asking for time to uh, get everything sorted out for you guys. Dropped on to 380 then, Doug Breeze, but it's going to be back up. There's nothing re There's nothing really going on right now. They're just doing warm-up. Thank you, BJ. But uh, right now, we've got a five-minute warm-up. So let's take... All right. Don't worry. We're working on it. Take it easy, Clubhouse. Relax. You don't have to shout at us. We are working on it. So we, it's a lot of things going on at the moment. We have very limited manpower. So if you're welcome to take get fly over or teleport her and help us fix it if you want. Um, all right. Let's take our picks. Who are we picking for the win here in? Yeah, the bit rate. We're just getting ready. We're getting the HD worked up for you, David. Uh, don't worry. What's the best secret you have had so far this weekend? Ooh, secret. Uh, I have to say that on the podcast. All right, so Doug Breeze says 720 is working good. How about 1080, Doug? Let us know. If you guys want to refresh and just let us know, we need you guys to help us out. Madison Austin, man, team techno, dude. I know I, I shouldn't say dude because you're a female, but Madison. Oh, my gosh. Seth is on fire out there. I've, I'm, I'm not going to jinx him at all. I'm not going to jinx him at all. Kyle Adolf says Mayfield for the win. Danny, everybody's saying it's good, so I assume it's great. Nancy Fenn is picking picking her son, Dakota, Mayfield or Dakota. 
Hey, Red, you are pitting Mayfield on top qualifier. What is the plan for this long 30 minute race? To win it. Just to win it, right? Rubber race. side down. You making any last minute changes? You making any last minute tire changes? <laughs> win it. Well, nothing you can talk about, right? Nope. All right, I'm going to come down here to Thomas Tran. Thomas pitting to co defend here. All right, Thomas. Thomas, what's your strategy here? What's your strategy for this long 30 minute main? Go fast, kick ass. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Words to live by, go fast and kick some ass. All right, Lance, back to you, buddy. Thirty seconds to the start of the race. All righty, guys, that is the end of your five minutes. All righty, everybody, are you ready for the Pro Nitro Truggy A main? If you guys are having a little bit of an issue, just refresh it. 720 is working. Let us know if the 1080 is working as well. But... 1020, sorry. 1080. Our, our, our technician says 1080 should be up. So let's see. Refresh it up before we get started here. 720 is smooth. Woo, pressure on. Give it a refresh. Toko Loki, lefty. Are you left handed? No, man. No, no, I am not, Tamika. I cannot use my left hand at all. <laughs> All right, so Wiggins for the win. Last year, race pro. I agree with you, Clubhouse. I don't want to see a runaway either. Let's go. No runaway. They say no 1080, Dave, Danny. Okay, no 1080, only 720, everybody. Sorry, this was a form. No 1080. So 720 is fine. We're going to have to deal with that. No 1080. 720. And they're off. There's Ryan Mayfield out to a lead. We are on that drone footage. Don't worry, guys. There is no 1080, only 720, I was informed. All right, so it's Mayfield from Fan from Lutz, Taylor Sontag in fourth, Joe Bornhorst in fifth. As we are getting ready for this 29 minutes, 13 seconds left to go, as you see Mayfield pulling out to a slight lead. He's got a one second lead over Fan. And we are on board with Ryan Mayfield and that blue and white. Techno, R Techno RC Truggy. And we see Dakota Fan just, and there is Fan. There is Fan. We have a long race ahead of us. Dakota Fan just under a second behind him. As we can see, Fan right there, and there is Ryan Lutz right there. Uh, not far behind. Lutz in that cotton candy. Cotton candy. Kyosho, Mayfield getting through that minefield ever so smoothly. -hoo -hoo -hoo, that was close. There we see Cooper, 23, 20, 30 miles an hour down that straightaway. And we are on board. There we see Fenn not letting Mayfield get any room away from him. But Mayfield keeping it tight. I'm sure these guys are on certain different tires. They're going to wait. They got 30 minutes of race time to go. They're not going to push it too hard, save some of their tires. If you see Fenn going wide out into the fluff in the minefield. And let's see. It's Lutz. He's having a battle with Tater Sontag, it looks like. 
And it's Mayfield turning on a 35-5. Fenn answering a 35-4. <laughs> Tater Suntag a 35-1. He's 2.0 seconds behind. Dakota Fenn, Van Dalen on the move. 35 flat, Van Dalen has been fast all weekend. There we can see, let's see, let's see. Mayfield just slowing up just slightly as we see Fend. Oh, Fend getting it wrong. He has been struggling through that minefield section all weekend. But Mayfield just out there clearly trying to put some space in between him and his nemesis, Dakota Fend. But right behind them is Tater Sontag who's chasing down the master, the Padawan chasing down the Jedi master, looking to become a Jedi Knight himself. And there is Seth. Freaking Van Dane, and we see that orange and blue and white techno. He has been extremely fast. There you see up in the stands, everybody watching the race. Good to see some spectators up there watching this pro nitro truck A main. No truggy bodies in this one, Charlie Mack. All bruggy bodies. As you see Mayfield getting a little bit squirrely over that minefield. Ooh, he gets a little huckabuck, landing hard, and Dakota Fan is all on him. As we see Tater Suntag coming by. Right now, he is hounding his mentor, Dakota Fenn. There's two TLR trucks. D Tater has been extremely fast. Uh-oh, and Tater gets by. <laughs> he gets by. Tater is flying. He gets by his Jedi master, Dakota Fenn. And Dakota Fenn getting it all wrong in that minefield. And we see Dakota, we see Tater getting a little bit wrong as well, but he's able to keep it under control. Let's see when we come by. There's Fenn. Where is Seth? Dan Dalen. Oh, you see Camden Line is climbed up to fourth. Camden Line is in fourth. He has been fast and truggy all year long. Seth Van Dalen is 1.2 seconds back behind Dakota Fenn. But right now we are following uh, Tater Sontag. He is trying to hunt down and chase Ryan Mayfield. Can this be the big win that Tater has been looking for in truggy? He has been fast, very fast at many races this year. And there we see... Mayfield going through the minefield, up and over, and down that double. He looks pretty calm and collective. What? We have 25 minutes, 18 s seconds left to go in this race. And don't know what happened to Taylor. Let's see. Taylor having an accident. He has dropped way back. Oh, no. He flamed out. Taylor flamed out. Oh, no. Poor Taylor flaming out while in second. Handing that second place over to Dakota Fan, and the big mover is Mason Fuller. Jared Tebow right behind him. Camden Lime. Let's see if he can find out. Let's fall back. We have a great race developing between Dakota Fan and Mason Fuller, as well as Mason Fuller and Jared Tebow. Mason Fuller, the Iceman, coming out of nowhere up into that third position. Him and Tebow are battling it out. Let's find, and here we go. This is the race, and so let's not let's not forget about Seth Van Dalen. But this is all birds well for Mayfield as these guys battle it out against each other, and Mayfield just has clean air ahead of him. We need Dakota Fenn to get up there and make a challenge for him, or one of these guys to just pull away. As we see Seth making him and White Mason full of the Iceman Tebow, 23 years as a professional. This is his final wicked weekend as he guns it down straight away. They are separated by. Seven tenths of a second, and maybe Jared Tebow just sketching over that crater. Dakota fan trying to push to catch up to Ryan Mayfield. I hope these guys don't let Mayfield get a runaway with it. He started from pole, he hasn't lost the lead yet. Come on, guys, catch him up. We're about to see some pit stops here, I'm sure, as Mason gets it wrong, and that allows Tebow by Tebow. Mason lets that door open, and Tebow about to get by. Now he sets his sight on Dakota Fan. We have B. Rose back there in fifth. B. Rose, that S-Works Chuggy. He's looking pretty good. B. Rose coming in through from 15th, having to bump in. As we see, Ryan, Dakota, Jared Tebow just trying to fend off Mason Fuller as he has set his sights on Dakota Fan. But this is the order. Mayfield from Fenn. Tebow, Fuller, Rose, Van Dalen, Lime, Seven, Lutz dropping down to that eighth position. As we are now on board, we see <clears throat> Mason Fuller. There's Ryan Lutz. There's Tebow. He's just pulling a slight gap when they came across the line. It was uh, just under a second. Ooh, Mason Fuller getting it wrong there, getting it up sideways. And we see Mason Fuller there getting a little bit wrong in that 
section. And we see that chase for second as Tebow has his sights set on. As we see some pit stops, let's see what's going to hurt. We have some pit stops coming in. Tebow in from the Marco. Shelby Parker. There's B. Rose. There is Seth Van Dalen. Oh, no. More trouble for Taylor. As he flames out again. Wiggins. Let's see it all. It all shakes out. And there's Mayfield. Tebow has Mayfield in the sights. Let's see where it comes around on the line. Mayfield is there. Mayfield coming in for a few as well. Dakota Fenn staying out. There we see Fenn coming in. One of those famous Mike Suntag pit stops. That man is the fastest pit man in RC. Let's see if that pit stop is enough to get Dakota Fenn out in front. As we are on board with Jared Tebow, he has Mason Fuller behind him. He has Mayfield set in his sights. He's not trying to let lose touch of Mayfield. There he is. There's Fenn. That's the battle for first and second. Fenn coming out right behind Mayfield. Fenn going slightly longer than Mayfield. Will we see one of these infamous adjustments that Mayfield's been known to make and go long on pit stop as we e-buggy and did keep TQ one round of truck if I, if I remember correctly. But right now we have a battle on our hands. We have Dakota Fenn just under half a second be behind Mayfield. Tebow 3.2 back of Jared Tebow and Mason Fuller Three tenths of a second behind Tebow. Uh oh, Fenn getting wild out there. He has struggled through that, through that all weekend. But not Tebow. He is looking to get by Mayfield. Te Mayfield trying to pull away. Will we see Mayfield pull away ever so slightly? As we see this gaggle of cars coming. Fuller, Tebow, Rose, Rose looking good there in fifth right now. Really looking steady. Seth Van Dalen hanging back there in sixth, and right behind him is Camden Lime. Fuller getting it long. Tebow looking to have a look on the outside. We will see, oh, Tebow cutting back on the inside, trying to get around, but Mason Fuller slams that door. So now we see Tebow going through, keeping it smooth through there. Tebow likes rough tracks. That HB truck, he handling it very good. Woo, he gets it up on one wheel, 19 seconds, 46 seconds left to go. As we see Mason Fuller gunning down that straightaway. Dakota Fenn just slightly losing touch of great Mayfield. Mason Fuller, Tebow, Rose, they want to get by Dakota Fenn as Fuller now has Fenn in his sights. And he is going to set his mission to chase down Mayfield as you see Mayfield heading into that minefield now. And Mason Fuller right behind him, followed by Dakota Fenn and Brandon Rose. This is the race for second. And we see Fenn getting it wrong. He hits that pipe. And now it's going to be Mason Fuller inheriting that second place. And now he's free to chase down Mayfield. As Tebow and him will set him in the sights. Tebow just behind him when he comes by the line. Tebow seven tenths of a second. 3.1 seconds behind Mayfield. Mayfield's about to have some company. If he makes any mistakes, he will have the Iceman all over his backside. As you see Tebow just climbing up there. Just hit, getting a look. Getting a feel. Probably applying pressure to Mason. Mason is the Iceman. He keeps it cool. Let's see as they go through this minefield. Ooh. Mason going a little bit sketchy. Tebow getting a little bit sketchy. But they are gaining on Mayfield. Let's see what it looks like when he goes by. Allen is on a mission. He has found his second win here of 18 seconds, 25 seconds left to go. Woo! As we see, Mason Fuller, he is now seeing, we are seeing Mayfield in the same frame. But we have Mason Fuller, Tebow. Seth is looking really racy back there. Let's see what he can do. As Mayfield goes across the line, and let's see what will be the gap when they go by. 2.6 seconds. So Mason is climbing. He is making a charge. Seth, one second back from Tebow. 1.1 seconds back from Mason Fuller. Mason Fuller pulling away from Tebow ever so slightly. And there he has. He has the Mayfield in his sights. He's keeping it calm. He has 17 minutes and 40 seconds left to go. As you see Mayfield going down the minefield. Heading up over those doubles. Let's see Mason Fuller when he comes by. There's Mayfield right there. Let's see the gap when they go by. It's going to be about the same 2.6 seconds. 2.3. So he is knocking off two tenths. Chasing down Mayfield. Mayfield might be just trying to go into a fuel mode cons cons conservation. But now Mason Fuller has some company. Tebow has some company. As we see that techno truck of Seth freaking Van Dalen knocking on that door. Seth been the fastest guy here all weekend. 
He is TQ of E-Buggy and Nitro Buggy, and he was fast in truck as well, but now he's showing his... Oh, oh! And Tebow gets it up on two wheels, and that's going to allow Seth by. Seth has a breather room. Breather room, he sets his sights on Mason for the Mayfield goes across the line. The gap has now dropped to 2.5. Seth and Dale 1.6 behind Mason Fuller. It looks a lot tighter on the screen as we see they have Mason Fuller right there. Seth and Dale trying to chase him down. Bad Brandon Rose up in the mix as well. Brandon in fifth. Lee's guys need to not let Mayfield get away. Just catch up and catch up. Oh! And Tebow getting it wrong, big time wrong, as he clips that pipe. Goes over. Up and over. That double. Brandon Rose getting in front of him. And the gap between Mason Fuller and Seth Van Dalen is going down to 1.4. Seth is managing a good gap. I mean, Mason Fuller is managing a good gap between him and Mayfield. He has Mayfield in his sights. Mayfield, I don't know what's going on with Mayfield. He's got some traffic ahead of him. Whew. Mayfield, let's see, he's getting into some lap traffic. We see, I think Mason has cl uh, just clipped away a few tents. Let's see when they come across the line. No, Mayfield pulling out the lead now to 3.2 seconds. Seth Van Dalen is hounding Mason Fuller in that techno truck. As we see, that techno truck coming down. Seth Van Dalen, he wants to beat his teammate, Ryan Mayfield. This would be great for... Seth and then he is way faster than Mason right now. Mason guarding that inside line. Seth's going to have to find a way around. And Seth goes on the inside, and he powers through. Seth's been doing that all weekend. Let's see if he can make it stick. Oh, and he does. No, he did not hit him. I did not see him hit him as Seth and Dalen. Seth and Dalen is now setting his sights on. And we see Mayfield coming in for fuel. And Seth coming in as well. Oh, this is exciting, everybody. All of those guys coming in for fuel. It's Mayfield, Van Dalen, Rose, Fuller, Tebow right now. Camden line just behind them. I see you, Raiden. I'll have to come check out your body. You have to show it to me one day on your race. All right, now, Mason Fuller is scoring in. Let's see. I don't think Mason came in for fuel. Let's see when they come across the line. Ryan Mayfield. Mason Fuller in second. There's Mason Fuller coming in for fuel now. And Seth Van Dalen is 3.5 seconds back of Mason Fuller. So he's got some time to make up. There's Seth Van Dalen. Let's see if he can find Mayfield on the track. The Coda fan has dropped down to six. There's Ryan Lutz. There is Mason Fuller right behind Seth Van Dalen. Seth. Got to put his head down at 13 minutes and 51 seconds and try to catch up Mayfield. But we see Mayfield going on the straightaway. He's pulled off a bigger lead against. And there we see Seth. He has 6.5. He has a 6.75 deficit to make up. Uh-oh, Seth getting it wrong in that pipe. That's going to allow Mason Fuller back. This is all good for Mayfield as he's just smiling in the back of his mind as he watches these, these guys. And there you see Mayfield heading down to the minefield. Ooh. They need Mayfield to make a mistake, but we know Mayfield, he doesn't make many of those. Oh, we see B. Rose making a mistake right there. There's Jared Tebow. Where's Jared Tebow going to shake out right now? He's back up to third. Mason Fuller in second. Seth Van Dalen falling all the way down to fifth. But Ryan Mayfield now opening up a gap of 8.1 seconds on Mason Fuller. And this is when we see, have seen Mace, uh, as we've seen Mayfield many times just say, hey guys, hold my cores light. I'm going to win this race. We have somebody, something's happening. I heard Lance, he's super excited. I can't see what he's watching. All right, I was just informed that a car flipped on the straightaway. We have seen lots of that this weekend from all levels of, levels of racing. But right now, Mayfield, he's putting it in cruise control. He has, Mason Fuller has to just put his head down and clock off some fast laps. He doesn't have anything to worry about. Tebow, he has a good gap on Tebow of 2.9 seconds. 
Seth right now is hounding Tebow. As we see Mayfield coming across the line. That techno buggy looking great out there. He just threw down a 35-6. Let's see what Mason Fuller answers with. A 34-9, and he drops that gap down to 6.7. Fuller saying, no, no, Mayfield, you can't have that frosty beverage yet. I'm Mason Fuller. I'm the ice man. I say when it's over. But Mayfield just skitching through there, <clears throat> getting through some lap traffic. Mayfield going really wild out there in the, the minefield. It looks like Mason Fuller having some issues there just now, or maybe that was, is that Mason Fuller? I can't see. Yes, that is. Mason Fuller looks like he had a crash. That's going to allow Mayfield to pull away. Let's see what it is when they come by the line. Mayfield is in cruise control at the moment. Mason Fuller making that mistake. As we watch, Mason Fuller now 9.4 seconds back. 1.5. We have Jared Tebow <coughs> and Seth Mandalen. Brandon Rose right there in fifth. They're looking to capitalize on any mistakes that Mason Fuller makes. Tebow hounding Mason Fuller. He would like to get up in that second position, get on that second step. Let's see what he does when he comes around and down this minefield. His car looks great through there. Seth gets a little bit squarely. Brandon Rose following him right there. This is the battle for third right now. Tebow chasing, uh, chasing Fuller. And Fuller comes by. The gap has now grown to 8.7 seconds for Mayfield with 10 minutes and 36 seconds. One more pit stop left for these guys. We have the crowd in there cheering for Tebow cheering for Mayfield, Mason Fuller, Seth Van Dalen, B. Rose right there. Good run from B. Rose coming from that B main, starting in 15th. Tebow looking smooth out there. As this track gets rougher, that's what Tebow likes. He likes rough tracks. If you think back to 2017 when he won his last nationals, it was at state line, and it was extremely rough there. Brutal, brutal, brutal. So Tebow, when the going gets rough, the tough get going. So Tebow in that HB buggy. Looking to clip off Mason Fuller. He is now 1.7 seconds back. 10 seconds back of Mayfield. It's going to be very hard for these guys to catch Mayfield unless Mayfield makes some mistakes. And we know that he doesn't do that. <clears throat> Tebow ever so often gaining on his fellow HB truck teammate. As he looks up and goes around. Comes a flying... Down the straightaway, he just threw down a 35-3. The gap is now to 1.5. Mason Fuller is 9.1 seconds back of, Mace, of Ryan Mayfield. Not sure if Mason is Mayfield is comfortable out there. And as he goes through, let's see. Mayfield coming onto the straightaway now. He just threw down a 35-9. Eight minutes, 59 seconds left. But Mayfield just out there comfortable right now. He still has some lap traffic. We see Dakota fan making a comeback, challenging Brandon, Brandon Rose. And it looks like that is Cavallari. So he lets Tebow by. Good driving by Cavallari. Oop. And we see Seth and Dalian giving a little bump. And Mason Fuller coming up on some lap traffic himself. That lead to Mayfield has dropped on to 7.6 seconds. So maybe Mayfield had an accident somewhere. Or oh, Mason Fuller. Oh, Mason Fuller just clicked off a 34-7. Let's go, Mason Fuller. Eight minutes to go. Let's see if he can put the hammer down and catch up Mayfield. He has a big hill to climb, big mountain to climb as he goes through this rough section. That is not for position behind. Oh, yes, it is. That is actually Tebow. Tebow throwing on a 34-8. So these guys are going faster than Mayfield at the moment. Let's see when they come across the line. Mason coming across the line. He just threw down a 36-8. Seth Van Dalen up into sec third with a 35-1. Tebow having a 37. He's in for fuel. Mayfield might have come in for fuel. I might have missed that. All right, so our camera guy says that Mayfield did come in for fuel. As we go around this, we following Mason Fuller. As he comes through the minefield. And we see, oh, May and Mason getting it wrong. Oh, no. And that's going to go from bad to worse as Mason loses those positions. Seth and Dalen gets by. Seth coming in for fuel. Mason coming in for fuel. So that's a race on pit lane here. Tebow already coming in for fuel. Tebow coming out right behind. That looks like Mason Fuller. 
We have Fan behind him, Seth and Dalen in front of him. But you know who's smiling with all this going on. Uh-oh. Tebow getting it wrong over that jump. And Dakota Fan back in the mix. Dakota Fan back in the mix, everybody. There is the Fan. <laughs> After making that wreck earlier, he is back up in the top five fighting for position. Let's see what it looks like when they come by. Mayfield, Mason Fuller, 9.5 back. Seth and Dalen, Dakota Fan. Uh-uh, but Dakota Fan coming in for fuel. What a snatch by Mike Sontag. Wow. Man, T hey, Fenn came in so hot just now. That was a great snatch. Six minutes, 11 seconds left to go. Mayfield out to a 9.5 second lead as we are on board with Mason Fuller, who just has got Tebow right in his, his rear view mirror. Tebow looking to the inside. Seth Van Dalen, where are you? Fourth. While these guys battle out, Mayfield is just smiling with his 9.6 second lead. He doesn't have to come in for fuel anymore. He just has to cruise home, but he can't cruise too much because ooh, Mason Fuller on the gas. Mason Fuller down at 35-5, Tebow for 34-7. He is flying lost in the last seconds of these long Nitro main finals. Battling it out. Tebow trying to find a way around Mason, but Mason keeping it tight around that pipe and not allowing any breathing room for Tebow. As we see him get squarely, get up on two wheels right there. That's going to allow Seth by. And there we see Mason Fuller. Nope, sorry, Seth didn't get by. I thought he did. Mason Fuller pulling out a lead to Tebow. 1.2 seconds back. Mayfield's lead on Fuller is now eight seconds. B Rose flames up. We see Kiara Hill running that back. Great hustle. Unfortunate for B Rose. He was down in 12th, I believe. So Seth and Dalen. Jared Tebow going wide. Mason Fuller got a little bit of a buffer as we see him get into some traffic. But Tebow still climbing away. Mason Fuller throwing a 34. News. Mason Fuller has has pulled down that lead to 5.7 seconds. There we see Mayfield. Let's see where Fuller is. Fuller's right there. Mayfield out there. <clears throat> Uh-oh. We see Mason Fuller right there in that orange and yellow truggy, yellow wheels. There's Mayfield coming across the line just now. 35-6 for Mayfield. Let's see what the gap is when Mason Fuller comes back. He has put it down to 5.8, 35-7. Mason needs to click off some more fast laps. Needs Mayfield to have some issues. Jared Tebow throwing on a 34-7. He's just one-tenth of a second behind. Ooh, he is pushing, pushing, pushing Mason Fuller. And right behind him is Seth Van Dalen. He's pushing away as well as they want to get by. Right now, Tebow is flying out there. And that, oh, and he gets it wrong. And that's going to allow Seth by. Tebow just pushing a little bit too hard through that minefield. But they are right on the rear end of Mason Fuller as they go by. It's Mason Fuller, Seth and Dale and Jared Tebow all separated by uh, just over a second. But that gap, Mayfield pulling out that gap again. It seems are just coming over that double. <laughs> Tebow now behind Seth and Dale and Seth and Dale and getting a, a fresh breath of air. He's looking to get past Mason Fuller. Ooh, Mason Fuller getting it up on two wheels. Seth and Dalen all on the rear view, in the rear, rear, mirror, rear view mirror of Mason Fuller. Mason Fuller just trying to stop that inside. I guess these guys just know they will not be catching up Mayfield. And Seth and Dalen taking a peek there. He's trying to get around. He has another look on the inside. Tebow we saw Seth doing that all through qualifying as he goes on the inside. He has one minute and 47 seconds left. Tebow gets by as well. So Tebow and Seth get by Mason Fuller. And Mason Fuller gives up two spots in that minefield as you see Tebow now trying to challenge Seth. Tebow like to get on that second place podium. He wouldn't mind that as you see three from these guys. Cole is currently being scored on at 12. So Cole needs to pull over. Not making it easy for these guys. There we go. Thank you, Cole. Oh, and Tebow has a peak. Has a peak. We can see everybody getting excited in the pit lanes. This is a great race for second. Six, and Mayfield's just out on his Sunday afternoon drive. 
And nope, that's not Mason Fuller. Oh, no! Tebow tries to get through. Tebow tries to get through, and he gets rear-ended. Goes on the sap, and that's going to allow Mason Fuller back through to take over that second-place position. Tebow, I'm sure, is fuming after having that happen. We see some lap traffic right there. That's Cole Ogden. Cole Ogden getting into the back of Seth and Daly. Maybe a little bit of team orders right there. I wouldn't be surprised as you see Mason Fuller coming on. Tebow now back in third. This is a battle. Tebow looking fast. Him and Seth banging doors. It's going to be interesting. Get our cameraman to look at that. To look at that driver stand when they finish, Tanny. Make sure Gene gets that driver stand in shot as Tebow puts it up on all fours. Whew. This is an exciting race. Mason Fuller out there. The battle right now for third. Last spot on that, that three, uh, on a podium as Tebow. This is the last lap. This is the last lap. They won't go anymore after this. Tebow sending it. Tebow passes him on the inside. What a great pass as he comes by. Woo! That was awesome. That was awesome. Congratulations to Ryan Mayfield this 2023 Pro Nitro Truck Champion. Here with uh, Ryan Mayfield, your 2003 Pro Nitro Truggy. Uh, hey, man, man, just, hey, man, you, you led from flags to lights. Relax to lights, thanks to flags. Yeah, it was uh, it was good. The truck was uh, was pretty good. Um, got a little hard to drive at the end. I think just tires getting hot and everything. It's it's pretty damn hot here. It has a lot of traction. So, um, but yeah, it sounded like everybody was having a pretty good battle back there in second. We had some fireworks at the end there um, on the driver's stand. So. Uh, I was trying to trying to break them up, but I had to still finish my last lap. So, um, but yeah, thanks to Techno, J Concept. So, um, yeah, thanks to everybody at home for watching. Thanks to all the companies that support me. Uh, yeah, that was a long 30 minutes. This track's brutal, and if it's brutal and truggy, it's gonna be real brutal and buggy. So, um, go reset, cool down a little bit, and uh, see how buggy go. Well, good luck to you. Thank you for the show, and congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ryan Mayfield, yeah, 2003 Wicked Weekend Pro Truggy. Winner and champion, let's see if he can carry that one to Pro Buggy. All right, guys, here we go. Need my top five up on the podium. Are we done over there? Van Dalen's up there. The Fuller's up there. 
Van Dalen's ready. L waiting on Fendon Mayfield. Fendon Mayfield. All right, waiting on Fend. Here we go. Everybody's in place. Here we go. Top five fastest in the pro nitro truggy class here at the 2023 Wicked Weekend. In that number five spot, Dakota Fand. In the number four spot, Seth Van Dalen. In the number two spot, Mason Fuller. And your top qualifier and 2023 Wicked Weekend Pro Nitro Truggy Champion, Ryan Mayfield. Danny, they say that the, the, the stream is buffering. Axed out here. I know, I missed it. Hmm. Yeah, Danny. All the from the driver's stand after that happens. We missed out on some uh, some fight. And we're saying that these guys, well, you guys are going to have to drop it down to 30, 380p for now. Buffering sucks, but there's nothing we can do about it at this moment. Try and figure it out, Danny, what's going on. They said it buffered the entire, for many guys, it buffered the whole main. You, there's one guys, what am I supposed to do? They tell me interview the winner and that's all. I do what the people that hire me ask me to do. Axel. So, <clears throat> what happened then? I think the technical guys are a little bit upset with Cole because he seemed like he was holding those guys up. Even if, if I saw the video, it looked like he hit Seth at one point. So. So Paul Sicarello says it was good. The uh, computer, uh, your 